rockets or you right, know, right, right. space or things. Unfortunately, really most of my jokes have evolved into statistics and mathematics and physics jokes, and that's oh, like crap. They're crap, funny because nobody gets them. We were watch, I watch Big Bang Theory because you know I could watch it all the way through. And Sheldon does physicist jokes, and I was laughing. My wife just kept glaring at me because <laughs> she didn't find them nearly as funny. Yeah, that's that's good. I don't remember them all now, but I was laughing at them. Mm -hmm. It's good. Um, I totally got this book out for a reason. Oh yeah, I was gonna look up extra stuff. I got a whole bunch of gold left. Correct me if I'm wrong. We did start off with 15 gold. Yes. At least that's standard. Um, down below there's a way to start with more, but that's standard, and that's what I have. Which honestly was more than enough. But then I didn't have a lot of very expensive things I needed. I didn't spend any because I wasn't sure what to buy. So I don't need weapons or armor. Go, go. Always open. need a rope. You're an adventurer. Right? Open this book. Look for kits. Yeah, there is a handy set of kits if you're not sure for somewhere near the mid back of the equipment right there. There was like all the classes have a kit that, of kit what they recommend. Costs you four gold, nine silver. That's you don't. Expensive. It gives you a long spear, a staff, an adventurer's backpack, a bandolier, climbing kit, grappling hook, and a lesser smooth <laughs> stick. You can always buy alchemical stuff because hey, it's just fun to have. Boomstick. Or oh, sure. sticks. Are, well, like when I was going to play an alchemist, one of his uh, formulas was going to be for sun sticks because just it's just so handy. Okay, let's see. And that was one I had to question the GM and annoy Luke on because it was going to be if I quick alchemy a sun stick. I'm assuming it lasts its normal duration. I just have to activate it like that turn. It can't, you know, it's because otherwise it kind of becomes very useless for the quick alchemy, and you would never quick alchemy a sun stick. So I'm like, mm -hmm. just check if that works. Because it would be a very logical thing to use only if we were going somewhere dark. But ancestry and by nine alchemist now doesn't matter. All right, stop making changes. Make a character. If you don't, the character you're fine. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, right now we're just wrapping up with our character creation stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, just keep doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I did start the recording, so that's why I'm kind of telling people what we're doing right now. Otherwise, it'll be confusing. And then we're never confusing. Work on your backstories and stuff. Um, once you got those, hand them to me. Are you there? And yeah, I have your backstory. Did you want my extra character sheet? I printed out a second copy for you. Um, yeah. That'd Just be so you can hang on to one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because we came prepared today, uh -huh. we're level two, right? Yeah, I'll just that makes me level one. I I'll settle for a second hero <laughs> point. I'm, I'm good with that. So, is there a specific spot on here where you put your ability boosts, or is that just listing from here? That, that's just determines your attributes. So I don't think there's okay. a spot on the sheet because it's just your boosts add plus two to your attributes, so it goes from being a ten to a twelve. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, each boost is the plus two to an attribute. Where's is my? Flaw? Is my thing at home did it automatically? Right, so I got to write it all down. It's really handy. You just go. Yeah. The same with mine, that's what I did with the path. Language. I don't know what to call it. The Pathfinder RPG thing. Right? Yep. Character Builder? I think that's what it's called. I don't know. Path Builder? Maybe it's Path Builder. Yeah, I think that's what I was using. Yeah. It's a very cool website that does all the math for you. Right. You can just lump them up and then right. print out an actual. And I had it all on there. Yeah, and I got a... about halfway through it. And it's it's pretty sweet because you. You can then have your character written out all the way to 20th level, if you and want. then yeah. set, to, set yep. one. What level do I want? Yeah. I didn't want to do that because I'm not sure how he's going to develop because I don't know what's going to happen to him. Right, right, right. I have no idea how this game is played. And I do will... understand that there's a thing called runes of striking. Well, there's all kinds That's... of runes. That's basically how you make plus one weapons in it. Yeah. You basically... Yeah. So plus one thing... weapons are weapons with runes on them. And you can you get a weapon, you can put runes on it, you can take runes off, you can like mix and match and upgrade and crap material. So you can have a cool <laughs> weapon and, just, and keep with it, keep it, you know. And just yeah, it, it's kind of like material in Final Fantasy. Be like, okay, I had fire, now I'm going to activate. Yeah, you put runes on your weapon, and they give you bonuses to do stuff. So depending, and there's all kinds of them. Depending, just like instead of having a sword of wounding, you would have a. That's pronounced at. Aloysius? Aloysius. Aloysius. Aloy. 
L. 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 And everyone calls, that's why I have the name tag. Maybe I'll call him Lloyd. Signing it out is just Sandy. Call him Lloyd. Unless my wife's mad at me, then I'm signing it all to Sorali and signing TR. That's how I know I'm in trouble. When she calls you by your character name? Well, my real wife doesn't do that, but when his wife calls Oh! Me, <laughs> I was just... When his oh, wife yells character a wife, they're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> So my character already had a wife, <laughs> and she's already dead. Your character has a wife? Yeah, wife and family. Oh, wow. That's I mean, I'm not, I'm not expecting them in the game much, because... Oh, they're going to oh, be come on. Oh, Oh, yep. Well, that's Dang possible. It. But you just made him a gnome bard. Guess what? You're going to make a character. You're a gnome bard now. <laughs> ah, I commit suicide. That's just... <laughs> yeah. I didn't have any dead jokes. I was done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I probably... Started. Do you run out of dead jokes? You get, you get the bleaching? Bleaching doesn't exist in Eberron, because oh, nice. that was originally yeah. part of his background, so I had to take that out. Because I asked Luke that specifically. For what? If the bleaching it. exists in Eberron. It doesn't officially. Bleaching. In Pathfinder, gnomes who get bored with life, basically, oh. start to lose their color and fade back into the Feywild. Oh. And they become all bleached out. It's like, instead of normal death from aging, they bleach. Oh, okay. So his original character was that, or concept was that, that was why he's off being an adventurer now, because all these years later, he's... You know, retired from barkeeping. His family had taken over the bar, and he started one day woke up with this white streak in his hair. And when his wife went, You got to get out there and do something, because obviously around here is not working for you. And so he became an adventurer. So in this case, he's just bored. It's not. Hmm. His wife said, I'm tired of you sitting around the bar all day. Little does he know, you know, his 30 year old kid um, bleached his hair. My kid's 200. His kid. My grandkid? You, yeah, your grandkid. Okay, possible. That'd be like possible, though, there, you know. It's not going and bleached your hair, and you're just like. But then again, it didn't happen because that doesn't exist in everyone. Do you think it would be good to have a plus two against being sickened and having the sickened condition? Well, no, because then my psychic effects won't hit you as hard. Right. Mm. Or do you think Unbreakable Goblin would be better? The extra. Unbreakable Goblin is pretty funny. The, ex the, the extra four di uh, HP is kind of nice. Just a one time? No, yeah, it's, you're, you're starting uh, hit points. You're, you're starting hit points. Six. Instead of six, you're ten HP. Yeah. And you take half damage from falls, which yeah. is just funny. Yeah, you're, 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 you're particularly bouncy. That's, That's where my goblin barbarian can fall 160 Alosius feet and stand up. That's your character, right? It kind of makes more sense flavor-wise to be Iron Gut, being that I'm yeah, playing the, the toxicologist. Too. It's also super funny. I've done I've done Pathfinder one goblins who just have Iron Gut. Yeah. Then. He went to a uh, uh, meet and greet with a whole bunch of uh, what are those snake people called? Wanti. Uh, Wanti. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they were like serving up all this like food and stuff like that that was made out of like people and stuffed. And they had like these baby halfling cannolis. Oh my god. Perfect. And, but yeah, I mean, I mean a goblin barbarian just to see how it worked. And he's an iron goblin. He can jump 160 feet and stand up at second level. Yeah, I'm gonna go Iron Gut. It kind Iron of, Gut fits it, you a lot better. It, it does. He was just funny, and that was just the vision I had. Hopefully, not that far, but you know, someone escapes down a, a road oh, and he just no, jumps. It's a 50 foot drop. Iron Boing. Gut. Okay. He used a horse chopper and a uh, dog sword. Ancestry. Yeah. So ancestry so he would not get this campaign points. at all. They just add to your ancestry hit points, class hit points, and con is your starting hit points. Okay. And then, of course, if you take. What are you Whatever hit points you have for your ancestry, your class, and your con are your starting hit points. Yeah. Oh, generally some combination of 6, 8, and 10, 12. Right. Right. Unless you're a barbarian, in which case it's 12. Right, exactly. You can keep that one, that's an extra copy. Is that mine? Alright. Yeah. I have another one. I've made one for you just in case I'm not useful. Yeah. I'll try to update it. Yeah, yeah I think I actually want to keep everybody's character sheets. Okay, okay so they, so they, they start out at 10? Everything that, so starts at 10, right? Oh, you're actually start at 10, yes. Um, where's my. Oh, whoa, whoa. <clears throat> That's, I mean, I can print out as many copies as I want, but that's an extra yours? copy. My character sheet? Yeah, specifically your second page that has like feats and abilities and stuff. I don't see the whole thing is stapled together, but he's got nothing to hide, just asking. So your ability boost, that means you get a, a plus, two plus two to the ones that are listed, right? Yep, and if you have a flaw, okay. you have a minus two to that one. Okay, yeah. So your character's name is Liar. <laughs> Lirio. He goes by Liar. his last name, Rin. What's your last name? 
Yeah. Rin, R Y N. I'm just trying to get it down, so. Because right. unlike up. me, Sandy's good with names. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll be called Wayne. You know, these index cards are expensive. Yeah. yeah. It's okay if you are, it's whatever you would have them call you. Yeah, yeah Trevor. Well, you gotta make trouble. That's what I do. I'm just trying to figure out what would be considered a, like, I don't know where to put my feet. And, I mean, I've got things that I got for other reasons, and like, yeah, whatever. So yeah, it's should, kind of kind of weird sometimes. You should get a heritage feet, a sheet. Feed. I like the sheet. Yeah. Ancestry feet, but I took the heritage feet that gives me an extra general feet. Um, well, yeah, which that's your own damn fault. Might go under the special for so ancestry feet. That's why I probably and if you, it. Are you a warrior or a monk? Monk. And I did take toughness. But, I mean, there is a special slot under Ancestry feet, so it would probably work for unless you have another special. Uh, I think monks can do shields. Okay. They can, but it seems dumb. It seems really dumb. You know, I, man, the, look, I've I'm not played feet. Pathfinder 2 too much, but the one time I was trying to use a shield, like, I had several game there sessions where I almost could never use my shield because I needed to move. And but I feel like the monk can use it better than right. anyone, but thematically it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Right. It would be a weird thing. Because I, mean, like, I could attack twice, move, and raise a shield. Hey, technically, so, you could have two shields. This character yeah. sheet. <laughs> but like a monk what with no that? weapon just running so around with a shield. Special is where I put dumb, my... Right? Um, Maybe he's got one of those big that be So I very intentionally am not doing that. So when he, when he raises it, he actually pulls his head off. My and then just goes back in his head. Heritage... Is oh, I'm there's different sure feats. There's skill feats and general feats. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. I think that, that's, so I put my heritage feet here because that's where that belongs. But I think, Thanks, yeah, I put my um. Well, no, I put my background feet. Here. Is heritage is the iron gut goblin considered a feat or? No, that iron gut goblin. Well, it is your heritage, your heritage, so it kind of goes under a feet. Okay. At least on my sheet, they have it under a feet. Oh, I put, I put the see, yeah, I put the wrong one. Special. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Whether Special it's a is a feat in case you get a feat from something else. Heritage, I would it does count. Yeah, you you get both a heritage and an ancestry oh, feat. Right. Ancestry feat is so that would be the under the special one, right? Well, you, mine has a heritage. Put spot. that in the spe my, mine has a special a heritage and so then that, feet. So iron gut would be your heritage. Iron gut would be a heritage. Right. Okay. And then feet first would be whatever you picked for your ancestry feat. Special would be if you had another feat for some right. reason. Which like, stupid humans. Well, if you were a human, then you picked the whatever the one for talented humans. Versatile, human, versatile, versatile human, and then you can also Class take a thing, vicious human, as your ancestor feet, and they get two general feats. Yep. So the featured so. class feet would be your the like my subtle delivery then right um, for the class feet. In my case, what they put down there was my muse, which gives me a bunch of things. So in your case, I assume we'd be toxicologist. Mine's dodge. But I don't know that. That's for the for the bar. It, it would probably help if I actually like put this in. Uh, thing. When I did it in Path Builder, it just printed it right there as my Maestro Muse is my feature class feature because <laughs> it's an ability. Yeah, that's what's nice about the sheet that you handed me is that it has all the class feats already. I just have to make sure I know which one I'm doing. Like oh, this, yeah, I'm doing. Oh shit! Sure. So, yeah, that's it lists cool. them already. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That. Yeah, that's pretty sweet, man. <laughs> Did you guess? I see the, uh, the alchemist. Uh, yeah, yeah. ability enhancement magic items, basically non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a 17th level built, uh, belt of hell giant or of giant strength. It's a 17th level item. Pretty cool. Huh? Yeah. It's the, well, it's and the if I was playing the wizard, that was the other character I kind of looked at. The one I played in the one shot. He was my goal. Whole goal for him was to get to magic item creation and craft magic items. That does not fit. Sandy at all, so he would never do that. But that was, I can't his name now, but that was my own wizard, was where I was. Unless someone else in the party was playing a focused crafter, he was going to be aimed at magic crafting, which would be weird because it means he'd have to up his crafting to expert right away so he could take it. So my guy could do that. Hmm? So boosts are one, right? So you each boost, you get each one. Each boost is plus two. Plus two. All boosts are plus two, all flaws are minus two. Let's see. Well, sketch. at first. Boost, well, boost become plus one. What, anything once your character right? goes up levels, it's oh, different. Yeah. But for your so creation, this, creation, this, yeah. this, again, my, the thing did it all for me. So yeah, I'm right, all yeah, all boosts are plus two, which is how you can get an 18 if you take all four boosts in one entry. Right. Because that's the most you can do. Because you can't you have, up. Well, you yeah, have different things. You can boost two without. Because you have your. Um, you have four boosts. Uh, ratio. Yep. You've got background. Yep. Uh, class and free. 
So each of those times you can raise an attribute by plus two, so you can wind up with an 18. But I do have in one attribute. Whatever your class's primary attribute is, you can get that 18. That's your only one. Okay. And I mean, maybe in later books or other books I don't have, there's another way to do it. But in the basic books, that's the you only get, way to get to an 18. So you get your ancestry of background and class. And then you get four, four boosts, additional. But yeah. they have to go in four separate abilities. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. you, no, at no one stage can you boost the same ability twice. Gotcha. So, like, you yeah. can't put your free yeah, you ratio that. boost into one that's already boosted now by Now you can flaw it up. That's boosted by Ritz. That's right. Because I, I have an ancestry that boosts my wisdom, and then I have a... Uh, and, took, and I took my free one, or I, I took my free one from Ancestry, and then my Heritage. So I've got, so got a, I have a 14 there, so I can get a 16 theoretically. Right, because that's the only, I think that's the only thing that's said. Well, you can get 18. Right. You get one set You've got four play times, you can give it a plus two. So if it's your class feet, you get it to 18. Your class so you can attribute it gives to an 18. Your class attribute, you, you can get it to 18. You sure you don't want to use that, man? I'm not going to be using it. Well, I mean, let's set it here. Maybe I'll use it. Okay. Well, but, so what race are you? I'm an orc. An orc. So what are your? But I took I took strength and wisdom. All right, so I got a little bit excited about yep. all this. If you get the background that gives you a wisdom, which boost, I did, it goes to 14. Yep. Cl cleric as a class gives you wisdom boost, goes to 16. Oh, okay, see, I didn't do the class one. That's and then you get free four free boosts. The class is the one I'm missing. I'm suspecting I didn't realize there were class boosts. It's just a wisdom. It's only it's just one. one. It's one thing. Okay, I'll just check. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure it's got to be wisdom, right? Be silly for it not to be. But. Pretty much, there's a few classes you get to pick, but both the rogue, so. the rogue, depending on your rogue background. is strength or dex. Monk is also Monk strength, is strength or dex. It's strength or dex. Fighter is too. You can also mastermind gets take can take intelligence. Oh, that's right. There's a weird one for the rogue because yeah. everyone is different. Everyone is different. So at the very beginning of the class. Yeah, I was looking there. Oh, right here, key ability, key wisdom. ability wisdom. So okay. you get a plus two in your. Okay, so cool. So I so I could get an eighteen. Easy. So you can get that's one the one attribute whatever your class is can yep. be an eighteen. Yep. Because I loved, I was fascinated by the idea of making a rogue, and that's just with the base book that had was trained in all of One the skills, non all the skills in the game, which you can do with the sixteen, just barely. And I just thought that would be a funny character. I do literally everything. Crap, I don't know funny. anything. I got one lore thing for my background, but class-wise, I do everything. I do like their encumbrance system. Did you know? Did you see that? Straight bolt two. is pretty easy. Yeah, it's one, two, right? You can we can add up. It's a much simpler way to go than, than a lot of encumbrance, and I do like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually the encumbrance rules are so complicated that people are just like, mm, so long as you're not carrying around, you know, the kitchen sink, you're you're. You keep you're, it within reason, but yeah, that makes it cool because then you. There is enough that you have to think about it, but it's not hard to do, and it's not hard to do on the fly. So this should, should theoretically be nine boosts, right? Four free. Usually there's one from your class, and then two from your heritage, two from your ancestry. Right. right. That's Most ants, not all. I got the four because that flaw. Yeah. So yeah. Not all of them have flaws, but some of them have a flaw, and that gives them an extra boost. Heritage is also sometimes have a plus minus. So three, three pluses and one minus. Some of people. Yeah. But you're an orc, so it doesn't matter. I was going to say, like, I think it does. Orc, if you have two pluses and I have two no pluses. minus, so not three that's pluses like the humans. Have two Whereas pluses. a lot of them have three, three pluses, pluses right. and then one minus. Right, and mine is only half. Did you give me a background? I did. Uh, I emailed it to you, but it's also on my character sheet here. If you'd like to read it. Oh, okay. You emailed it. Okay, all right, cool. I'm going to end up emailing you one. I've got yeah, it. Yeah, me too. A lot of it in my head, but I don't have any around paper right now. I'm avoiding technology as I'm into physical. <laughs> I just didn't want to miss the first day, but man, it was a rough day. So, but yeah, you know, it's interesting because you can really spread your attributes out, or you can really focus. Right, you can. But even when you spread them out, you still wind up fairly focused. Yes. I mean, I guess you could really, really work not to be, but unless you're really trying, you're going to be fairly focused. So I tried to do a, a monk rogue. Um, start off with the monk base, and then add some rogue to it. A few rogue archetypes. And to oh my god, I, I ran into Matt's problems real fast. I'm just a bard. I'm only a bard. I'm sitting here on Capitol. Capitol Bard Hill. <laughs> Capitol <laughs> Bard Hill. Bard, bard College Hill. Silly. And someday I might be a rogue. Someday. Hey Amen. You can laugh at it, but that stuff taught us everything. Schoolhouse Rock was the king of learning when I, I was a kid. I feel like I feel like Except that was a lie. Since they took that <laughs> off TV, wasn't there a Family Guy version of the Bill? I, don't I know. think I so. Never, I never watched Family Guy, so yeah, it's basically involved corruption, I'm lobbyists, sure. and a whole bunch of other things to get well, the bill through Congress. And that is none of that 
invalidate Schoolhouse Rock. They True. don't talk about the whole process through Congress. They just talk about the steps. <laughs> they don't mention that there might be a few uh, other steps. horse yeah. trading in there to make it actually work. They even mention that it can be modified by both houses. They don't talk about why it was modified. So it's not false. It just left out a couple of steps that school-age kids don't necessarily need to know. What's funny is teachers are using it again in classroom they, because the videos, you can all get them online. And so they'll have you, they'll play them. They, they use all those Schoolhouse Rock I grew up with on Saturday morning cartoons in the classrooms now to teach kids like Conjunction Junction. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Because I'm like, yeah, this was, when I was a kid, this is on TV between, between episodes of like your shows. You'd see yeah. they play That's Conjunction Junction. Yeah, all day Saturday because I was, it was the only day I was allowed to watch TV. So Saturday morning cartoons and. The one that, is the money done in tens again? So 10 silvers, yeah. one gold. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Because this says 15 come, silver on there. You start with 15 silver, 150, or 15 gold, yeah. 150 silver. Most yeah. things cost. Well, the one that caught me up there right, yeah. was, uh, I, I was saying, Those yeah, I used to watch uh, yeah. and then uh, Will Smith, are also three you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, oh, yeah. yeah. like all the time. I was, like, this is my favorite show. And this, like, 23-year-old right girl is like, oh, I love that show. And I'm like, how do you even know about, about, about this show? It's like, I watched it every day school immediately. Like, right? 20 like, years later, fighters have played, you like, are watching the same the yeah. television <laughs> show I was watching. I've so. heard that the economy actually it was that good. works with yeah. the second edition. Yeah. And now you can watch it and stream it and watch all the episodes one right after the other. You don't even have to wait. Mm -hmm. And you can watch the Carlton episode over and over and over and over again. Any episode. They're all so good. Well, the one where Carlton does the Carlton. Yes. Although the one with Will's dad is still the best one. Will's dad? I don't remember that one. At uh, one point his dad like, shows why back up. Oh, no, no, no. Walked, walked out and they start making plans and his dad says, well, it's not going to work out after all. Yep. I'm going to just head out. I can't take you with me like I thought I could. Yeah. And leaves, and Will has an understandable breakdown about I, uh, it. Uncle Phil loses his I, mind, Uncle too. Phil, yeah. I almost, Uncle Phil almost out. beats him. Yeah. I, uh, I actually live pretty close to that. My uh, That's tough. Yeah, I, my adopted I mother <laughs> showed up, um, decided to f come and find me again, and we connected. And she invited me to the family reunion to meet everybody and like meet my grandparents and everything. I still love my parents. My parents are mm -hmm. always gonna be my parents. My my uh, mother who gave me up for adoption though she was like she's like oh you know let's you know let's let's get together and she's like you know and she she comes we, we spent like a couple of months hanging out and then she's like hey I'm, we're gonna. We're thinking about moving to, I lived in Mount Pleasant at the time, we're thinking about moving to Oil City out here near Mount Pleasant, you know, and we'd be closer and we could, I'm like, that would be awesome, you know. And then, about two weeks later, she shows up, I'm going to move to Arizona, so. Yeah, mine. Like, just like that, just like, do you understand, like, the trauma of, How like, much, you, you know, did that to me once and now you're doing it again and, like, you're just leaving, like, oh, here, your biological mother who just goes right to the curb, <laughs> like, yeah. oh my god, it was horrible. I mean, mm -hmm. clearly like a terrible person to do that. Like you don't show up and make a bunch of promises. You could show up and be like, hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, you know, at least you want to connect right, with you. That'd be great. But to make a bunch of promises and act like we're this big family and then just to be like, then vanish. and then disappear again. Lady, do you understand <laughs> like what you're doing? But of course she didn't. She was dumb. <laughs> the only good thing that came out of that is my sisters, who I love when I get to hang out with them. Well, that's good. Because that's all. All of my kids, well, both Yeah, boys, I found out yesterday that my dad has uh, congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Yeah, but both of my, my sons talked about the birth, meeting the birth parents. Mm -hmm. A life of, of hard, 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 hardcore alcohol and drug use. Well, yeah, I'll do, do that to you. Yeah. It's not good for your heart. I've, 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 it, it sounds cold hearted and, and detached from feelings, but I've expected this for years. Like, Sure. I expected him to die a long time ago. When I got that call when I was in Iraq that he was in a coma and he was close to, to not being around anymore and I couldn't leave. I... Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's... 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 Fine at this point, I guess. But it is what it is. I'm not yeah. worried about so it. They don't give you like a leave of duty absence or something to deal with that stuff? Because you... If someone's going through that, they're going to be mentally compromised. I was know? I was on Red Cross, uh, what they call Red Cross, like Red Cross puts you on alert. So if you have to leave in an, uh, with that emergency, mm -hmm. you'd be able to leave. But even if I had gotten that, like, hey, you need to come home, 
there's no chance I probably would have been there by the time he had passed. I would have been there for a funeral, but... Yeah, but you'd at least be able to go and deal with, like, family mm -hmm. emotions and all that crap. Yeah, Because, yeah. you know, like, I don't know. If a soldier's father or something just died, I, he's probably not fit for duty until no, he gets past that, right? They even, like, they were going to let me... Well, I was in the middle of the ocean when my grandmother died, and they were going to fly me back, but I chose not to. I was like, no, my, my grandma was... Uh, Gone a long time before she died. She was not mentally there. It she wasn't, yeah. So it was just like I. It would just be harder to go and experience that again. And I just you know went and paid my respects after I got back. But they did offer me when my grandmother died to fly me off the ship through the middle of the ocean. They would flown me right back. But yeah, they did that for my brother. Yeah. Navy. You were in the navy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my brother was in the navy. <laughs> How are they gonna fly you off the ship? They only got boats. What? Navy's only got boats, dude. Yeah. They asked the Marine Corps to help. Oh, yeah, there you that's go. what the Navy always does. <laughs> <laughs> was on one of those. Um, we're gonna attack a beach. Um, pretend aircraft we're carrier. Not actually. <laughs> oh, one of those. One of those. Yeah. yeah. One of one of my uncles uh, was a he was Navy, and he always laughed because my dad was his Marine. So. We all know that he would say, "Yeah, Navy. there's a reason more Navy guys than Marines. We take you there. We shoot things for miles away, and then we go, hey, guys, go over there and shoot.' We drop you off and have fun. Run. Exactly. <laughs> and he was, you know, Vietnam era, so yep. you know, he's like the old flat landing craft. That mm -hmm. He's like they're wallowing in the water. My dad gets seasick anyway, oh, like, yeah. so all of us are puking. Of course, once one person pukes, yep, yep. we all puke. <laughs> and we're thinking, this would be great to hit a beach under fire, you know, yep. when we're all seasick and miserable right. and puking all over, and then we charge in enemy fire. Wouldn't this look like it'd be a great plan? Yep. But this is also the Marine Corps that assured him that if you're in a helicopter and the pilot dies, just relax, the thing will land itself. Yeah. And my brother-in-law, who was a helicopter, said, well, it will land. <laughs> he says, you ain't gonna live through it, but it will right. land. It's, it's kind of like all humans can fly. Yeah, and they generally briefly. downward <laughs> right. no, no. Humans will fly for every period of time, depending on how high they leave. So they would just lie to him to make him feel better, basically. Pretty much, because they figured it's better than them running around screaming like idiots and then dying. Might as well die. <laughs> the people who have test tested the theory... Never had any complaints from Right, well, never heard anything about it. And Dad's like, and most of the guys believed him. He says, you know, I was brighter than the average guy there, and I was pretty sure it didn't, but I didn't know what I could do about it, so we just nodded. You know, because yeah. you didn't argue. Well, so he talked to me, he says, you know, because this was, like, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. He says, we're at end of boot camp. And, you know, we had been all the way through. We're lined up, getting ready to, grad to leave boot camp. And our drill instructor walks up in front of us and says, all right, congratulations, you made it. Just out of curiosity, is anybody here I haven't hit? One guy says, one poor stupid son of a bitch raised his hand. <laughs> says, the real sergeant walks over, and you can see he's waiting for congratulations. He says, never hit you once, huh? Nope. Sucker punched him right in front of everybody, right in the line <laughs> to walk up and graduate. Just wow. laid him out. So I get eight formulas at first level. Yeah. Two? It's not bad. He just, he just walled out and walked away. Like, <laughs> he's like, now, 100% again. I always win. That's just, I'm sure there were other guys who didn't get hit. They were smart enough not to raise their hand. They just stood at attention. No, no sergeant. You, no sergeant. Good job, sergeant. So you can't keep track of who hits. Hey, no, there's too many people and too much going on. Right. Any more they're not supposed to hit. I don't know if they nope. actually do. They weren't then either. But nope. that's it. Yeah, they had broom handles for motivation. They weren't supposed to make contact with you, but you there were a lot of accidental contacts with broom sure. handles. You know, when he was in the you, room. Yeah, it's, it's like... In the United States, Marines are uh, shotguns are only used to be used as breaching devices. Uh, For what you're breaching, right? Yeah, and, and, and you know, quoting the fat electrician and a couple other Marines that he's talked to, you'd be amazed as to how many doors are wearing uh, robes and flip flops. Uh -huh. <laughs> How many door, be, doors? Yeah, how, how, how many doors breached? are wearing sandals and robes? Wait, so they're only able to use shotguns and Officially, weapons. Officially, shotguns <coughs> yeah, are not supposed doors. to be. Geneva Convention, shotguns are right. not considered a military weapon because they're more likely <coughs> to aim than to kill. Right. So they're not supposed to be used in combat. Oh. But if you're doing urban combat through small areas, there's nothing better. Right. Because so it doesn't, they don't go Officially, far. you're just shooting <coughs> a hole in the door, but it's yeah. easy to aim, it's <coughs> fast to fire. And what a waste for the Benelli M4. It's a very effective close combat weapon, Whoa. but when the rules were made up, they're thinking trench fighting, and they're virtually useless in that situation. And right. They're not. I, I would argue use, that shotguns are the best close combat and mid combat weapon out there, mid range combat weapon out there. Oh yeah, 
But that's right. why they recommend it for home defense if you want to protect your house. Is a, a shotgun with a pistol with the pistol grip is your best home defense. Yeah. It's easy to aim. It's scary as heck for most people, especially if it's pump action. Right. And you're not going to put a hole in the wall and hit your neighbor. I know. Right. I know. If I if you hear that rack that slide racking a little bit, everyone knows that sound. Right. It makes terrifying. you think right, right. just a hair. And if you're in the it also in the means movies, you get plus two to hit. Some games. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're in the movie, you should just ratchet it continuously. Plus, you know? I think that's a feng shui rule. But if you're in the movie, you should just ratchet it continuously. You want feng shui? Yeah. Uh, leave it to the Marines to figure out that you can hold that's seven way too plus, many one in the plus one plus one as the everyday man. Right. So yeah, there's a thing called ghost loading where you can keep an extra round in the carrier uh, assembly. I played a scrappy kid and beat people up on my skateboard. Well, I was <laughs> laughing because I did a lot of duck hunting as a kid. Uh, and you uh, uh, only have three rounds uh, on your shotgun when duck hunting. <laughs> just it's the law. All right, I'm so they put plugs in that you can't fill it with road, more than that. Hit the uh, semi truck. Well, if the DNR stopped, that's one of the things like, they check is make sure that they're going three. With the car. My dad got a thousand dollar fine because he used three and a half inch shells, but one of the other guys in the boat used two and three quarter inch shells. That's and you could get four two and three quarters in his shotgun. So he got a thousand dollar violation fine for because he could fit four or something because they were that size of shell was in the boat, and he could have got four in his shotgun. He was so pissed because yeah. he makes his own plug so that he could put the three and a half so he could have three really big shells because he was goose hunting and he wanted yeah, the extra no, firepower. Uh, he was mad. Yeah, 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 Me and my dad yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. pretty even tempered most of the time, but that's he came yeah. home from duck hunting. Man. He, he was, was spitting. He was nails he must at have that pit, point. He must have pissed that dude off. That wouldn't surprise me. Like, it doesn't take a whole lot. The piss off DNR people. Because yeah. yeah, we had a guy pull up on us and we had like four rods, four people on the boat, but only two of us were fishing, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, <clears throat> so he's like, let me see everybody's licenses. You don't have a license. You don't have a license. And you're like, yeah, I have a license. And he was like, but you have four rods, four people, you need to have four licenses. You have to have a license on everybody. And well, that's, yeah. I mean, it's the law. And that's what's here, too. He understood. He was mad at his buddy for not telling me I had little shells. That's what he was mad at. Well, we talked him out of it, though. Yeah. He just yeah. said, gave us a warning, told us to make sure we get. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Well, that depends on them. And I tried to tell him about dual building and all sorts of stuff. And just <laughs> One of my friends who was, a, he was an actual fishing game warden. And one you of the things, literally tried to tell the DNR no. person about dual wielding? No. But <laughs> well, one of my friends was DNR. But I really did have two rods. Right? Yeah, that's what and a lot of people do, but the law is everybody in the boat that's has to have it. But, yeah. but he was he laughed because one of the things they do in um, uh, up in Bay City is they do, what's that called, smelts or something? Some kind of fish that runs in just huge streams. Yeah, smelt. Yeah. Smelting. Yeah. You go in with big nets. Yep. Well, apparently, you pair can catch walleye that way because they're in the same water. And you have to throw them back. Is the law? He says, and of course most people don't. They right. Keep them. He says, and I was watching this one group, and they're smelting, okay. and they kept yelling, "Hey, DNR guy, got another walleye!" Just screwing around. He says, so, and they didn't know I was up there. So every time they did, I wrote down one more, one more, one more, walked <laughs> down. So I understand you got twenty walleye today, and I saw none of them back in the water. He says, These guys are looking at me, and you know it's uh, five hundred dollars a walleye, so. <laughs> That's ten grand you owe, my friend. <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he says, because Eric, you know, and he didn't. He's like, I didn't write him a ticket for the whole thing. But he gave him each a ticket for taking walleye illegally. But he's like, just watching him as they're yelling it out, I'm like, oh, this is just too much fun. I'm just waiting. So the way this is your friend who was a DNA? My friend's the what, Fish and Wildlife. And oh, he's out okay. there because they'd had a report of people, you know. Yeah, okay, I and they it. always check people with smelting because a lot of them do keep the walleye. Mm -hmm. And but he's like he's watching and they just keep yell, waving the walleye up and you know around and yelling about it because they don't think anybody can hear him. He's just marking my little book. One, two, three. Came down when I got to 20. I figured that was enough to scare the heck out of them. I'm like, there's a reason this is illegal. Don't be stupid. They actually have to create laws for, like, stupid people. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, pretty funny. funny. I always wonder how many laws are because someone tried it or because someone said, you know, if we don't make a law, somebody's going to try it? Because, you know, there's both. Yeah, that's I mean, there's people's whole job is to think about how stupid can you be and do we need to make that illegal? Yeah. My favorite one is uh, the rescuing people off of ice flows. Right, I like ice fishermen mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that uh, go out on the out on Lake Michigan, and the ice breaks the ice off, breaks and the way they go, and the way they go. It's like the first time you do it, yeah. it's five hundred dollars. The second time you do it, it's imprisonment. <laughs> <laughs> to do what? You, to rescue someone? Yeah. To get rescued that way. So the first time you do it, oh. if you get caught on an ice flow, they'll charge you five hundred dollars to get you off the ice flow. I mean, they'll get you off the ice flow. No matter what, but yeah. And ticket you. 
Um, but the second time you do that, they'll throw you in jail. Why do they? Why do they do that for pecan? I suppose because people, because people are shouldn't be walking out on money. Because you're going that far out, you're being stupid. You're being stupid, oh. and they might have to go and rescue you. Now, whether they would actually imprison you probably depends a lot right. on your attitude. For sure, yeah. But they have the authority to. Right. Yeah. Well, my dad had a problem. He has a backhoe, and it had a. It would, it would throw sparks out the smokestack. I'm not enough to know exactly why. And so he started more than one fire in the neighborhood. They were on the farms out there. And the firemen finally said, look, if you start another one, we're going to find you. We've been out, I think, by the fourth time, they said, we've had enough. <laughs> find a way to stop because this is, you know, you're endangering people and you're burning up a lot of time and energy that you shouldn't be. And so uh, Strangely, the next day, he had a big a net over it, a metal net to catch all the sparks. We had a, a barn burning. They invited the, the fire department to come and everything like that. And they were all all so, out there, and they were burning down the barn. With an, an, and then all of a sudden, they hear this explosion. That means you gotta get oh, like I don't four think extra I removed the propane right? tanks right. in the Maybe. basement. So yes, I said yes. <laughs> one and they're like tanks. You get one automatically. Yeah. And then plus X, where X is your intelligence modifier. Okay, tanks. so like yeah, so it would be <laughs> common and goblin, or what I I inherently yeah. know. Right. So it would be three more above, or four more above that. Okay. So it means languages beyond that equal to your mod. All right, so I'm skills. Usually there's a list under it. I'm sorry. Skills. You get usually certain skills. Sometimes you get some from your. I got one history. from me, yeah. Sometimes your back your background will always give you some. Okay. Get one from the background. Probably a one in a no. Usually it's yeah. Usually a lower. What are, what are you? Feet. Oh, right. a skill and a feat from your background. So my background gave me. Or, uh, I might be and different. so the fancy you get. So do you have an Android? You just mark a train. Sorry. Do you have an Android? No. And then your class will. Well, give you talking about the app thingy? Or? Yeah, the path builder thing has yeah, an Android app. Exactly. And that's what I was using at home. I don't have an Android. All right. Otherwise, I would just yeah, port it over. And then the, the rest come from your class. Religion. So. Yeah, skills. Trained in religion, one skill German determined by right, the Right, so I got one skill two. from my background. Right. Well, it probably is one plus a lore from your background. Um, yep. I don't know the background. Usually a skill feat, too. I get an it ability might boost. It might, well then, yeah, because you should have two ability boosts, and at least most backgrounds from the base. Two ability board. boosts, and I'm trained in a lore skill. Oh wow! Oh, and then, but I get to cast guidance as an innate. Okay, so I was gonna say you probably get something else. Exactly. Yeah. So. Ooh, that's nice. Guidance is innate for me. Yep. So. And then your class will give you trained saving throws, trained perception level, all those things. Get you a whole stack of proficiencies. Say that again. And under your cleric class, this this whole column is all. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, and real real quick, trained is plus two. Um, well, two plus your level. Plus your level, yeah. And you add your level to everything. Yeah, every time you level, all, everything goes up by one. Yeah. So from a purely die roll or skill level standpoint, your how trained you are becomes less important as you go up, but there's a lot of things that are based on. You must be this trained to all right. do it. So I have 15 gold available? Correct. Right? Okay. Highly recommend kit. Look at the kit first and see if it has what you want, because those are... What, somebody what, took the last Reese's egg. What page Should are the kits under? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Uh, no, I'll just go grab 100 nope. grand. No, it's okay, dude. Page, I'm nine. just messing with you. Right, I'll take it. All right, Younger Eyes. <laughs> 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 it's, it's like a park. Like oh, it's like that. Oh, 289. Page 289. 289? Okay. And what's that little arrow symbol for? Is that for your range? It's a different ratio. They're much thicker. And so, like, it kind of messes up. What's that is the way? bonus to oh, hit. Oh, okay. The peanut butter to chocolate. There's more peanut butter to chocolate, right? For the eggs, right? Oh, okay. And um, that's dexterity plus proficiency, right? Yes. And Which proficiency is plus three? Well, it's two plus your level, so it'll probably be three. Assuming you're trained and not an expert in it. Uh, oh, that's perception. Two plus level? Yeah, so it should be three. Assuming okay. you're trained and not expert in it, it's... Two plus your level. So I don't get demand yet until yeah. second level. Probably not. Yeah, second level if you get clarity. Okay. Yeah. yeah, usually your class fee doesn't come until second level. Yeah. Except for a very small number of classes right, right, that right, get right, them right. first. I'm as good as you are. I'll be better. Nope. So, so how many? Okay, so trained gives it. 
trained is two plus your level. Weird little things that make okay. Them. Expert is four plus your level. So trained is two plus, paper, plus level like, plus proficiency. Yeah, I, I, no, guess, that is the I guess they can take okay. the finder. That that is what you get plus three from. Okay. It's your level but, plus two if you're trained. Have you ever read bonus. The Lies of Lock Lamora? No. Have you seen the Banshees of Inisherin yet? Yeah. It's a book. But I could see the D&D movie early. Anyway, it's what I based this character on. I could see the D&D movie early. Oh, yeah? yeah. A group of Amazon Prime has given out tickets. Bastards. Not giving out, but you can get but tickets for early show. Like, they're basically like a really I decided it was worth it. That cool. are... Because you know, I really wanted to be good. Who, you know, their offerings. All right, like so I, yeah, I wanted it. To be, I wanted it. Trained in one's guild return by your twisted deity. Yeah, I mean, you get a kind of like forgot who your deity compared to them. Yep, that's how it is. I say, that was always the more complicated thing for this, obviously. I don't have to use a new toy. Because I can't see it anymore. Lines, not lines. It's okay, The first one is maybe my favorite book I've ever read, or it's right up there. The rest of them are not as good, but he's also one of those off authors who put three books out, and then has we've been waiting like ten years for book four because who's this? Uh, what's his name? Scott Lynch, I think is Scott Lynch. Yeah. <laughs> I've been reading, rereading all the Torg stuff, so I've been really busy reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been reading um, Expanse. I, I read the first book of that, and I always forget because my library doesn't carry them. I have to order them. I always forget to get the second one. It annoys me. I, I bought the first book a while ago, and I haven't read it yet, but then I was at Schuler's the other day, and they had books two, three, and four used okay. for basically half the price. And I was like, well, now I own the first four. I guess I should probably start reading it. I know the first one I really enjoyed. I just... Yeah. I mean, if you watch the series, it's pretty similar. But I just, I, Like I said, I just kind of lost lose track. After I read the first one, I don't get around to ordering the second. Mm. By the time I do, I've forgotten the first one. I have to reread the first one again. So I like this uh, on Audible better because the writing level is more at a college level. It's a little bit more complicated, harder to write. <coughs> and if you miss stuff, which I have like horrible problems with reading. Right. Makes it a lot tougher. Yeah, it makes it a lot tougher. I like reading simple fiction. Like I'm reading um, Bosch, the Bosch series. I'm also reading um, the Pendergast series, which is what my character is based on. The Pendergast series from Childs and... So I'm the opposite. I struggle to listen to something and retain it. If I read it, I'm fine, but if I'm listening to it, I forget it about two seconds later because my brain's wandered off to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I don't See, do I, well listening. I do this while I'm driving. Yeah, and I don't drive much, so I don't need to. Yeah, I have the same problem with audiobooks. Yeah. It, I, can, I really only listen to books I've read before. Right. If I've read I, it before, I can do it. The nature of my job is amazing because I am basically by myself all day so I can listen to podcasts, audiobooks, mm -hmm. basically any music I want to and so can I. But um wow. Also supposed to be reading advanced mathematics. <laughs> they, get <irritated. laughs> they get irritated if I'm in class listening to podcasts for some reason. I could listen to audiobooks while I'm working but I I'm like reading emails all day and so I would immediately not be paying attention to what's mm -hmm. happening. And that's mine. As soon as my brain wanders, which it does very quickly, I'm lost and I have to like re rewind and go, wait, what just happened? Yeah, I just, I put like stuff on in the background. I, I work from home now. I'm actually got permanently assigned to work from home finally. But, um, and so I just will throw on whatever TV show in the background, like old episodes of ALF or whatever. <laughs> that's the worst thing about it. in class when I don't have something to do because I'm bored out of my mind. Yeah. And I have nothing to do. Right. So I wander around the class and watch right, the kids. Right, 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 right. Like, you could just sit down with me, yeah, because there's no chance you'd start playing games on your computer. No, computer. no, yeah. I'm like the teachers. I can't pull up your screens in class like the teachers oh. can. So I have to actually look at your screens. Right. And then oh, they found out I was so horrible, I look at the, the task bar and looked for windows they had open in, you know, to see if they had a gaming windows open with that they, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, I'm not dumb people. And I may not be computer savvy like you guys are. But I know enough to recognize, you know, that you've got a game window open on your computer. Yep. Yeah. I remember the name of the game now. I got one weird Fortnite type game, but where you're egg shooting each other, and it looks like a blast, but it's not what's supposed to be doing during class. Correct. <laughs> yeah. You're so Fortnite. mean. Why are you so mean? Yeah. Because it's my man. job. <laughs> it's perks of the job. Oh, you get no. to be mean. I've been trying to learn the Fortnite dance. Ah. Hey, we had that in one of my seminar classes. Trying right? to floss. They had a Fortnite dance contest. Because we had nothing to do, and I said, well, how many people know the Fortnite dances? And so they were showing me the different Fortnite dances that they knew. 
I have no idea if they're good or bad because I don't know any of the Fortnite dances, but they kept them occupied. Horrible. But I mean, if they were true to the game or not. Oh. But they, they kept them occupied for the half an hour that we had to kill, and so I was good. Because mm -hmm. it took about three seconds for them, of course, to all decide they're better than whoever's currently demonstrating. They have to jump up and demonstrate it instead. Right. Yeah. And the teacher had said, I don't care what they do as long Would as they don't I, kill each other. I guess. Uh, would I? What level of armor would I have access to? Whatever my I'm able to buy. What like you buy allow? proficient in. Correct. You need to be. You need to have. Is it called proficiency? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Whether you're trained, whatever you're trained or better in. Right. So up to medium. medium. So anything up to medium armor. And you have to have the money for it. Well, of course. Yeah. I wear padded, so you know. I wear leather. I almost didn't wear anything. I left your leather, but I couldn't really see a reason to wear that instead of padding. And I can sleep in my armor. Wait, is padding and leather the same? Uh, I don't remember the specifics. I know they were close enough. See, oh my god, it's so hard. Playing a cleric in this is so hard. You overthink it, man. Just grab something. Well, it's not that. It's the decisions on, like, so it says, your weapon. Well, that depends on your god. Your armor. Well, yeah, oh, well, that depends on your god. That's the problem. With, <laughs> yeah, the Eberron gods trying right. to... So. Oh. I see. Are deities listed in here somewhere? Leather there are deities. Higher the back, yeah. There are deities. Yes, leather but a there's depth. a very small That's amount of them, leather. and none of them really match. Higher well, a couple of them come penalty. close. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to go I between those two. To cancel the check right. There's two so. that kind of, if you mix them both, they match. But and since I only have plus three decks anyway, it didn't matter. I can't find this spell <laughs> in this book. Like any spells or spells? No, no, spell? the, the, the specific spell that's on the monster card, but it's not in the spell in the in the book. What spell? No. Inspire courage. That is a bard um, focus spell. That's a focus spell. Because I have this. I have that. Okay. Oh yeah, the way the spells are laid out. Oh, gosh. Yeah. There, the focus if you know spells are if separate. it's a focus spell oh, or not, it's fine. But if you don't know, it's a pain. Yeah. Yeah, that is a bardic focus spell because I will be using it those. constantly. They should just put the focus spells with everything else so you can find them. Yeah. I would not mind that, but they then, put them separately. And then just, so just write, it, write focus one, and it's mm -hmm. not hard. I agree with you. I mean, the only advantage of this way is now I can look at all the bard focus spells individual, but I, yeah. I think with the other spells it would be easier, especially when you're trying to figure out. It's page... Yeah, I got it. I found okay. It. Basically, plus one to attack, damage, and does, saves. Does the Everon book say... Uh, uh, anybody got the Everon book? They can pull up the... I'm trying to decide if, if it says that there's a favorite weapon there. Oh, for a specific deity? Yeah. If I have to pick. I don't know that they do. I, I feel like when I was looking at the favorite yeah. weapons from the Pathfinder deities, it yeah. seemed like really tight banded. Like, why does it have to be this weapon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it's basically. Well, and I was going to. So I read somewhere that somebody said Silver Flame should be bow. I don't know that I agree with that because I think it should include spear because anything with that sort of head on it. The idea is that silver flame has that the silver head, right. teardrop shaped, oh, and so uh -huh. I think a spear should also count. So that's where I was going to lean was, was going to take the spear. Silver flame, but they they were killing like undead and demons and Correct. stuff like that. So it has to be like yeah. a silver tipped head. Bow is what somebody suggested because silver tipped heads, whatever on those. Mm -hmm. But I think spear you could do that also. Yeah, but. It's I think we should go for nuclear bomb. <laughs> what is your weapon? Do you, for weapon fireballs? <laughs> what do you, what do you well, think? Well, I mean, I mean, global spears is great, right, but but not against undead. You're saying? Well, I mean, which I is true I, mechanically. Right. If a spear is inferior to other weapons, right. Why would you want to use the stupid thing? Right. right and especially I mean, if you're tasked with killing undead and fiends, sure. why would you want to use an inferior weapon? I I, I agree. You know what I mean? I, I hear that you. you would want to use the best weapon possible. Bow is not that though, for sure. With the best weapon possible? For against undead, right? I mean, definitely you're... you're I'm not familiar with the path. Well, the well, other advantage of the spear, well, I know, as from what I remember, I think glancing more clerics, is blood the, weapon. isn't the cleric Maybe, have yeah. some kind of a boost if your deity's favorite weapon is a simple weapon? Doesn't Isn't there some... I thought yes. there's something. And a spear is a simple weapon, right. so you would get that boost. It's, it's designed like to bring that, simple yeah. weapons up to martial weapon value. Mm. I don't remember all of it because I remember I just glanced at it because I was kind of curious. There, there is something in the cleric about that. Yeah. Right, because I was thinking the crossbow would be an awesome because it's a simple weapon. Mm. And there's like one god that had a crossbow in the Pathfinder book. I'm like, that would be nasty just from a mechanic standpoint because you get the like one die type boost or something because it's a simple weapon, but it's a crossbow, so it's a D8 damage. And it, it was a fairly nasty. I remember reading it and I don't remember exactly what the rules were for it. We're talking about the gods in here. 
They're near the back. They're I know they're near the back, yeah. Oh, and the Eberron ones. No, it's it's really weird. Um, oh, yeah, and the Pathfinder yeah. knew where they're at. Oh, uh, where was it? It was... Huh. I know. I it's I know backpack, I... bedroll, two belt pouches, studded leather. Wow. Sling bullets, dagger, sling, cow chops, alchemist four. tools, craft. Oh, faiths. Yeah, because it's the faiths, which is like yes. every gazetteer part. So I know what I am. Is a silver flame? Yeah, I don't know if under the description but it says anything about it. May not. Them. Yeah. Because it's not a thing in D and D. Church of the Silver Flame. Yeah, over and over again it says longbow, longbow, longbow. It's just silver flame? Yeah. yeah. So like every every website that I've I bumped through like four of them, it's all the same. Yeah, they disagree about the domains, a lot of them, but I think you're right about the Okay, it's if you're a war priest, you get the increase the damage die by one step for a simple weapon. I'm not. Uh, so then you wouldn't have that correct. anymore, because you would have the, the weirdness of the cloister. Because I, I went through them and I determined that you've got the domain. There's a slight edge with the cloister. So. Well, I think it's funny because I was looking. You mentioned it before. The yeah. online talking about well, they have an edge if they take if they take the archetype champion, yeah. and they're complaining. I'm like, well, it makes sense. Yeah. For me, if you're a war priest, you're already pretty well trained in correct. combat. Yeah. Also, learning to be a holy warrior isn't going to give you a big boost. Right. If you're a cloistered or whatever they call it, the right. yeah, cloistered cloister cleric, right. you have no fighting training. Of course, going to train as a divine warrior is going to right. give you a bigger advantage right. because you're not trained in punching and kicking and fighting. Right. So, Fr frankly, I don't care what you pick as your favorite weapon. Okay. As long as there's one and it doesn't change. Right. Right. Of course. You know. Because that's the idea, is that there's one and it doesn't Correct. change. As yeah. long as that is true, then I'm, what, I don't know. Really they're saying bow or whatever, but I don't have great decks. Scourge! I would rather you play with a cool weapon that you have fun with than be unnecessarily constrained by... Because we're also translating from Pathfinder right. to Eberron, so and it's not answer. a clean translation. So right, right. I'm not true. too concerned about it. So it's obviously the same... Same Silver Flame is obviously based on Bruce Campbell's character from Evil Dead, so it's mechanical hand and chainsaw. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Shotgun. I think that's a good interpretation. Boomstick chainsaw. <laughs> I mean, he's an unnesslayer, right? He's right. 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 That's a good interpretation. I like it. I'm in. We just gotta drop the chainsaw, you know, or use the other hand for somebody. Get one free hand, yeah. and you got a chainsaw. That's right. Well, one, of them, one, that one of them actually just a chainsaw. Like, there's no. No, hand. one hand is a chainsaw. One hand's a chainsaw, but he replaces it sometimes with the mechanical. That's why later he gets uh, the mechanical hands. Yeah. And then he's got his boomstick. Oh right, boomstick. The primitive turns or whatever he says. This is my boomstick. Yeah. <laughs> Primates. <laughs> that what he calls. It. I've, I've been a long time since I watched it. I won't deny that I've seen it, but it has been a long time. Right, Did you uh, watch uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead? Yeah. I have movies? not, no. I've heard it's good, I have not gotten around to see it. Have you ever seen Bubba Hotap? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> no, I've heard that one. I've never seen that. It's awesome. It's like a it's, geriatric version of The Mummy Returns. It, yeah, it's Bruce yeah, Campbell it's playing Elvis. Elvis, who's actually alive and in a retirement home, right. and the retirement home gets overrun by an ancient mummy. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah. he's, is he in Kalamazoo? Because that's where Elvis is supposed to be. Well, that's why Kalamazoo? I, mean, Bruce from I don't Grand know. Place. Place. I have no idea why, but I remember that. Evil Dead took place in Grand Rapids. When so. I was growing up, they always talked about that, that uh, was Elvis, Kensington. Elvis yeah. lived. Right. Yeah. I grew up next to Kensington. So. Yeah. Kennedy National Park is by Brighton, yeah. or State Park by Brighton. That's where I grew up. Yeah, because right. that's where Ash worked. He's at the, the store in Grand Rapids, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the the yeah. Um, uh, S Mart in Grand Rapids. Because they want me to watch that. such a thing here. exists. But, <laughs> but if it did, if it did. Shop S Smart, be smart. Exactly. You got it! That's from, uh, it's probably from that too, but they use that in. Evil Dead uh, again. But they use it in um, Hell on Earth. Oh, in nice. the, the futuristic deadline. Yeah, there was a they time. S Smart. There was a time when Shane uh, actually literally collaborated with um, Bruce Campbell on some stuff. Yeah, that was why that showed up. Yeah, um, I figured they, it was they had a little. Like that. They had a little collaboration, yeah. So. Shop S Smart. Be smart, shop. Yep. S smart. Yep. But yeah, they fish it. I was looking. I'm like, the barred pack has me in studded leather, but I'm like, I think I'm just happy in my padded armor things. I can sleep in my armor, and I don't have a check penalty, which I have a feeling would be a lot more valuable to me than that slightly heavier armor. 
but I do have a buckler. What a coffee, what does that do? Because I can use the buckler. I use that hand. It's a highly and addictive form of coffee. If I need to, I can Sweet. instead raise the buckler. Can you wield a two handed <laughs> weapon with that? Why would I wield a two handed weapon? I have an eight strength. <laughs> a two handed weapon means like a short sword, dude. <laughs> See, I really feel like long spear is a good weapon. I don't hate it at all. Long spear is pretty cool. Yeah. That I remember. And I definitely agree it fits the kind of it silver does. flame look. Right, exactly. I don't hate that weapon. I think that might be what I do. Though in reality, if I was like a monastic order devoted to slaying undead, mm -hmm. pole arms all the way. Yeah, true. <laughs> like a long spear is almost a pole arm. So yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it would have some advantages. The big thing, as we found out in in his game, is that zombies at least are vulnerable to slashing. So being able to slash them would be valuable against zombies. Mm -hmm. Right, and long spear is piercing. But. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I know I used to do that in first edition D and D when there were different undead or different products, enemies, get, like especially undead that were whatever. vulnerable to different Every types of weapons. Because my fighters three. always carried all so, three types. Just nice. to be right, safe. that's the thing. You're gonna have some that are bludgeoning, some that are. There's so a that condition that for ingested for poisons. Would not be a bad choice either is for it that. possible to flavor that where it's in gaseous form and just have it morning star with the same slash rules? Now, more than star, I don't hate either. Yeah. Correct. I mean, and that I can see just like bludgeoning is really good instead. against, you know. Is there more than star, I don't hate at all. That would require a tier of slash in case. Like, which one are you trying to do for? Fit, but your more gaseous, you're gaseous poisons instead of morning star makes sense to me. I was going to use a morning star, but when I found out that the silver flame... Splash damage is contact. I don't know. It's not ingested. I could say you're okay with silver flame used a morning star. I don't think that would be inappropriate. Correct. And that's the thing. So the orc tribe that I'm from is... Going to be slightly different. I, I don't usually have a problem um, with replacing flame, with taking a, a mechanic and not changing the mechanic, but just having a different flavor to it. Usually, I have no issue with reflavoring something okay. as long as the mechanics are not changed. Okay. Usually, I'm okay with that. I think I'm going to do that because that was my original idea. Anyway, and I think it fits. The my original idea was a morning star, and I really want to keep that. And I can justify it by saying, yeah, classically, I mean the the Gosh Kala, which is the orc tribe that I'm from, that that uh, guards the demon wastes are the worshippers of the silver flame, but they're different mm -hmm. than the worshippers, the elven and the human worshippers. So they could theoretically have a different weapon. So. Right. And again, it's not like it's an overpowered weapon. It's a simple weapon. D6 bludgeoning Where damage with verse OP. List. It's a pretty straightforward weapon. That would be uh, quite handy. It says alchemical, level zero alchemical things. And Luke just said I gotta pick one and stick with it. So. Yeah. That's it. Four minutes. There we go. Cool. And then carry battle axe just in case you need some. We'll just say that when you when you receive the like Marshall, you know you blessing of the silver flame sure. or whatever it is like your your specific holy weapon was blessed by the high priest or something right. I don't know and that was the weapon that right. you have now bonded to or something. Okay. You yeah, know, I'm cool with that. That's your type of weapon. Or I'm not saying quote this up that we have trained you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And they and they call it they call it the, so it, I I remember not to call it the silver flame they call it the Kalik Shosh. There's an actual orc name for it. God, God it's like the idea being. Being. Oh, it's being. He's got to stick with a big metal ball. On those head. Yeah, big well, spiked ball. The man. idea that I had before all before the, I found out that religion required a specific mm -hmm. weapon, right, was already. Um, so I'm playing a very shamanistic, very like. Right. Again, from, from the demon waste, it's like, I'm just like, you know, you use everything there. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was to have a weapon that I begin with that's basically a, a femur with a skull and spikes. Yeah. I like it. Oh, a nice uh, orcish sort of. Yeah. Or, orcish. Or, orcish? Hmm. orcish? Orcish. No, with the god. Oh, oh the orcus. God orcus. Yeah, orcus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rod of orcus. Yeah, yeah the jade skull. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good point. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of beautiful. Okay. Splash. Yeah, because that's the dog slicer and the horse chopper. Look at that now. Those are fun. They're just that's, the names that's alone. That's what my barbarian, barbarian used with the dog slicer and the horse chopper. Nice. Nice. But, you know, it's reach, trip, and versatile piercing. Slashing, piercing damage. What's yeah. better? Also, isn't it like a medium sized weapon? Uh, or a small creature? Yeah. Bulk two, hands two. But you know he had an eighteen strength. It's not like he couldn't lift the thing. And the dog slicer is an agile backstabbing finesse weapon. 
He didn't use the finesse part of it. All right, so that's one gold. Um, currently, I can't wear armor, but they'll change. You don't need armor. Yeah, armor. Yeah, this is crafting. My explorer will just put some runes on them. <laughs> It'll change. I'm going to be able to wear lots of armor. Not for a little bit. Oh, you have enough strength, it's a good deal. Which I do. Uh, I can have pretty good <laughs> I do not. Uh, I have any level. Maybe Strength was never a big deal. Yeah, I hired people to move the heavy oh stuff. Oh my gosh. If you critically fail saving throws, guys, you take double damage. Yes. Yeah. It's even more fun when you critically fail against certain vicious spells, like psychic pain. Yeah. I have very high saves, so hopefully two. I don't have to deal with it. Oh, I guess a one is. <clears throat> no, so a one I'm is. One worse, oh. which will usually be a critical failure until you yeah. get a higher level. Uh, well, I mean, all, the DCs are all really different from 5th edition. Like, yeah. uh, a low-level monster's DC might be like a 12. Right. Right? right. Like, in Pathfinder 2, it might be like a 16 or something. Yeah. So it's a, a lot higher, but yeah. your saves are higher, but so are they. Yeah. 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 I've still got like a 9 reflex already, and it's... Yeah. Yeah. I've only got 4, 6, and 6, so might not... Wait, do, do I, You're all of though, right? Yeah. yeah. All of our saves go up, right? Or no? What? All, all of our saves go up every level, or well, you, they get one better because it's always equal to your level. Even a bad save, yeah, your yeah. level. As long as you're trained in it. Oh, okay. We have two two experts and one. Right. The, well, the well, upper, the upper left hand corner of your character sheet lists the, some of the math for that. I have two trained and Burn. one expert. Oh, I'm yes. only expert in will. I don't have very good saves as a bar. I have slated for, on my character for third level, taking fortitude. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Like I said, I really have not planned out his future. Even second level, I'm kind of in a quandary, so. Because <laughs> there's a couple of different options, all of which would be fun. All right, so. Uh, yeah, how, are you, how are you guys doing with your characters over there? I'm almost uh, done, okay. I think. Roughly. I'm oh, splashing I need, Alchemist. I need clothes. I mean, I'm yeah, I mean, I'll be able to love it through combat. I do like I have a weapon, I have spells, I'm good, so... Elixir of life... I'll get you a better character than this, I just, it's at home and I didn't, I couldn't print it and I didn't even think about emailing it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go to the bathroom while they finish up. Alright. That might as be a good time to do it so I don't interrupt the kitchen. Okay. Leaper's Elixir? Okay. Mist form elixir. There, got clothes now. What did you have? So there's armor. Yeah. There's shields. There's weapons and there's gear. But I don't remember seeing clothes in gear. Are there? It's in under gear. It's under what? It's under gear. So I'm just missing. Okay. Clothing. Oh, just plain clothing. Okay. okay. Yeah, and then there was like different levels, so I took fine clothes. Cause my guy's a little uppity. <laughs> All right, so no current, um, no current armor. Arsenic. Do a lot of hit points though. Sickened. Giant centipede venom. By the way, I love how the class kits not only tell you what it costs, but they literally tell you how much you have left over. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, in case you don't want to do the math, here's yeah. how much you have left over after you buy this. In my book here, I have written, <laughs> uh, apparently, I went through the process of actually calculating the values of every single one of the kits. Yeah. And I discovered that the soldier and wizard kit are discounted. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Cheaper than just buying it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so what you could do is you could do that and then sell them back. You could have infinite money, right? I know. Start. Those kits are no longer allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Thank ones. you, Joe. Could you those identify, ones are allowed. identify any money. other cheats in the game, please? Uh, it, it was the bard kit and the cleric kit. All right, those are not allowed. Yeah, those right. Yeah. Three, four, <laughs> the, but the sorcerer and wizard mind. kit, I'm going to buy. I'm I should buy it anyway. You said the sorcerer and wizard kit are, uh, uh, they're, they're <laughs> discounted. The price is off. Yeah. I didn't buy the kit anyway because I didn't want all the stuff in it. So. I, did, I combined a few things from different Yeah, places. I looked at it to see what were they recommending and then bought the stuff that I felt fit my character better than the kit. Yeah. Like, I don't want some other armor. I like my padded armor. I like 
always having my armor. Just yeah, the cleric. Oh, arrows. Arrows are yeah. important. Only if you want to shoot things. Arrows. Where you arrows? Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I do have the short bow and arrows. That's right. I forgot. That is so cool. Ooh, can I have a longbow? <laughs> I forgot I had a bow. Nice. I can. I'm not envisioning using it very often, so. Oh, wait. All right. Definitely keep the short bow because longbows can kind of sneak All right. I think I've got everything I need now. I've got my formulas that I can make. I know what my inf how many infusions I have. I can do five infused reagents per level per day. That means instantaneously I can make. F it can be one. It can be five of Six. one thing or five individual things. Six, two. So, just like the wizard. In other words, you can learn magic missile, magic missile, magic missile, oh, magic no. missile. <laughs> I do love how magic missile works in this game. But... Is it good? Well, hey. you spend actions. So One two. action gets you a single missile. Oh, neat. Two action gets you two, three action gets you three. Nice. So, the more actions you're willing to spend, and because it's a leveled spell, and so it, you yeah. almost always want to spend three actions, but sometimes you're just not in a position to do it, so you have to decide is it worth burning up a level spell for fewer missiles. That's pretty nice. It's that kind of like heal, one. which Dang. is like a d8 for one action, a d8 plus eight for two, or a d8 area yeah, effect for three. Whoa. So the cleric's heals depends on what he needs to do. Two was often All the right. best for healing the universe. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to transfer it onto this. Okay. Yeah, because your, your infused reagents are either... Advance alchemy, make batches, or save them for the quick thing. Uh, real quick, are we a dark yeah. vision party? I have no dark vision. I have I dark have vision. No I have dark vision also. No. So I can. Okay. We're not. So sorry. So I, I uh, that, that. Wait, now you're you're a gunsmith. Oh, that's your background. Yeah, that's my background. Where's your class? Alchemist. It should be up at the top. Uh, well, it's part of that character sheet. That character sheet is special. You see the uh, right in the middle. Uh, okay. Yeah, there. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so when you guys do your normal character sheets and give them to me, please make them normal character sheets, like yeah, a standard Pathfinder issue. So you were saying yeah. that with the yeah, you get so the uh, plus that app online, uh -huh. they're either them out for the advanced the alchemy or the normal character sheet. That right, the advanced yeah, alchemy, alchemy it cuts off your inventory. Last twenty four yeah, hours. Wake that's up in the morning. You that's make what the Savage right. World and creator did to me. Cut off the inventory. The five reagents. It also did for that. No, they split between both. Okay. Any you use up here are not available from Quick Alchemy. Okay. But with Quick Alchemy, you get one dose you have to use immediately. Oh, correct. Advanced, you get two, or I assume Where, it's where's true. Where's the like, proficiency in that two of you like get three like, if it's from your special? So, like, I'm proficient in a weapon. What does that mean for? Uh, it's up in the corner. Signature yeah. items, you would get three instead of two. Now, that might be different with the Toxic College. I don't know that one at all. Let me take a look at that. But typically, so like, as a okay. bombardier, the so two bombs trained. Proficiency in anything you're trained in is three right now. Is yes. Trained is three. three. It's three, two plus it's your two level. Two plus your level. level. Yeah. Sorry. If gotcha. you have expert in it, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it would... Strength. Okay. So then what would that turn into? That would still be... Just plus five. So like if you had picked Wyvern and Venom, you would make... You could make three of those in the morning that would last all day. Or at any time as an action, you could make one alchemy, but then you have to use it. It says you start with the formulas for two common first level alchemical poisons in your formula book in addition to your other formulas. Right. And those are your generally your, at least for any other research field, those are your signature items. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you oh, get three of those if you make them in the morning. Okay. So one infused reagent will get you three doses of that poison. Oh, yes. But if you save it for quick alchemy, it's one for one, but you can make whatever you want when you need it. Right. Like the quick alchemy is like, hey, if somebody needs a quick elixir, right. Kevin, what's your, elixir. What's your or I need your sheet really quick. So turns yeah, out we're going underground, I need a sun no, rod, whatever no it is, problem. depending on the. Yeah, sorry about that, Luke. Just six or eight, whatever you get. Right. Right. Formulas you, you get. Food. I am like. Yeah, dude, there's not. There's only like a few places of pizza. Yeah, hurry up. Help before it gets gone, yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of that bread, though, in there. Oh. Well, yours is clear, too. Yeah, even with the Alex's game yesterday, and even half of that was bad stuff because we're not with Alex, but with, like, kids at home. Wasn't my fault! Yeah. 
We yeah, had fun. Yeah. We did. Although you your guys character are playing board games. Playing we're, 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 we're playing Torg. Yeah. What's that? What's Torg? Multi-genre role-playing game yep. where multiple realities invade the earth. And is also so it's a tabletop RPG. Yep. Yes. Okay. It's like D and D, but is it better. Rift's? Hmm? Rift's? Like? No, because it's not post apocalyptic It's not right. It's not really Rift's. Is, is it's oh, I put it together a post-apocalyptic <laughs> Dragons game. All right. But it's post-apocalyptic. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, see, this is no. This is set in modern in the modern plant world. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. I'm not much. Oh, wait, no, I'm bugged yep. out. Absolutely. Still fill it in a little bits, but we can go ahead, man. No reason to wait. All right. I'm going to find Bohemian Rhapsody on the ukulele. <laughs> I actually found oh, it, which is just terrifying. I believe it's what terrifying. What is your character's name? Blue? Blue. Oh. I'm a small boy from a boy. It didn't sound right, but then I don't know. No music sounds right to me, and my wife thought it was hilarious. But. Yep. Okay. The first thing that I'm going to do is get my, the right place in here. It's mm. Eberron. There's my Eberron thing. All right, cool. Back ball, we all die. Make new characters, everybody. <laughs> so, I'm going to read off the... First, I'm just going to read off. This is basically the campaign pitch that I sent you guys. I'm just going to read it off again. Okay. My people's memory is also... People who are watching this, they know what the premise is, since this is like session one of the game. They'll want to know what this is about. So I'm just going to read this, literally. Kind of session half. All right, so the name of this campaign is Thieves Abound. This is set in Eberron, and we're using Pathfinder 2 resets. So there'll probably be some clunkiness and conversions as we figure crap out. All right, your patron is House Kundarak. One of the twelve dwarven clans of the Marar Holds, and also one of the powerful Dragondemark houses, providing security and baking services across all Corvair. Corvair is the name of the continent that everything is set on. Recently, the Iron Council, the ruling council of the Marar Holds, upon which each dwarven clan has a representative, has become troubled by a series of attempted and successful robberies occurring throughout the Marar Holds. Thus, the Iron Council issued a unanimous edict, a rare occurrence indeed, that each Dwarven clan was to vigorously investigate and put an end to the robberies occurring in its own hold. However, House Kundrak, which also has its own hold there, who is officially only an observer on the Iron Council, but also holds sway, but holds sway from the shadows, suspects that another of the Dwarven clans, or perhaps the Jurassic Jorashtar orcs is likely behind the robberies. The Jorashtar orcs, by the way, um, are some natives that live in the Marar Holds that sometimes get along, they get along with some dwarven clans, but there are other dwarven clans that do not like them at all. Um, so, but they're goodly aligned. They're not bad orcs or anything. In fact, most of the orcs in Eberron are, are good orcs. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they believe that the Jorashtar orcs might be behind the robberies as well. You see, historically, the clans of Marar Holds, the dwarves, have participated in squabbling, feuds, and conflict to no end. And House Kundarak, who has always remained as neutral as possible, simply cannot trust the Iron Council nor the individual clans to successfully resolve this matter. Furthermore, and most concerning of all for your patron, House Kundarak's magically and mechanically secured vaults have also been targeted. Though, of course, none of the robbery attempts were successful, thankfully. Imagine the blow to the house's reputation as premier banker and security specialist if they had been. At any rate, this is where your adventuring party comes in. Having been newly commissioned and onboarded by House Kundarak, you have been established as known agents of the house. Sorry, you have not been established as okay. known agents of the house. Furthermore, none of you are dwarves. Those two elements and the untapped potential your patron sees in you will allow you to travel and investigate and poke your noses where known agents of House Kundarak and dwarves, who the other clans would immediately view as suspicion, would not otherwise be able to go. Thus, your wealthy patron has commissioned your adventuring group to follow the breadcrumbs of these robberies, see where they lead, and resolve the matter using whatever means are necessary. That's the overview of the campaign. Okay. 
What I'd like to do now is let's go around and so you guys you guys know each other. You're fresh band put together, right? Um, so you haven't adventured before together, right? You have just met each other, but you've been on the road traveling for some time toward your first city in contact. So I like to go around the table and introduce your characters. Introduce what other people should know about you. You've been traveling, you've been on a ship, going you know, on the roads and stuff. So people will have, you'll have gotten to know each other a little bit at least. So just share what you would like other people to know about you. Uh, I'll go, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So, your mouth. yeah. <laughs> your mouth's not full of food, so right. on that side. Um, my character is Lirio Rin, although you guys would all know him just as Rin, R Y N. Um, he. Uh, grew up an orphan, um, has no memory of his parents, doesn't know if they're alive or dead or anything like that. His first memories are sort of just surviving on the street. Um, he was picked up um, essentially by what would be considered slavers and purchased by a man who ended up being a priest for this uh, subsect of followers of the god Kol Korin, uh, who is sort of like the god of wealth and prosperity. Um, this cult that he, that I, Rin, is a part of is uh, a thieving aspect of, like a group of thieves essentially that follows this god and they, um, it's, it's sort of Robin Hood-esque, sort of steal um, and give to the needy, but also there's, it's kind of stealing just for the fun. Like there's a there's a flair to it. It's not just like, you know, it, if you if you succeeded, but there was no showmanship involved, it's not a successful heist essentially. So there's there's a bit of the flair for the dramatic and stuff, and so very elaborate plots and things like that, the kind of things they pull off. And so I'm I'm trained by the, this group of people. Um, so I am functionally I am a monk, but I I sort of dabble in in some thievery and and. and Things you would normally consider a, to be sort of roguelike, but um, other than that, I'm human. Um, no, I don't go into much detail about my past. Um, so, like you guys know, little bits and pieces. Like you've probably seen me, you know, if we've passed beggars or, or people like that. Like I'm always, you know, handing out coins or little trinkets or whatever I happen to have on me. Um, but I'm, you know, I I haven't been doing. Uh, I don't. I don't steal just for the sake of stealing either. It tends to be from people who can afford to lose it, um, and so you know, in, in a case where we're on, what you say, we've been traveling on a ship or whatever, I'm not stealing from the sailors. You know, they're not. They're not my targets. So, you know, rich people would argue that they can't afford to lose it though. Well, because <laughs> you, know, no matter how much wealth you have, you never really are satisfied. Yeah, it's never enough. You need it. You always yeah. need it, dude. <laughs> and trust me, if I can afford to lose it, I still don't want to. If you've ever read The Lies of Locke Lamora, I'm, I'm very much basing it loosely off of some of the backstory of, of that group of characters in that book, but anyway. Okay. All right. Um, in a circular sort of fashion, I'll go next. Uh, it's literally circular. It's a, not really. It's more of an oval. Quick go clockwise. It's really a rectangle, are you guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hexagon. Yeah, I was going to say hexagon. We're yeah, hexagon yeah, true. Yeah, okay. yeah. It, I, listen, I'm the game master. If I say it's a circle, it's a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, as soon as someone casts Fireball, this is the shape of the circle. So. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm Fireball. Uh, no LARPing at the game table. Someone <laughs> cast Fireball for real. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to get it, but still. Yeah. All right. Uh, my name is Aloysius Talistare. I am a, a elf of considerable age. I've in my first lifetime, some 200 years ago, I studied as a wizard and uh, lived in a small town in Valinir, uh, which is quite a, quite a ways from here, on the other side of Corvair. In that life, I had overseen Valinar, uh, the, I, uh, uh, Helped with Cryer in its its battles, oversaw Valinir, the rise of Valinir. Uh, helped with many municipal things. I, I basically help people get things done. Um, from that wizard training, I had sought to move on to another another skill set of really 
academic proportions, in which I seem to have spanned into a wide variety of skills, uh, all of them in fact, and uh, I hope to be of good use to Kundorik, um, solving their problems. Um, uh, so I'm about a, a really old elf, not really old, but, um, and um, I wore, I wear fine clothes, but uh, my clothes are more um, of an older fashion. In other words, I don't keep up with the times quite quite as good. Uh, my clothes are may, maybe a slightly more conservative, uh, darker darker cloth, and, but still very fine. Um, I am a rogue by trade, uh, rogue mastermind, uh, and given that, I will have the ability to identify every monster's, ho hopefully every monster. Uh, and by doing that, I make them flat-footed to my rogue abilities. So that's one of my uh, my key things. Um, all right, that's about it. <clears throat> I was looking something up for you. Um, in the history of Eberron, I forgot the name of it. The Last War. Yeah. So the last war, during the last war, no, was the last one. No, no, the morning. Yeah. So there was the last war, and the morning happened. Okay. So anyway, how, how long did go did that happen? The morning happened about four years ago. Was it four years yeah, ago? It's not very long ago. Um, hold on a second. So and in the last war lasted for a century. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, what I was saying, well, my thought was is that if you're wearing like outdated clothes, you know, you could be like wearing clothes from like way before the last war. Like, yes. You know, predates the last war even. Yes. You know? that, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. And we could, we could even say that um, the, after the last war in the morning, you know, fashions could have had some shifts and stuff with all the peace and stuff, you know. And so you could, you would be very outdated from that time period or something like that. Right. And, and, and Valinar has a very strong war footing. The elves are, the elves of Valinar are very violent sorts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, so there, uh, so fashion has been slow to come back, even though, you know, in their homeland of, uh, was it at Eldernan or whatever? We're like an island or something. Yeah, somewhere. it's an island yeah. um, where the high elves live. Right. Uh, they probably have fashion and beauty is like all over the place, but you know we we've lost it. We haven't been focusing on fashion for the last hundred years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How old is your character? Two hundred and twelve. So he could have fashion from before the last war even began. <laughs> indeed. Ah, oh, nice. indeed. So yeah, okay, that'd be cool. Sweet. Swamped by youngins. Indeed. <laughs> by the way, whenever anybody wants coffee, let me know, and I will make it. Okay. All right. Senadal Sorel in Santiago, Sandy, is what he have you all call him. He is a gnome and a mature gnome, definitely lived in a life. Um, he will, doesn't talk about his past on his own, is happy to if you ask questions, but spends more time asking you about yours. Uh, curious about everything. He loves to explore the world. And what you probably have learned is he was a bartender for 200 years. Started his own bar, the Dancing Gnome, in the Moor Holds. And, but as his family grew, his children took it over, and his wife got tired of him laying around the bar, playing an occasional set out of more pity, if you will, because <laughs> he was bored than out of need. So she told him, time to explore like you've always said you wanted to. And so now he was off in the world to learn more about it. He has emerald green hair, bright sapphire blue eyes, and earthy skin tones. And he wears his padded armor that his wife decorated for him which is quite stylish, and is actually quite stylish. She knows that. She's one of her fashion things. I don't know style. She does. And otherwise, he does. He loves to entertain. He probably plays music for the crew whenever he can. Um, it is inspiring if he wants it to be, but even without that, he is a talented entertainer. He also does juggle, dance, and any of number of entertainments. And he knows a lot about alcohol and is happy to share his knowledge about it. And is fun of drinking. Although he rarely drinks to get drunk, these things, he, now that he's, he puts it, for all these years I've been drunk enough times, I don't feel the need again, but he does enjoy drinking when he can. And outside of that, mostly, he's just a really nice guy who wants to learn everything about everyone. And again, if you don't want to talk, he's not mean about it, he's just curious. Living this long without alcohol would have been unbearable. I mean, <laughs> alcohol has its place and certainly its use. Drunkenness, again, I don't blame anyone, I'm just kind of past it by now. It is the lubrication of time. <laughs> you youngins know nothing about time. Are you looking at me? 250 something. 
I've lost a little track, to be honest, of how old I am. It really gets unimportant after the first 200 years. <laughs> when he does want to get his age to go back and remember his youth. And where did I remember from? Okay, that happened then. I must be about this old. Oh, come, oh gosh. I am Bokoror. Yeah. How do you spell that? B A L K R O R. Or who can spell? I don't. <laughs> B A L K R O R. R O R. I am from the demon wastes where my people have guarded for centuries. And I come now to work for dwarves. My people have made a promise. Now this promise leaks into the land. I am a chosen and devotee of Kolak Shash. Now, anybody who has any sort of religion, even general in nature, will have seen the symbol that I wear. You would recognize as the silver flame. That is not what I call it. Kolak Shash is the... Orc. Indeed, the silver flame. Kolak Shash. Kolak That's what I say. Should I say it in Elven? Why? It's called Am I an elf? It's called Kalak Shosh. Mm. Elven's a very funny language. Um, you'll find this character is, uh, he's not stupid by any stretch. He's definitely, uh, again, we all have, so <laughs> none of us are. But the point is I'm not making him in that direction. He's, um, uh, having spent time with him, he's, he's not, like, book studious at all. But it doesn't mean that he's dumb. Like, he's very, you know, very average intelligence, but um, his real, he is zealous in his faith um, of the silver flame, right? And so the idea of protecting the world from the demons and the undead and uh, that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, that's that's what you'll find with him. Uh, he is a hold scarred orc, which means that he has scars and marks all over him. Uh, and in fact, that's one of the things that he has, is he has a big tattoo. He's conspicuous as hell. He's not inconspicuous. He's <coughs> completely noticeable. From a mile away, you can go, that's that orc I know. <laughs> like, he has a big tattoo of the silver flame, again, the, what he calls Kalak Shosh, on his head. So, he's very, very zealous. Um, uh, he also, by the way, carries a very unusual weapon. Uh, his morning star that he doesn't carry in public because people don't usually like it, but it is a, a, in fact a big femur with a skull mounted to it, and then um, pieces of silver. Again, they're they're just pieces of the. Uh, um, they look like the symbol of the silver flame, right? This is his weapon choice for his god, um, and they're all jutting out of the skull. So mm -hmm. it's a morning star. Did you know that person, <clears throat> just out of curiosity? Yes, this nice. was my father. Very nice. It's always good to honor your family. Indeed, honoring our ancestors is a well-held tradition amongst my people. Maybe not in the same fashion. He leads us in combat. A Kamogosh, friend. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, How tall are you? My name is Blue. I'm four foot. So you're a foot taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm shorter than is, him. Is four well, foot still else. considered small? Yes. Probably. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. She's four foot. She's blue. Uh, like the lettering on that dice kind of blue. Um, she has like little vials and like crossover like pistolero bandoliers on her on her chest and and uh yeah uh my mom was uh, an inventor and uh she tra I, I spent my whole life with her basically she she was a dwarf and mom's a dwarf so I don't know much else about that. She told me that she just found me one day, that she was Alnatar's happy little gift to her. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Blue is a uh, alchemist. Um, you see she has, like, 
Uh, an abnormally long, like, hollow tube that's kind of, like, strapped to her back. And, uh, she has a little, like, bracelet of, of blow dart needles around her, around her arm. Uh, she's here basically taking over mom's, uh, mom's business. Ma kind of was jack of all. She tested foods for the great houses for poisons and created things and dabbed in alchemy a little bit and, and made black powder and <clears throat> poisons. Um, what? I didn't say anything. Um, and, uh, you said poisons. No, I, I didn't say poisons. You said no. poisons. I, I, I said <laughs> potions. Poisons. Potions. Potions. Basically the same thing. Yes. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. How you so, make them, I suppose. So that's why she's here. I'm glad to have you here. Glad I'm glad to have all of you. This will be fun. Indeed. I certainly hope so. That's the whole point. Excellent. Um, I think I need to take my dog out, and I'm going to get the coffee going for you guys. All so right. feel free to converse yeah. amongst yourselves. Okay. <clears throat> my orc friend, we share a passion, you and I. Oh, what is that? Death to those that do not belong in this yes. The undead demons. The, yes. I certainly have no use for them. I don't know that I share your passion for killing them, I'm happy you have that passion. When I was ten, I watched one of the demons devour my best friend. That would be upsetting. I learned later that that's pretty common. Should I talk about sorry. that? I certainly could. If you want to go into details, I'd be happy to. An orcish, I, I, I lean over to you and say, that day was a good day to die. Mm, a calm gosh. By, a comic gosh, by the way, means uh, blessing to you and yours. Are you going to tell us that? Because I'm going telling to him that because he speaks he Orcish. Would know <laughs> I've assumed it's some kind of a greeting. Exactly. Yeah, you hear me say it all the time. Oh so. gosh. Do you? Oh, I use uh, it wrong. Please let me know. I'm not trying to offend. Orcish is not a language I ever learned. They didn't come in the bar much. It's harder to speak without tusks. I speak Orcish, Draconic, Gnomish. Well, good. We can converse in Gnomish if you like. Dwarven. The entire language is filled with innuendo. How can anyone understand anything a gnome says, even the gnomes? Uh, you gotta it's not really read, that complicated. You gotta read between the lines a little bit. Indeed, well, the entire language is like that. That's how language should work. It stimulates the mind, right? I mean, that's part of our problem. Purpose. Problem is, is a lot of gnomish language is like there's like a subtle contract rolled into the 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 grammatical conversation patterns of Gnomish, so Indeed. you shouldn't agree really to anything they say I with used, them because I you may speak. or may not be getting into a contract. I used to speak I used to speak different Gnomish than I do. Uh, okay. I, speak, I used to speak Gnomish, but I think it has changed since the 20 years I had learned it. I'm almost certain of it. Oh, I think they changed it out of spite. I would not put that past them. <laughs> I will admit my gnomish is a, I mean, I speak it, but it's a little rusty because I've lived around dwarves most of my life. I mean, mm. That's what my family's. I'm used to, 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 to conversational and business gnomish, so. The I gnomes mean, don't live in the demon wastes. Not that I'm aware of. I certainly didn't. I'd like to travel there one day. I know it Orcs, sounds dangerous, but humans. I'm sure with you, I would feel safer. I will say that in a fight, my value is not. Excessive, although I do carry a sword, I'm not exactly highly trained in his use, so... Humans oh, I carry a giant double scimitar staffy thing that looks like a Cuisinart. He mm -hmm. has a short sword, he has a short bow as well. But Sandy carries a short sword and a short bow, and he has a buckler strapped to his forearm when he's expecting trouble. He doesn't like carry around the ship, but, you know, none of those is usually half with him. He usually just has his, well, it's a guitar, but a small guitar that's more like a ukulele, because he can play that, and his juggling balls that he juggles. I don't have any weapons or anything. We do see, like, usually if we're in, we're having any sort of like downtime, like on a ship or wherever else, like you see me. Um, I spend a lot of my time drawing, and I spend a lot of time drawing the people we see, um, mostly just faces. Um, 
assuming you're up to sharing sand, you will admire them quite a bit. I mean, yeah, I'm not like hiding that I'm doing it. Um, it's a uh, like disguise is a big part of what I do, and so like having mm. faces to sort of like uh, copy. Things to and, copy. Yeah. Um, so t it'll tend to be pe mostly humans and people that are like close in mm -hmm. stature to me, things like that. Just that I could, you know, you a little bit really of prosthetic or whatever, I could get pretty close to, you know, working like them. So you could be a really, really tall gnome. <laughs> a very tall gnome. I'm two gnomes yeah. standing on <laughs> at least two yeah. gnomes in a trench coat. Yeah, because yeah, three Sandy gnomes is, in a trench coat. Sandy is exactly is three feet tall. Tie almost exactly. It's how <clears> his hair is three feet tall. I may or may not. Shh. Everybody. Poisons, so don't tell anybody. Yes, you said poisons earlier. Okay. <laughs> Did I, I didn't say poisons, I said potions. Sure. He poisons. says you said poisons. If you're not using the poisons on someone, don't think that's well, on. Just so long awesome as when you're problem. distributing the potions to us, that we get the potions and not the other things. That would be very nice. I mean, I try, I try to go out of my way to make sure I don't mix them up. I dyed them all different shades of green. I did ta like tasting them before I uh, give the final seal of approval on them. So it's just an almost a stage. It's One of my spells is on seems so which is probably good shit. I bought three cans. Yeah. <laughs> my wife loves this good. stuff. I do too. I can't have carbonation, so and, I don't uh, have it. But she and uh, um, the, the berry one? Oh, oh, it's really good. Which one is that one? It's, it's called mixed berry. It's a silver can. That's what my wife berry on it. It's amazing. It's is really it like, good. Oh, they got white, and then what's the black one? Uh, I think the black one is just a plain. That's just water, isn't it? No, I think it's sparkling water, but it's just it's sparkling. plain sparkling yeah. water. I think the black one's just the white one is the mountain water. Yep, yep. The white ones are not sparkling, but yeah, the, it's like a silver can, and there's, there's berry. berry. There's mango. Yeah, mango is the other one. Yeah, mango is like an orange can. Peach color can or something, right? Isn't it? Yeah, something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, if any of you are demonstrating any abilities, Sandy will love to watch and admire them. I mean, if you're sparring at any point, he will certainly be excited. And if you're willing to teach him some, he'll be happy to try to learn it. Or, you know, anything. And again, if it's, I mean, like, if, go if, away, go if away. he's fascinated by beakers and oh, graduated and cylinders, absolutely. I mean, I'm the girl any, for you. Anything you're doing, he doesn't know how to do, he's fascinated by. I mean, if you give even the hint that you don't want him around, he's not going to bug you. But he'll probably watch you from afar because... I, I never indicate, by the way, as, as, gro as gruff as I am, I'm never, like, a person who wants to be alone. I will, you know, I might not talk to you, but I will sit and... Oh, he'll talk to Andy if you like. Right. I just sit and, like, so I'll often, like, do a cultish thing. I cast bones and I try to see, you know, auguries of the future and yeah, that and sort of thing. you do, be like, oh, what do you see? How do you know that? What's that mean? Right. Is it something you just see, or are you, like, powered by the spirit to find it? You know? <laughs> well, like, do you have a vision, or does the bones, the position of the bone, you know, he'll... Right. As much as you'll let him, he'll bug you about it, but... And, I mean, uh, again, I'm not an unfriendly guy, so I would give very curt, short answers to those. <laughs> and once he knows that's your way, it won't bother him a bit. Right. I mean, you know, again, unless you, like, go away with me alone, then he would. I don't do that. I just, again, I just do what but I do. They're short answers, and that's what you do. He'd be like, okay, that's you. No big deal. Yeah. He's, you know... I do what I do, but I don't. I don't. I don't push anybody away from. Yeah, he's very charismatic, yeah. and very good with people, and loves. To yeah, make you friends. find actually that I'm a very enjoyable person to be around too. I'm also very charismatic. <laughs> and most of his time, actually, he kind of comes across as dad. You know, he, un, somewhat unconsciously, he likes tries to father everyone because that's yeah. just. I mean, he's raised eight kids. Well, five of them lived, and he's you know, he, it's just his nature. Is he's. He's very parentish, even if not on purpose. Y'all think? You know, oh, probably, don't lie. You know it's on purpose. I don't remember. Mine, yes. For him, it really isn't something he does on purpose. It's just it's how he's interacted with people for years. You know, kids, grandkids, and great grandkids. It's the way it is. And he typically will call you things like young fellow and such, just even the yeah, elves. Yeah, not that much younger younger for that No, nothing like that. No, oh, no, thank you. And I, in a minute, I will, but I want to finish my. Um, if you would keep one out for me, I will take it from you shortly. I want to finish my. Uh, like if, if I remember, right, goblins are like 10 when they're full grown. So All right. I imagine you're a little tiny kid. I'm going to take out the map 
from the Avalon book for the first time ever. Woohoo! Oh. The emergence of the uh -oh. map. Well, then we're all dead. <laughs> the map has appeared. Ding, 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 knife. Should. It's perforated, but it's always a little effort to get it out there. Right? No, judging already. from Luke's previous games, whenever I see a map, I, I get a little bit of fear and instantly start looking around for the big castle at the top of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Perforation, I'm still using a knife. This is ridiculous. I'm ripping the crap out of my map. This is why I don't take them on the book. Right. <laughs> I know the feeling. My problem is if I take them out, I lose them too. They, you know, book goes back in the shelf, and the map falls out, and a week later, a month later, a year later, I can't find it. But yeah, assuming the captain has no objections, I'm sure I will play music for the crew quite frequently. Keep the spirits out. Perform check. Hmm? Perform check. And the divine spell is on this book. 23. Quite enjoyable. So crit fail the first roll of the cannon. I was going to say, we're all in a one right off the game. Yeah, they throw us the crew is lynched. In the the yeah. bar. <laughs> <laughs> Please make a new character. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, this is Corvair. Corvair. Right. And his character is from the Demon Waste way over here. Yes. The campaign takes place on the other side of the continent, right here, the Marholds, mm -hmm. right? Which is the Dwarven homelands, basically. Right? It's bordered by these two mountains right here. So the Valinar, you're from down here, right? Um... Who else? Who else was from somewhere? I'm from the Moorholds holds themselves. You're from the Moorholds. holds. Where were you from? I don't know. Not sure. I'll figure it out. Okay, that's fine. You I'm know. from around the Moorholds. Okay. I don't exactly know where. Goblins can be from anywhere, really, because <coughs> Corvair in, used well, to be. In my background, I don't know exactly where because I was that's, just. That's fine. Wasn't that's your from. mom a dwarf? So you'd be where the dwarves are, right? Yeah, right and around the Moorholds. Okay. okay. There yeah. you go. Cool. Okay. On the back of it. Oh, there's the entire. Ooh, yeah, can I see the whole world? So this is Corvair, the continent, and then right. we have Zendrick down here. Yep. That's fun. That's this the Elven homeland, the Arenal. Yep. yep. Cool. Sarlona, I've heard of that. I don't know what that is. Argonus, and that's where the dragons are. That's right? the dragons. Yeah, yeah that's cool. what's left. That's cool. That's for the dragons, I think. <laughs> um, Sandy's goal is to visit all the continents, so you know, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but he would love to see them all. Oh, well, you don't have to get on it to see it, right? Well, visit and stand on to collect dirt from all the others. <laughs> uh -huh. Just be fast. Mage hand to <laughs> just be grab it quick. They do have mage hands. <laughs> the Marar holds themselves. You guys have been briefed by your patron, obviously. Um, and this is your player map that can be kept in your handout book here. Okay. But essentially, this map here lists out the primary um, holds of each of the Dwarven clans. There's one in each of the different territories. This is like the boundary line among the territories. And this lists out all 13 of the clans. Um, Frost Mantle is right here. That is where you guys are gonna be starting out. That's where your patron has instructed you to meet a contact down here. So you have House Kundarak is way up here, number five at the top here. So you've sailed by ship down here, you've come to Mirror Lake, sailed across here, come down this river here, and then you've hoofed it um, basically from uh, a dock or something near the bottom here over to Frost Mantle. Okay. Um, but this is for you guys' reference if you ever need to know where different things are. Now, of interest, your employer has told you that this hold right here, mark number nine, Noldrun Hold, is um, probably about a hundred years or so ago. Um, all of the dwarves in Noldrun Hone completely disappeared. Their, their, their hold, Noldrun Throne, was completely left empty. Nobody was there. Just the dwarves up and left, completely gone. No idea what's going on there. What you guys also know, and you've been briefed from your patron as well, let me give you a little bit of information here. <coughs> Um, oh wow, where was this thing? Every hex is 24 miles, this is huge. Yeah, there's a lot more space than you think if it's that big of hexes. So, in the early days of the last war, Marar miners made an astonishing discovery. The ruins of an ancient dwarven empire, vast halls deep within the Iron Root Mountains, 
And then explorers began to go into these mines that were brimming with jewels and precious ores and vaults filled with riches and powerful artifacts. And basically the dwarves started mining out all of these different artifacts and stuff. One of the things that they found, however, as they were uncovering all of these riches down there, stand by. All I know is I no, it was 400 years ago. I'm sorry. Well, I don't Four, 400 years ago, that Dwarven clan disappeared. So this was way before the last war. 400 years ago, they disappeared. But what, what, but what the Dwarves discovered as they were delving into what they call the realm below is that there were, um, they unlocked something down there. They ran and awoken, perhaps, or at least unearthed um, a Dalkir Lord of those depths. And this Dalkir Lord's name is Dern the Corrupter. D Y R R N. Dern the Corrupter. And when this that when this Dalkir Lord was awoken, unlocked, because of how deep they were delving, it unleashed a torrent of creatures. Hordes of aberrations and Darrow begin to rise from the depths to challenge the dwarves there. And this is all about, uh, this is about a hundred years ago or so, right before the last war. Now, for decades, this war has been going on now. Essentially a constant struggle between the dwarves and um, the Dalkir below. And so that is something that's going on here. Um, as well that you guys have been briefed on regarding the region. And the, the Dwarven clans, of which there are 12 active ones, they have a loose confederation that's ruled by the Iron Council. Each of the Dwarven clans has a representative that sits on the Dwarven Council. House Kundarak remains neutral on the Dwarven Council, the Iron Council, um, but they are kind of like a, an observer. But because they're very powerful, one of the most powerful um, what are those things called? Dragon, Dragon Mark House. House. Thank you, Dragon Mark House. Like so, okay. Because because they're 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 one of the most powerful and influential <clears throat> and tons of wealth as far as Dragon Mark Houses go, and so they have invested interest in manipulating events and stuff like that, which is why, of course, you are here because you're supposed to see what's going on and help them manipulate events here, because they just don't trust the other dwarven clans to figure out what's going on. So you guys are. Heading toward Frost Mantle. Oh, I said we're meeting a contact there. Do we know why, or is he going to tell us the why and everything? Yes, stand by. Okay, I'm sorry. Where's Frost Mantle? All right. So I was looking at uh, Trevor's bottle there, and it says. I think carbon neutral. It looked like chaotic neutral for a moment. I was trying to actually got a chaotic neutral bottle yeah, of water. That's funny. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, how'd you get a chaotic neutral bottle of water? What is exactly does that mean? All right, so you guys were instructed by House Kundarak to seek out Kassok Wind Axe. He is your House Kundarak contact. K A S O K. Cassock Wind Axe. He is in Frost Mantle somewhere. He is maintaining cover there. 
He is not to be revealed as a house contract agent. You guys are not to be revealed as a house contract agents. Otherwise, your usefulness will be short lived, and this whole big boat ride will have been for nothing. Well, so, we've got to see some cool stuff. I mean, the boat ride was the good word in itself. It was quite valuable. I mean, uh -huh. fun. I mean, new friend. Do we know what he looks like? He is a dwarf. Well, golly, that's so he's going to put one right in. Okay. Well, maybe. Maybe. Um, he's the only dwarf in town. I can't imagine who he works for. So, you guys have been briefed on Frost Mantle, the town you're going to be going to, and which, um, for, for a good portion of this campaign, Frost Mental is going to serve as the hub of operations too, where you guys will basically, you know, there you go different places, probably come back there and whatnot. So it's basically the hub of the campaign is the way I'm kind of setting it up. It might change, but that's the idea. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to do it. Well, I'm just... I know. So we're going to make me spend like a new... week making a new town up. <laughs> so, so we're going to pick a brand new town for our base because we don't trust these guys. Right. Just right. copy, paste, change the name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Oh, look. Searching Frost place. Haven is yeah. a lot like Frost Mantle. Shocking. Right. Uh, but I was Frost. going to Pina Coladaville. Because <laughs> <laughs> all so, these frosty mm -hmm. places just don't sound elfish. What you guys have been briefed about Frost Mantle. It is a surface-only settlement, which is rather rare for the Marholds. Most of the settlements here, they're dwarven clans, they go below the surface. Um, it is a settlement of clanless dwarves. These are dwarves that either renounce their clan, were exiled, run off, or something. They are clanless dwarves. They hold no allegiance to any of the houses, any of the clans. There are also, there's also a good-sized population of Jirashtar orcs that live there as well. There are also some exiled halflings. So there are some planes. I forget the name of them off here, but it's on the map. The planes to the west of the Marar Holds, the Talenta planes, are roamed by halflings and dinosaurs. To give you the too long didn't read. Um, but some of these halflings have been exiled, and those exiles came through the Garandra. Gorandra Gap right here and settled in a frost mantle. So you have a good sized population of halflings that live there as well. Um, dwarves that renounce their clans or are exiled often settle here, having nowhere else in Marholds to go. Jurastar orcs are warmly welcomed here by most of the non orc populace. Um, so, halflings, dwarves, the orcs are pretty well welcomed here. Nobody really holds anything against them. The small community of halflings are exiles and are criminals from the Talenta Plains, I mentioned that. Now, the, they, the, you are told that the dwarven populace is rather hesitant to trust the halflings, because, you know, they're criminals, right? The dwarves are also, many of them, criminals. But hey, that's just the way it goes. Um, Them's the, over there, they're the real criminals. <laughs> <laughs> or we're criminals, we know you don't trust criminals. Now, Frostmantle <laughs> is a very popular base for adventuring parties as its location provides easy access to the depths beneath Noldren Hold. Noldren Hold is the dwarven um, clan capital that had been totally abandoned, right? But, you know, it serves as a place for adventures. There's dungeons, monsters, treasure, things to be explored down there. And so adventuring parties will explore that area and go to sites nearby or go into Noldren Hold itself. And so Frostmantle serves as a hub for those adventuring parties and it caters to them. Lots of good services and that sort of things to help out adventuring parties. It also provides access, easy access to a lot of the Marar Holds because it's it's a day's ride to ship and boat that will take you along the Marar, the Mirror Lake all up and down the Marar Holds. So it's, well, it's a very convenient place too, wherever you happen to be going in the area. That's cool. The primary <coughs> industry of Frostmantle is catering to the needs of bands of adventurers. They either pass through the town or use it as their base of operations. Taverns, inns, shops, General supplies, arms, armor, etc. All that stuff is the primary business of the town. There are also several pawnbrokers that operate in Frost Mantle as well that buy loot adventures obtained during their exploits. So that is your briefing on Frost Mantle. Okay. As you guys ride into town, um, you can see the banner of Frost Mantle flying above it. It is a white mountain frozen over with ice on a field of black. Pretty. About how big of a population center are we talking? 
So you guys are looking right now, at, you can see the, the town rising up before you. Um, you'd estimate there's probably maybe two, 200 to 400 buildings total in the town. Uh, the population is probably under a thousand, maybe, something like that. So it's not terribly large. Um, but it's not it's not super small either. Is it a fortified town? Like in other words, they have a gate going around it. Yes, there is a wall. Um, okay. However, there are lots of buildings that lie outside the wall, and there is a river that runs through Makes the town sense, as well. Actually. Okay. So and you guys are arriving by river. Right? Well, no, you you guys had to disembark about a day's ride or a day's journey away, and now you're traveling up okay. to the to the town on foot. Um, so you're approaching the town. Um, you're coming from the north east to the town, and you can see that immediately before you is a sprawl of buildings and some farmland as well. It looks mostly lower class as you're approaching the town. Is the outside looks lower class? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, like tent cities, kind of. Um, I wouldn't say ten cities. Um, they're definitely made out of wood. You okay, know, it's so occasionally a stone foundation. Okay. But everything is in not super great repair. You can tell that this is a you know a low class. And they've yeah. outgrown the city walls basically. Or well, and I've seen that, walls. but I also have seen ones that are like that's oh, yeah. why I mentioned ten cities. I didn't know how poor they were. It sounds like they have structures, so they're poor, but not like okay. holy crap, we have literally nothing poor. So, right. Um. So do we want to sort of mac so? Question, uh, my guy has a streetwise ability, um, skill thing, which allows him to use his society skill to uh, discreetly ask about him around town okay. um, to gather information um, in an attempt to locate our, our contact. Mm -hmm. um, can I, is that something I can do, or should we like go to a bar? Or yeah, first? What, what, what page is that on? So, uh, so it's a skill. It's, a, it's an ability your character class has? Yep. No, it's, so a, it's a feat. It's a feat. It's a feat? Okay. 267. Okay. We're going to be spending some time looking stuff for up sure. as I get a feel for the Of course. 267. Yeah. This is the way it's going to be. Streetwise, okay. Yep. Oh, you can use your society modifier instead of diplomacy to gather information. Right. Okay. In any settlement, you frequent regularly. So, uh, being 210 years old, and being an envoy for the last 60 years, I've traveled quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if I could be just a world traveler and have frequented just about everywhere a bit. Well, the advantage of, of the, if you frequently there is you, you don't take any time at all. It's like an auto roll. If you take the time, you can still gather information freely. Oh. So if you read it, it says, if, yeah, if you frequent regularly, you can use it to know the sorts of information to gather it's higher DC but you know it without spending time gathering it but you can then use gather information normally and use your society modifier for it. Say that. The last sentence. The if you DC. fail to recall the information you can still subsequently attempt to gather information normally. Right so basically the, if he frequently travels there it's a free uh, roll without any time spent. But the problem my issue was saying I'm a worldwide traveler therefore I can travel everywhere is that it allows you to use this feat anywhere you go. I mean, in this case, you could still use it to use your society. You would just have to spend the normal time. Right. Yeah, all the, all the being a frequent thing does is make it so that it doesn't take any time to Right. Yeah. 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 No, 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 I, don't, I, don't, reality. Reality. I don't see where it says anything about time <coughs> in the future. It does. It says, uh, the DC is usually significantly higher, but you know the information without spending time gathering it. Second sentence from the last in that paragraph. Uh, why can't I do it? In any settlement you're regularly frequent, you can call knowledge action with society to know some sort of information you could discover with diplomacy to gather information. The DC is usually significantly higher, but you know the information. If you fail to recall the information, all right. So basically, the concept is you walk in the city and you know stuff because you've been there. Yeah. You don't have to ask a lot of questions, or you can you you can spend your time like anybody <coughs> would. You just can use streetwise. Right. Use, Society. So, oh, so the DC is usually significant. Right. If you want, if he wants the freebie roll, you have to determine yes, he's been there frequently uh, enough, okay. Okay. and make a higher roll. But then he doesn't so have to spend the, any the hour usually spent. So the argument right, with the frequently been there quote uh, thing is 
Are we going to be going anywhere else in this entire world? Likely not. Right. <laughs> you will See, I got the other, option. Visitor, I, I got the other idea about. that we're going to travel a lot. So. Oh, you, you, we're going to travel a lot. Yeah, but this is our base, but we're going to be going yeah. out on missions and coming back. Oh, I thought we were staying pretty much. I, I feel like I feel like what I want to do is, and this is this is always the conundrum that we have with backstories, right? Oh, yeah. Like you can you can craft a backstory to give you advantages in the game. You know what I mean? Um, so if your backstory is I'm a frequent traveler. Well, then all of a sudden that means a lot of things. Maybe I've been to this town before. I know a bunch of stuff already. And so then we have to have a way to determine that. Otherwise, it just gives you a huge mechanical advantage in the game by, by having a backstory element. It does. It does. There's no question about it. It gives me a, a, one additional check to gather information. But I'm saying in general. I'm saying in general, at a high level, high level, whenever you use a backstory to give yourself any sort of mechanical advantage, Right, it allows you to basically use backstories, which is for flavor, to give you mechanical advantages, and that's what I, that's what can be an issue, right? And so in this case, the specifics is my backstory is world traveler, therefore I want to have frequently traveled here, right? And so what I what I'm driving at is I think there should be more something more like a percent chance that you frequently travel the place that you go, so that we can establish, you know, have you actually been a frequent traveler here? Because it's too convenient to just say I showed up in a town, therefore I have been a frequent traveler. I think there should be a probability of you having been a frequent traveler, but not it being a guaranteed thing. That way, not only in Frostmantle, but other places you can go to, we can roll some dice with a percentage chance, and there's a chance that you have been there before. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm driving at. So I think there should be a percent chance and a, a die roll for it, as opposed to just saying, yes, you have or you, you haven't. Because then it's up to either DM Fiat or whatever, you know. So I think there should be a percent chance to it. Um, okay. Um, just so you're aware, there's a, a, a beat for the Ancient Elves uh, about uh, getting any lore ability. Uh, it, on your down rest, on your downtime, mm -hmm. you can spend time meditating about the history of your life and recall events from earlier in your life and then pick up a lore skill for that day. Any, okay. Anyone. Okay. So in other words, I, I think that I, makes sense. I mean, I won't speak for Luke, but to me, just speaking from like an outside game perspective, um, that makes sense to me because you're not saying, hey, I walked into this town, I know everything about it. What you're saying is, hey, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna take time, I'm gonna take, meditate, I'm gonna use them my one slot to do that to know about this thing, right? So I feel like that's different to me. Sure, sure, I'm just, I'm just saying that uh, there is mechanics in the game to kind of sort of be like I'm from everywhere. Okay, so you're, are you saying you want to use that mechanic in the system? He doesn't have it yet. I don't have it yet. It's right. an answer three thing. Okay, right. well, okay. well once you have it, then, right. it, then it makes sense. It obviously applies. Yep, agreed. To use it. Okay. That said, I can still use it to gather information. Right. You and I both are probably good at it because I have hobnobbers. So well, hold on a second. I can do it in an hour. <laughs> it says. The only part that matters about being a frequent traveler is knowing the information automatically. Knowing it no, automatically. Yeah, that's literally how it's going. No, it, it says, in any settlement you frequent in any settlement you frequent regularly, you can use the recall knowledge action with society to know the same sorts of information that you could discover with diplomacy to gather information. Right, that's, that's not what he's trying to do. Then. But what is he uh, trying to do? He's trying to do the first part of the feat, yeah, which is gather second. information, which allows him to use his society modifier instead of diplomacy. They're two different skill abilities. Yes. It gives him two different things he can do with society modifier. He's doing the first one, which does not require being a frequent traveler. Right. Oh, he's just using right. a different step. Gather information takes two hours normally to do. Normally, it's a diplomacy check. Right. right. But he can do it with society, society in those two instead hours. of gather information. Oh, it Recall just says, knowledge is a different skill. Right, right, right. Or a different check. It just says you can use your society modifier instead of your diplomacy modifier right. Right. to gather information. Right, 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 right. That's what he's doing. And I will be using okay. my diplomacy yeah. modifier. There's an extra bit device. where if he was a frequent traveler here, instead uh, he could do recall could do knowledge and maybe exactly just the other part. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, recall knowledge. Oh. Right. Recall knowledge right. is like an immediate thing. Okay. I don't know okay. it's ten minutes or well, it's a minute or something. I don't yeah, remember. Still, and you're asking time. to do the first one. Right. Okay. And I would be doing. Well, I'm assuming he was trying one. to do the second one. You said no. Now he's trying. Now to he's do doing the first one. He still gets to use his society modifier. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Instead of diplomacy. And I use diplomacy, but hobnobber means I do it in an hour instead of two because I know bars. Unless of course I have been here before. Do I yeah, roll a percentage? Let's, let, that's what I let's do that. So let's let's say that for I don't want to make it too high or too low. Give a one percent chance. Um <laughs> on a D one hundred. What see what seems like a considering how large Corvair is and how close I am. Yeah, I was gonna say I think that like I'm from down here. Uh-huh. 
I think you'd want to put like a, boy, that's a lot of work on you and Luke, but I'd want to have like a percentage based on distance and population. And <laughs> like, <laughs> I know it's a lot of work, that's what I said. Why but. would you have come here, I guess? Is what, what? So, uh, uh, Valinar and uh, the dwarves hold a common uh, theme. They both stole from the land of Corvair during the last war. What if, what if we say, what if we say that if you're in your homeland, there is a fifty um, percent chance that you've been somewhere, okay. and then frequently, for, frequently, yeah. and then for every step away, every country away, it lowers by ten percent. Okay. So by the time you get to here, it's forty percent. By the time you get to here, it's thirty yeah. percent. Right, and then you just keep doing steps. So fifty percent, and then it just lowers by ten. And you're gonna have to remember that rule. Okay, I'll write it down. That'll be easier. So right now we're at a thirty percent chance. All right. Uh, so that's a like a D would D one hundred work too. It's yeah. much simpler. And I'd then be call thirty, 30 or under. <laughs> thirty or under. Twenty one. There you go. Okay. So you ha you have been to Frostmantle before. All right. So now you can now you can use the second recall one. knowledge. Yeah, recall use recall knowledge. knowledge with society. Okay. Now we got to look up that rule. Hell. Don't worry about it. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> but, now, but now you can do gather information, which is no, the last failed, one. Right? Critically failed. Oh, I might have critically failed. failed. I got an eight. Well, yeah. Let's let's look. Up oh wait, wait. There. Shoot. But I haven't even decided as a, a DC yet. Hold on. <laughs> actually, I'll make it an eighteen, so it's a crit fail. I, I, actually, I actually rolled a one, so it's a crit fail. I actually oh, have assurance yeah. on this ability. So oh. you're using now. You're using recall you knowledge. Roll the die? Yes. But I can use it. But I can okay. still use can you? The regular yeah, gather information afterwards. <clears throat> and you rolled an eight. Eight. Yes. Did, that would and he rolled a one to get his eight. So no, I rolled a two. That's a well, two. Was it a two? That's a solid. Okay. Sure that's a two. Oh, okay. So you do yeah, not. Is, what are you trying? To, you're trying to determine what? Yeah. If I remember, uh, what would the most likely location of our our quarry be? Our, our oh, you, So you don't remember that. Yeah. And now um, you're going to gather information? Yeah. So I think we head to the bars. Yeah. So hold on a second. Because that's where I gather information over you guys. Yeah, well, so right now you guys are just outside right. town. Are you just going to start outside town gathering information? Uh, no. Well, I think we'll find the bars. Town, go into the <laughs> town, so ask around the, the bars. Okay. All right. I think we head into town first. Okay. I can so, show off my feats. Ha, yes. I'm faster than you. Any town that has three distinct groups of people living in it probably has a dwarven quarter, a halfling quarter. It would not be surprising, although yeah. it sounds like the orcs may be pretty well accepted, so it may, they might be everywhere, but even there a lot of times people tend to gather in quarters just because it's comfortable. So as you go into this first district, the oh, ward that's out there, um, most people tend not to, there are, there are orcs out there, dwarves out there, you don't see any halflings at all, mostly just orcs and dwarves out there. Um, and they're, they glance at you and stuff, but don't seem to pay a whole lot of attention to you. It's clear that they see lots of adventuring companies coming through. Um, so, what are you doing? You said you wanted to go to bars and taverns. Are you just wandering around until you find some? Yeah. Are there, are there city guards? Or, you know, anyone who looks like they have at least militia, patrol authority, you, militia? You, you like haven't that? seen any patrols okay. since you got, you've so only I'm, been here a little bit. So, yeah, we'll head in through the gate if we aren't there yet and start looking for... The yeah. universal sign of N, which I do believe is a beer mug. Well, not universal, but it's not an uncommon sign. I'm going to be uh, very wary as I travel of uh, potential thieves, like pickpocket thieves. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I will be keeping an eye out for them. I'm no expert on it, but you know, I'm old enough to know better. Okay, so you're keeping an eye out for pickpocket thieves? Uh, okay. If anyone gets within arm's reach, I'm keeping a close eye on them, because I do need my Just money. as someone with... And you experience in that. It seems like a good good opportunity for that to be happening in a town like this. If there's no guards, you know, the population is a little suspect anyway. Mm -hmm. right. So Okay. As you guys begin walking through this lower class area, um, you do eventually come across um, a tavern. The sign outside reads, The Empty Willow. Do this look for a better place. I'm happy here. I just. That's well. I think that this place might have a sense of discretion. Let's find out. Especially if we're paying. Should never pass a bar without checking it out, right? <laughs> Not a general rule, but a good guideline. All right, lads and lasses, let's go have ourselves a drink. What's the name of it? 
Empty Willow. Not a bad name of a bar. I mean, unless it's giving off like major don't come in here vibes, but you know. I remember the last Willow Tree uh, ate a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I'm not sure it was a willow tree. Yeah, I wasn't here for that. Undead tree. Uh, I missed that <laughs> week when that happened. I came back and they were like, hey, but then he got a wax on it. He so came back. Worked out. Yeah. yeah. He was easy to bring back from the dead. That was back before he got exhausted from being knocked down. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So you guys go into <laughs> the empty willow. Yes. What time, what time, time of day? Are yeah. Like, guess what time of day is it? But. So you guys um, disembarked, rested for the night. You're rolling in around six o'clock in the evening. For okay. a great time to go to a tavern. Right. Yeah. That, that one is good. Happy hour. I mean, can we tell? Is it like a place that would also have uh, rooms? Or don't we know? It does it not have a sign up either way for that? Stand by. Please stand by. <coughs> it is the empty willow, is what you said. The third of Therendor, which is early spring. Um, so it's still frosty out and pretty cold, fairly cold. Good thing I have my padded warm. I'm gonna keep warm. One of the best things about leaving the bar is I don't have to worry about the dates anymore. <gasps> hey, what was your question? Whether if, if there's any sign like that it's an inn that would have like it rooms for rent story. as well. It is two stories. We oh. are not sure. We'll find out. I just some places you know, would have a sign out from like rooms to rent or something, but let's find out. So inside. Is there any, like, scraps of food left over on any of the tables? Well, we have to go in first. So, once you walk inside, <laughs> inside okay. you can see that it's beginning to fill up for the evening. Um, you have many, many orcs and dwarves in there. Um, probably more orcs than dwarves in this particular inn, or tavern, I should say. Um, and there are a few open tables. There are some waitstaff working about. And then there is a there is an orc behind the barkeep um, who's serving drinks and appears to be in charge around here. She's giving some orders to some of the wait staff that go back and forth. Um, you want to look around for scraps of food left over? Yeah. Okay, so your goblin friend darts off looking for scraps of food. <laughs> like anything with mold on it, or okay, you want you specifically want moldy food? Yeah. Okay, give me a perception check. Okay. As you look this around. bar has moldy food in it, we don't want to eat here. Why? Because a quality bar will not let the food sit on the table long and get moldy. Okay. If they do that on the tables in front of clients, I don't want to know what's growing in the kitchen. Seven. Okay. So, looking around, there's Spoiler lots of large. food that's been discarded and tossed off on the ground. There's, okay. a, there's a layer of sawdust on the ground, and there's bits and pieces of food. And as you go around scooping it up, some of it, there's definitely discarded food around. And some, okay. of, it, some of it's getting moldy and rancid. Okay, I'm going to take the moldy, rancid parts, put it in my uh, little pouch that I have off, the, off to the side. And I'm going to take some of the sawdust-covered other pieces and just bones and whole, just go... <laughs> if our friend here right. ever opens a, an establishment, remind me. Don't eat there? Yes. Don't eat there. Well, I'm looking for an open table. Unless we're directed otherwise. You guys find an open table. Oh my laddies and lassies, let's sit down and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Want to try to get a barkeep's attention, or a bar, <laughs> the barmaid's attention, or bar okay. server, whatever it may be. Okay. A, a teenage boy orc mm -hmm. comes up. What can he do for you? Oh, good sir, a round of drinks for us at least. Is there any food to be had? Yeah. Any particular wine. kind? Hot. Wine. Hot wine then. Uh, ale for me, please. Wine, ale. Blue, are you joining us? Yeah, uh, ale, please. Did you order your wine hot? Yes, hot. Okay. It's not an uncommon request. It <laughs> is, I understand the appeal. Did you want something, gentlemen? I mean, it is quite cold here. I, I, I would like to try this hot wine. It's very good. Uh, we, 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 we had to take an ale on him. An ale on him? How much right. those? Three ales and two hot wines, if I could, my good lad. Three ales and two hot wines. All right, I'm looking at the menu right now to see how much this costs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, services, that's uh, probably somewhere around here. Uh, um, beverages, here we go. Woo, woo. A mug of ale. So everyone who ordered a mug of ale, it's one copper piece. And then it jumps right up to bottle of wine with no 
Come oh, we'll take one warm bottle of wine between us, right? Okay, you get one one bottle of wine is one silver piece. Alright, so three okay, goblin of silver. I got it. I and won't then, object to saving my money if you prefer, yeah, but yeah. I'm happy to pay. I'll get the he next was, round. He was, he was paying for the whole thing. Oh, I was originally, but apparently. You guys want some food? <coughs> what sort of food do you have, my friend? Well, I can get you a bowl. <coughs> what would be in the bowl? What? A bowl of food. He well, said food. It's got, it's got some meat in there and, you know, some vegetables. So a stew of some kind? I think yeah, I you call it stew, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm hungry at this time. I think the drink will be enough. Perhaps it's a little You don't want a plate? You don't want a plate? What's on the plate? Probably got some meat on there and some vegetables. Same thing with less broth. Same with less broth. A plate would do fine, man. A plate? A plate? All right. All right. So anybody who wants a plate or a bowl, um, it's one copper piece. Okay. Yep. Does anybody want one besides him? Other bowl. A bowl? Okay. Right. I think I'll wait to see their plates and bowls before I decide if it's worth ordering. I don't. Mm -hmm. okay. Given the, the quality of food on the floor, I'm not certain I trust so, the place for the food. You guys know when you go to a restaurant and you can smell good food from the parking lot? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes you can. Right. And then when you walk into the restaurant, either you smell good food or you don't. Right. right? Sometimes you don't smell good food in the restaurant, and when you go in the restaurant, you don't smell any food either. Those are the restaurants you should turn around from, yes. right? You don't smell anything good in this restaurant. Yeah. yeah. That's the reason I'm not getting a plate of food. Yeah. <laughs> I've had too many years of my life where I didn't have a meal, so I'm not a very picky eater. Agreed. Okay. I, I fully understand and support you, but I'm going to wait trust the fact that the alcohol is, well, sanitary. It should. Alcohol is a natural cleanser. Uh -huh. hoping that we will move to some other establishments <laughs> later in the day to find a slightly better meal. At the worst case, friend, the, the hot wine will dull the taste of the food. See, that's, while I respect you, that's not my objective, is not to have my food's taste dulled. I think I'll wait, and I better find better food at a later point. This is not in any way the last bar I intend to be in tonight. So do we want to spend a few hours gathering information? Well, I'm only spend one hour. I don't know how long you're going to take. So oh, I, I think it's one hour. Do you want a bone? No, thank you. Oh. It takes two normally. I do it in an hour because I'm a hot hour. Hey. That's my feat. It's so two hours to gather information. Is it diplomacy thing? It's diplomacy normally. It's a two-hour process. I do it in an hour because I'm a hop Okay. That's my bartender feat. And I do it normally, but just using a different Two hour, but you could use society. Yeah. yeah. Which is bad. I'm terrible. It's not terrible. I'm worse at society because I don't have nearly as high of a stat for society. Diplomacy. Gather information. You canvass local markets, taverns, and gathering places in an attempt to learn about a specific individual or topic. Term the DC it typically t typically takes two hours, along with any benefit you might be able to gain by spending coin on bribes, drinks, or gifts. Okay, success, critical failure. All right. And again, I, I do it half the time because that's my Bob Harp Hop okay. Nobber feat. Th Where, and where's that? It's the uh, my feat for being a bartender. It's a general feat. You got to pay for it. I got it as part of my background. Yeah, you got to pay for it. No, it's just you skill the learning information through conversations, gather information that's what activity. I'm, that's what I'm asking for. What page is it? Found page. Oh, I thought it said pay for. It. <laughs> that's what I thought you said too. Yeah. I thought you, you got to pay, pay for it. it. I'm like, no, there's I said no. Cost. I kept asking, I'm like, what is he going right. to pay for? I'm like, no, there's no cost to <laughs> like, it. I'm here too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's two sixty two. Hobnobber. Hobnobber. Okay. Yes. It's what bartender background gives you the fee. You are skilled at learning information and practice. It takes you half as long as normal. Okay. If you're a master, then you're not a master. Not yet. Okay. The day will come. Okay, cool. Awesome. And I, I mean, the implication of gathering information as we travel from bar to bar, whether we do that or stay here is up to you. Well, you could stay here. I'd rather you travel from bar to bar. <laughs> <laughs> I want somewhere with better food than here. I'm pointing out that okay. it, at All some right, point, well, Sandy wants to go somewhere with better food. I mean, you you can travel from bar to bar. It's fine. There are lots of, there are probably more than one tavern in town. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Right. He would be trying to find at some point a better class of tavern to drink in or eat in, but... Okay. It's not that important. It's just so, okay. So you guys, it's about you know 15 oh, minutes later. And warm then up. Warm up. The boy, the boy brings you your ale and your your warmed wine yep. and your plate and a bowl, whatever you guys had ordered. Um, as you test, the ale is decent. You know, um, for this type of establishment, you would expect something worse, but it's actually pretty good. And then it realize you realize you're in the Mar Holds. These are dwarves. Mm -hmm. Like if there's something they do, it's alcohol. Right, your wine. Eh, it's 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 like it was probably imported from Valinor or something, but maybe went bad along the way or something. It's not the best wine in the world. This wine is wine. older than I am. That's usually makes it good, unless it's the wrong kind of wine. 
And then it's vinegar. It says vinegar. I was going to say it would go good on fries. <laughs> <laughs> Your guys' meat and vegetables is edible. Um, sure. It's overly salted. It's like they were probably trying to Encourage cover up the, cover uh, up something else yeah. in there, or yeah. they didn't have other good seasoning to yeah. make yeah. drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that that too. Yeah. <laughs> make it really salty. So you get more what, do you, what would you guys like to do here? Gather information. Gather information. So kind okay. of listen in conversations. You know, if I see one where I'm, he knows better than I would how to talk to people in a bar, but you know, mm -hmm. if I see dwarves that seem friendly enough, talk to them about. You know, how is the how are the dwarves here? Do you have a, you know an area you travel and try to sneak the guy's name in a few times looking for it? Okay. So you begin doing that in this establishment. So at the end of one hour we'll That's actually fine. make your roll for this. At the end of two hours we make your roll, I right. Believe, right? Okay. So do you got do you wanna stay here for the entire time or stay here for a half hour? I would be inclined about a half hour here and then okay. look for especially if I can get an idea from here of like a bar there's a dwarven quarter that would be more likely to you know, be a larger dwarf than we'd had there, but if not, just other okay, bars so at different levels. This is this is the information you gather. Um, let's growing up the split. You get some basic information here right. that you would have gotten regardless of your role. That's okay? kind of right. So I'm gonna give you some information. First of all, you learn that the the barkeep up there, um, she's the owner of the establishment. Her name is Tabitha Dead Tankard, though she goes by the nickname Tabby. Um, she's middle aged, she's actually pretty pretty attractive for an orc. Um, she's the she's the owner here. You also learn the names of <coughs> the other four taverns that are in the town. One of them is called the Jester's Flask, and you're told that it's located in Northgate. The other tavern is the Smiling Rabbit. It is located in Northgate. There's another tavern called the Naughty Hand. Let's go there next. <laughs> <laughs> it is located in Lightshade. And then the last tavern of the town is called the Whipping Boy. Oh, I like that one. It is located in <laughs> Lightshade. The first two, where were those located? Northgate. Northgate. North where are we now? <laughs> you were in the bowls. Bowls like a bowl of bold, like brave. Like a bowl. Like a bowl. Let's just hope there's not an extra E in that word. Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> it might have started that way and got renamed. <laughs> Upgraded. Well, a lot of slums, that's the kind of names they get early. And, yeah. you know, the muddy puddle there. <laughs> so, yeah, I would... Personally, be inclined to head to Northgate unless I can, you know, unless they talk more about these particular neighborhoods. But you can learn a little bit about these neighborhoods. Yeah, just kind of aware of the nicer and mm -hmm. mid range, or you know. So what you learned about you learn a little bit about the neighborhoods. This is common knowledge. Just talking yeah. to people, and they see that you're new in town. Yeah, and that's why I'd be telling you. I'm so a traveler. I just yeah, got here. They're gonna give you basic information. So you learned that the bowls is the town's lower class area. And you know what? A guy, a guy is you're asking around, and he's like, I'm gonna just. T have mercy on you and draw you out a quick little map here. Oh, I very right. much appreciate that. And this is your friend. this Let is the player this is the player copy, so you guys are welcome to take notes on here or whatever okay. he wants. It's another copper piece for the ale. Okay. I got more copper. So we're out here. But we're not even in that fenced in area. Yet. No, we haven't gone through the gate yet. Oh, okay. We found this he's in this kind of oh, a okay. low class. Yep. So this so was the stomach, and this is the intestine. Light, light this would be where we're at right now. The bowls. Well, if you turned it over, I guess. It's more, <laughs> this is like the, the esophagus. But so Northgate and, and Lightshade are both right near where we would be entering. You want me to tell you some more about all of the Oh, absolutely, my good friend. All right. Well, right here, you're in the bowls. Yeah. This is where all the poor folk live. Well, not all the poor folk, but some of the poor folk. Live here. Yeah, it's common knowledge. They put you outside the walls. And the so. farms are over there to the west. You see the farmlands and them out on your map for you. Thank you, sir. Light shade. Light shades. Where do you want to go? That's what. That's what caters to your sort. The uh, adventuring. adventuring sort. That's where they got mm. all the shops and stores. Well, lots of them at least. 
taverns are there and inns and all those sorts of services. Right. I mean, there are services for your sort all throughout the city, but Light Shade is, is where the main group of you usually hang out. Uh -huh. The courts, that ward contains a mixture of businesses and middle class residences, so maybe some things of interest there. I wouldn't. I won't get any ideas about messing with the rich folk around there, though, right? The guards don't take lightly to that sort of thing. That's in our gate. The courts. The courts. Oh, the courts. The courts. Oh, courts. courts. Like yes. the court case. Not the thing that tops a bottle. <laughs> That's right. Well, I would like we have video. kegs around here. Oh, corks and kegs. Uh, North Gate. That's where the upper class live. Got most of them business owners. They hire sorts like me to work for them. Um, oh, that's right. You're also going to find the government there. Police force barracks will be there as well. Uh, narrow Arch. Lots of poor folk live there. South Ward. All right. If you live in South Ward, you're really down on your luck. You're living in a hovel, dilapidated, burnt out husks. You're sleeping in your own shite every night if you live in South Ward. Not many of us go there unless we have no choice, but that's where the underbelly is, too. Lowbrook. Lowbrook's where those damned halflings and their thieving ways live. They got exiled for stealing. Now they come up here and want to steal and thieve from us. Are they required to stay there or is that just where there's, they tend to gather? Not required to stay there. But any dwarf who's worth his weight in ale keeps an eye on a halfling that travels up from Lowbrook to the city proper. <laughs> Are there any restrictions on travel within the city? No. No restrictions. Just more guards and more. That's right. You're probably not going to find any guards down in South Ward. It doesn't sound like it. No. Sounds like the guards down there might be less than official. And probably a lot more dangerous. I have uh, underworld, underworld lore. Uh, does any of this particularly sound like uh, a place that I would go to make connections with the Thieves Guild? Or anything like that? Oh, this is like a lore skill that you have? Oh, yeah. Underworld lore. Okay, cool. Let's figure out how this works. Uh -oh, lore is on 247. 247? Lore. Yeah, and lore, by the way, lore in um, Pathfinder is a said. very narrow, specific topic. <laughs> right. right. I think it's super narrow. So I got alcohol yeah. lore. I have about my booze. Right. Right. I can tell you all about alcohol. So for a lore topic, you can probably recall knowledge of lore. Knowledge. Yeah. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to insult anybody here for the quality of their alcohol. The ale's pretty darn good, I'll be honest. I mean, it, you can have better, but for a oh, copper, no, this is a pretty good mug of ale. You don't have to be trained, which is nice, but... Yeah, technically you can try them, but realistically... Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right, so yeah, we're going to do a recall knowledge check to okay. see... Um, for your lore for that. Go ahead and make that check, please. Never mind. You really? Oh, wait. <laughs> Did you get a fail nine? You got a nine? Yeah. Nine. His dice have just been really hot so far today. Yes. Nine. They yeah. jumped all the way yeah. from a two to a five. I mean, it's a it's a the underbelly of the city, the popperish people and stuff. So maybe, but you mm -hmm. you don't really know. I'll be honest. That's never made sense to me. If I'm a successful thief, why am I hanging out with all the poor people? Why don't you buy a fancy town so no one comes looking for you? Easy to blend in. And the smuggling routes. Well, maybe, I suppose. I've never really dealt with smuggling. You also, though, having so an expert company knowledge, is much easier. I'm trying to find one group of people in the tavern. And if we're going to walk the taverns, in each tavern I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to find one particularly, like, whatever the most raucous, clearly drunk group is. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to go basically make friends with them and try to get them to buy me drinks. And I'm doing that through a use of, like, deception... There's both, like, impersonate and lie. I'm trying to do a combination of that to kind of just, like, tell stories and, and like, impersonate whoever the 
you know, the loud one in the group is, and like pretend to be him and tell funny stories, like just to try to get everyone else to kind of laugh. Okay. And 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 sort of ingrain myself in those little mini groups. I'm wonderful. With the end result of hopefully getting someone to buy me a drink. Like, oh my god, you know, another round for this guy, you know, that kind of thing. Just through. Yep. He drinks a lot okay. of ale. Deception. Yeah, yeah. Make a deception check. <laughs> We're all trying out our skills. Hey, wait, I have this thing. This yeah. I can do. 21. 21. Okay, so the next tavern. Which tavern did you guys... Actually, already? I think given that we now know that Light Shade is the Adventures, I think we head off to the Naughty Hand. <laughs> What's that right. or the Whipping Boy? And I'm not sure if those so, two matters. While they were at while they were at the Empty Willow, you were able to <coughs> ingratiate yourself with one of those tables, okay. right? And you got yourself a free mug of ale out of it. Nice. Yeah. They were very, very happy. And as you guys are leaving to go to the Naughty Hand, um, they're clapping in the back. Come back next time there, lad. <laughs> Any time you're welcome. Here, wait. One for the road. And <laughs> Let's take one. another one. Yeah. I will give an extra oh, copper one. piece to our serving boy as we leave. Okay. This is a tip. That, he appreciates it. Thank you for his time. Mm -hmm. I hope to see you again, lad. It's been a pleasant evening. Yes, you're always welcome back. Thank you. And as travelers, we've of course got to see more of the town, yes. but... Thank you. Thank it was you. a wonderful introduction. Thank you for not breaking anything. Well, I wouldn't do that. I understand the cost of repairs, trust me. He's too small to break anything. <laughs> that is not under <laughs> either. I will, won't deny that. It's not exactly my forte. All right, so you so guys are three ales in. Probably a little drunk. <laughs> the naughty hand! The naughty hand! Naughty. Let's slow it down a little, just in case. <laughs> I'm not saying you can't drink, but let's slow it down just a little. By chance, is it spelled... K-N-O-T-T-I-H. Right. <laughs> we'll have to see when we get there. <laughs> like a tree. <laughs> Please. Uh, well, how do you want it to be spelled? K naughty like the naughty. knot of a tree. Yeah. Like a tree. Naughty, naughty, naughty. like naughty. naughty. <laughs> he's why, saying, why do you want it to be spelled out? He's worried because about the other one could be. Is gonna could be. Have he's have worried about where his hand's going to go. Yeah. Oh. There's a naughty hand around. <laughs> I, are you sure you don't want to go to We said bar, not brothel, right? Like, I just want to make I'm sure. Not, I don't have an objection to the Whipping Boy if you prefer. I just no, picked no. one at random. Right. Just, uh... Right. I had heard uh, Ryan, Rin there who mentioned the Naughty Hand, so I was just following up on that. I suppose we're going to go to each. Turn. It's not entirely impossible. It depends on what we find out. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so I'd like to go to the Naughty Hand and, you know, visit that for about a half hour. The Naughty Hand could Keep gathering information. All right, so you guys... I've spent some time already at the Empty Willow, right. and you're traveling into the town. Mm -hmm. And as you do so, you come across a patrol of soldiers. Let me find the description. It's here somewhere. Yes. North Gate. That's kind of interesting. The upper class is right through the gate. So it's you. It is a t detachment of five guardsmen that you come across. Their uniform is a black tabard worn over their armor. In the center of the tavern, on the front and the back, is the town's insignia, a white mountain frozen over with ice. Members of the guard here, they have a variety of arms and armor on them. Um, there doesn't seem to be a certain, like, you know, everybody gets the same equipment type thing. Um, everybody just kind of wears, you got a hammer Whatever here, or a sword, a spear, just everybody's kind of like mishmashed it, you know. Um, and you're coming in and they approach you and the, the captain eyes you and says, Hello, who are, Captain. Who are you all? A traveling man that has just visited this new town is getting to know it. New to the town, are you? Absolutely. We've Indeed. first here. Wonderful. We've heard that this is a good town for adventurers looking for a start, and obviously, looking at us, you can tell that's what we are. Indeed it is. Well, uh, wish you luck, and uh, you know, behave yourselves. Are we'll there break. any laws we should know about specifically? This is the standard laws. Okay. No thieving, no killing, unless they thieved you first or killed you first. When he says no thieving, I look at you. So like what you're saying eyes. is if someone thieves from us, we're allowed to kill them? Thief. I am. Under certain Are circumstances, I suppose. What about covering the mess? I'm a criminal mastermind. <laughs> totally it's different. kind of like killing like employees. <clears throat> Listen, the town's a little bit rough and rowdy at times. It's, it's not a free-for-all. Just but don't be stupid. Indeed, and I appreciate the advice. We'll certainly do our best. Stay out of trouble if trouble comes. We'll solve it as quickly and efficiently as I'm, possible. You know, if somebody tries to knife you in the back, you're well within your rights to knife them back. And we'd appreciate it if you take care of their body, too. 
Anywhere in particular it should go? Sorry? The body. I'm don't dump it in the river. Well, no, Please don't put it in the river. I just was curious if there was a, a common dumping ground. No, you may not need I it. I think they put it you in the river. You need to get rid of the body. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. I'm that. pretty sure well, they drop most things off. Liquefy it, disintegrate it. We could do a couple of different things to well, a that, body. To that get sounds rid of it. great, but you want a recommendation? Yeah, of course. Throw it in South Ward. There's only trash and garbage there anyway. I will totally keep that in mind. Ooh. Not if someone Brooks? tries to stab me in the back, my large friend, oh, I would appreciate it. Southward's like would uninhabited, right? Smash oh, you try to do that in Lowbrook, those halflings will stab you in the face. Mm. I'm call. not very good at that. I don't mess with the halflings. They're feral little bastards. Mm. Are these dwarves? I truly um, So the, the, the captain, is she a captain? Hold on a second. I think she's a captain. Yeah. The captain is a dwarf, yes. The one speaking. The one speaking is a dwarf. And then there are, there's one human, and the other three are orcs. I do appreciate the advice and the, the knowledge, Captain. We were hoping to head to, uh, I wouldn't, he would remember this, I have a bad memory for this sort of thing. Heading to Lightshade, looking, we were told that's a good place for adventurers to... Absolutely, you can't go wrong going there. Do you have a pre is there a preference over the whipping boy or the naughty hand for a better tavern for the likes of us to... Well, it depends. You want to be whipped? Do you want to be naughty? <laughs> what if I want a place to sleep and not be either? Well, we're good at either of those places if you want to sleep <laughs> and not get whipped or get naughty. <laughs> uh, rewind just a sec. The, the, dwarf, <laughs> the dwarf was saying things like the halflings are violent, yes. stab you in the face, whatever. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Did any of the other people have a reaction to that that would have indicated some sort of because uh, that could just be a dwarf being essentially mm -hmm. racist towards halflings, or uh -huh. it could be like everyone feels the same way. I'm trying mm -hmm. to determine if everyone okay. else kind of yeah. felt the same so way. So as you're reading the other, the three orcs and the human, give me a perception check. Seven. A seven? Yes. <sighs> yes you don't get a die. whole lot <laughs> off from them, but it certainly doesn't seem like... I got the important one. I got free They're not. Boots. They're not yeah. like, you know... Spitting in person along with her right. to, about the halflings. They're really just, you can't get a read off of them. Well, like it's like a support at all. You know, they're supporting mm -hmm. you, so they're not going to disagree. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. You should be probably trained in it. Uh, everybody says. Everybody has at least trained in it. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, not captain. Captain, not, not, she's not a captain. She's a sergeant. That sergeant. makes more sense for a traveling guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. perception's yeah. probably. The clerics are trained in perception. Okay. Oh, it's okay, gotcha. So it's actually a separate category. Yeah, that. it's its own kind of okay. thing. It's not even really a skill. It's its own kind of thing. All right, well, if there's nothing else... Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll be moving yeah. on. Yeah. Thank you. Have a... Sergeant, I, we do appreciate very highly your, your time and your expertise. Absolutely. Have a good day. And I say that in Dwarven. It's evening, but thank you. <laughs> mm. And I'll walk away playing quietly a Dwarven drinking song. All right, so you guys travel to Lightshade, and where are you going? I think we decided on the Naughty Hand at least first, although I might be wanting to actually stay in the... the uh, naughty I might give up adventuring life if the Naughty Hand's fun enough. <laughs> well, as long as re rolling money already. As yeah, long as your money right. holds out, I suppose. <laughs> right, true, yeah, that's true. Eventually we run out of money. I've been in rough taverns. I've had a not real rough tavern, but a little bit. All right, so you guys... Um, by the way, the coffee's already over there. Please. Nobody wants it. There's like cups over there. I'm gonna get a drink too. I will follow the expert. Oh. Can't detect magic. It turns out after. Right. So trade is a plus three. plus two plus your level. So plus three. Right. Because right. yeah, what fighters are expert oh, in perception? Good lord. One. There are a few of them. Three. Most people are trained in it, but I know there's a couple of classes that are experts, I think, in it to start. No, I'm expert in the same yeah, yeah. yeah, barbarians are experts in perception, which I think is funny. Poisoning us with decaf over here? Expert no, is fun. I need you guys normal. Well, look, all those character cards, yeah, they, are those all from they, the... Uh, oh, I'm expert in perception. I forgot. I just have a little bad one. bad. I have a 12 wisdom, so... Oh, no, I bought it. They sell them separately. Oh, do they really? So I don't have great fortitude reflex. Fortitude. My bad one. Yeah, it's a lot of Because I don't have much. But of course, my will, as you might expect, is very good. So. My will's okay well, only because I'm an expert well, in it. Yeah, exactly. I'm an expert in it, and I have good wisdom. And you have a good wisdom. So, yeah, I have a, like like a plus one wisdom. So, my will is eh. It's a six, which isn't horrible. <laughs> Fortitude and reflection back. 
four, four, six, six. Gold four, four, copy six, from the summer. Four, four, nine. Four, nine, six. But again, I've got a better dex, but I'm only trained in reflex. So. Right. I've got the expert in will, I'm but trained I'm in all three. I've got an expert, expert in all three, but I think I don't think I can get higher than expert. There's some weird drawback to being good early. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't. Honestly, I haven't looked that far forward much. Wait. I'm kind of glad. It's all right. The so thing. you guys arrive. Three. You are at the naughty hand. Walking in, it's packed full at this time. Um, not a table to be spared. And mostly adventurers, too, are piled in here. Uh, the previous place you were at, the Empty Willow, was mostly working class people, like people who lived there and stuff. This is pure adventurers. So armed, armored, a lot of them stink from a day's work, probably doing who knows what. Yeah. Can I get a look at any food people are eating and see if it looks any better? Um, so you look around at the, the food and Unfortunately, this is another one of those establishments where you walk in and you don't really smell food, but you do smell like alcohol, like mm. ale, stale ale, you know, like mm. like when you return the cans and stuff to Meyer, uh, yeah. right? And it just has that stink. Like this mm. whole place has that stink. It oh, is loud. It is bawdy. There's a singer off in the corner doing some tavern songs, very inappropriate. Uh, a lot of the adventurers are laughing along and toasting and stuff. So those are people who are enjoying themselves, but this is not a high class um, establishment whatsoever. Just looking yeah. for, I think I'm going back to the other place. I didn't think I'd like it there, but it's getting worse. Not I kind of like it. Let's so move up in class. I'm well, used to this. I wonder what, why Valinar is only so small, <clears throat> given the ilk in this world. Ma used to frequent places like this all the time, so. This, this I, really if you find a way to get up to the bar yeah. or anywhere to get a drink, oh. All right, you guys, you guys like shoulder your way up to the bar, and there's a tiny, I'm tiny just opening. Weaving in between legs. Yeah, you and I are like. Uh, <laughs> I'm staying close to uh, uh, Balcro. Bal sorry, Balcro here. I intend for you to have trouble pronouncing that, by the way. <laughs> Balcro. <Bulk roll. laughs> I'm doing this. I wanted to make it sound I'm like saying, something that would be hard. Okay, all right, give me another fingers. chat. But I'll be staying close to Malcro and letting him kind of get me through oh, the no, crowd. Ten. Ten? No, you can't. No, no screws on it this time. You can't find anybody to get in with. Um, up at the bar, the barkeep comes up. All right. What do you want? Uh, an ale for me, if I would, please, good sir. All right. What the rest do you want? Not speak up. I'd like some spiced wine. Thank you. Warm, no, warm wine. Yes. Yeah, it's L, L, or L. Five ales it is, please. Charming sir. place. Water. I. Th I wouldn't order. A second L. I had thought this place catered to adventurers of all sorts. It does. Apparently, it caters apparently to ale drinking adventurers. Apparently, it doesn't cater to certain adventurers. He's pointing at his elf here. Oh, what, you want wine? Yes. I get you wine. Thank you. You pansy. <laughs> what else? I like this guy. Water. You're going to drink the water here. Yes. Cause You've never been here before, have you? Because it's got to taste better than the ale, judging by the look of it. Eat the snow. All right, whatever. Only if it's so, not yellow. Um... It's uh, a copper piece for anybody who's getting ale. Two copper pieces for anybody getting wine. That's distressing. <laughs> the two copper wine? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Two copper, two wine. copper it's, wine. It's a silver a bottle in the last place. Is that, the, is that Boone's Farm? No, that's it's two copper, so it's two buck chuck, right? It's, like, Ooh, it's, probably, <laughs> it's probably ale and they threw a berry in it. Like. <laughs> yeah. The, the ale, the it's ale what, watered it's down. It's put a berry in it. Rotten strawberries in it. I love that idea. The ale is not too bad. Uh, the wine tastes like garbage. Yeah. The water, the the water. Water. <laughs> put quotes around. The water is darker than the ale. It is. It is absolutely revolting. Yeah. Which doesn't stop our iron gut goblin, but it tastes good to me. Okay. <laughs> and I'll continue to kind of circulate and just 
you know, same thing, trying to find information on this. I see, this is going to be well, one the, of the hardest adventures the I've ever been on in part of the last 200 years. The background and personality so and ancestry well, and nice I will literally I just, my finances are not, limit, they're not limitless right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm a city scavenger, so I will literally, like, pick things out of the garbage and just eat other things, like... Rotting flesh. At yeah. the moment, I think nice. we're looking yeah. going back to the empty willow for the night. I'm not sure staying here would be a wise thing. Who's the, what's you the hear a thing? shout oh. from behind the counter, and the barkeep who had served you says, "Well, she's not here. I don't know where she is. So until she gets back, I'm in charge." And there is a female human appears to be part of the wait staff, and she has a this you know upset face and spins and walks off, and then. The, the barkeep who had just served you grumbles to himself. Um, you hear something about sharp ear, Can and he doesn't seem to be very happy. I'm going to slip through the crowd with a acrobatics squeeze check, or maneuver and fight flight check, or some tumble through check. What are you trying to do? Get to wherever that person had walked off. The, the, the woman had walked off? Yeah. Okay, you, you slip through the crowd All right. and after her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, might I inquire as to who you're looking for? She turns around, young young girl, um, fairly attractive, and she says, I I'm sorry, what's that? May I inquire as to who you're looking for? Well, I I'm not exactly looking for anybody, but but Yargunt is just unreasonable. He thinks he's in charge around here, and he's not. Why is he in charge? Well, be because Cassandra's missing. Missing? Missing, yes. For how long? Um, recently... A week ago or so, she just didn't didn't show up. A week, and she owns this establishment. She owns the place, yeah, Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And now, and now, Yarrunt thinks he's in charge. He's bossing us around and and all of this stuff. And he's not in charge. He has no more authority than any else of us. Oh, very interesting. Hmm. Where was she last seen? Well, I mean, most of us here saw her leaving here late one night to go back to her home. Okay, and she lives in? Um, well, she probably lives in the area. It might be the courts. Wait, isn't that the super rich people? No, super rich was Northgate. Courts is kind of the business area. Business, yeah. Like yeah. Residential. She'll, she lives in the courts. Which is just south of here. I'll Take care of the notes. Yeah, it's just self so really He did say, like, "Don't like the guards don't take kindly to messing with the rich folk in the courts, but not that they live there." Yeah, yeah. there are wealthy people in the courts, but yeah. the main upper class. We actually came through it. Interesting. We came through Northgate to get to where we are. Is there anything? Oh, uh, I may happen past the area. Uh, if you would want, I can knock on their door. Well, I mean, we've tried that. I suppose you're welcome to. Are you going to try to find her for us? That is, that is a possibility. That is what I do best. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, she gives a basic description. She lives in an apartment complex in okay. the courts, and she tells you more or less how to get there. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure it'll do any good because the the the, the guards have already been alerted to it, and and I'm sure they're doing the best they can. So I get it immediately. Indeed. I am, I am certain of that. But uh, you can always have outside help. Sure, that, that would be wonderful. I, I don't know that... I mean, I mean, Cassandra has coin if she can be rescued, but all of us here are, have no worries. Have no worries. If we do produce possibly a favor in the future. Protection. Like a place to stay, some food to eat, you know? Well, I, it, um, but that is the future. There, 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 I mean, there, yeah. She some, seems very hesitant about that. You can tell that she's out of her element. This whole like quest giver business is not. <laughs> uh, um, she she does say, um, I'm Iola Vobelar, by the way. Most people just call me Pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin. She she is she has like you know she's ginger with this like reddish hair. It's a. Uh, Pretty short cut, fluffy, curly, sort of strawberry, golden hair. I uh, throw back my hood and I'm like, I'm blue. Nice to meet you, pumpkin. Hello, hello, blue. AKA pumpkin. 
directions to Cassandra. All right. I'm done with it. Like I said, Thank I'm going to keep trying to gather information and just... All right. How long do you want to stay here gathering information? <laughs> I don't want to stay very long, but I'm assuming that's the real okay here. For, I'll take the other half an hour and make the roll. Yeah. All right. Half hour to drink the... What? Yeah, he's going to take, yeah, take, take half an hour at least to drink the wine. He's going to take that long because I don't want to risk getting drunk. <laughs> All right. Now let's do a roll. What kind of roll are you doing? Why couldn't it's I gather information. In my case, it's a diplomacy roll. Diplomacy. Nat 20. Yeah, All right. 27 with a nat 20, so it's a mm. critical success if that's a success. So, gather information. You're just trying to find where this guy is? I'm trying to find out, yeah, anything I can yeah. about Cassic where Cassic would be and how to find him. All right, you're going around, asking around. You get to one table, and the dwarf looks at you like, Are you daft? I've been called worse. He's sitting right there. Well, then that's all I need to know. My thanks. Have an ale, my good friend. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I'll head over. It's copper piece every ale you give out, dude. Mm -hmm. okay. I got plenty of copper. Okay. Left. Copper is not too hard to come by. He can give out, if he has as much money as I do, he's going to give out. I probably don't have as much left as you do because I did spend quite a bit. 428 <laughs> more ales. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have that much. I may be dipping into your funds if it comes to that because I bought a lot yeah. of things for myself. I have just about that many ales myself. So yeah. I got about another hundred or so if I had to, but. Because, you know, I spent a lot of money on stuff. All right, so, so um, I did gentlemen, laddies. Last, if you would, I think we've met our, found our man, well, dwarf. And I'll head over to the table that he indicated. He's there, and there there are um, a couple dwarves with him, and a human, and an orc as well. They're all sitting there, they're laughing and talking and drinking. They're speaking common? They're speaking common. Okay. My good friend, uh, Kassuk, was it? I have been told. Yeah! I apologize for What do you want? Oh, uh, we've... We're interested in retaining your services about a uh, mutual business. We've recently traveled here and we're told that you, we should seek you out to speak out possible business opportunities. Oh, really? Yes, my good sir. All right, hold on. And there's a missing tones folk. Oh, well, that's good. Whether we have time for that, we'll have to see. We are here on a job, but I certainly would appreciate finding someone who needs being found. Plus, it probably means a nice discount here. Save the owner, I would suspect so. Having what, friends. What kind of business do you want to talk about? Something private, I believe, would be for the best. Private? Oh! You idiots! You're the ones, aren't you? We are ones? I don't know. If I wanted ones. that statue delivered last week. It's taken forever for you to get here. The, you can only travel as fast as the water permits. Sadly, it was against us this trip. I don't care about your excuses! He turns his companions. Who wouldn't mind? We're gonna rip these all new arses. And his companions are like looking at him. They stand up, take their food and stuff, and move away. And he says, "Sit your bums down." Are there any chairs like that size that put works for me? Oh, I can pick no. it up. I'm so I'll be standing no. on a chair. Yeah, sit on a chair. <laughs> I take Dad out and set him on the table. <laughs> First. That's very pretty. <laughs> I look forward to dancing with you, friend. All right. I uh, I just have a hand on now tapping one of my uh, now that we have a few less one years. of my bombs, gentlemen. Gentlemen, yeah, why, why are we friending our to have some fun. He said he wanted to have some fun. I, I want to see something blow up. That's not for the moment. It would be expensive to repair. Eh. Nu nuances above that. Right? Can't repair it if there's nothing there. You'd be surprised. Have I'm no assuming words. then we have some clearer space so we can talk. <laughs> All right, so our mutual friend sent you then. Indeed. Indeed. Wonderful. You're here to take care of the problem? Yes. We need to know a little more sure. about it first. We didn't tell you about the problem. They, no. All they told us was to come to see you. Obviously keeping it quiet. Yeah, and not to let on yes, there any are... associations we may share. Your missing statues. Uh, we probably should find uh, who took them. All right, we'll find the statues. All right. <clears throat> Aren't you gonna order me an L first? 
<laughs> it looks at me I'm like, I'm like the poor no. Alright, he gets an ale, he's drinking it down. It's his hobby ordering people ale. Alright. I have found it a effective way to uh, make friends. Not to mention, it won't be as obvious when you slip up something. So, a mutual friend is sitting here to take care of some problems that are happening all about the place. Mm -hmm. Well, we think we got a lead on thieves. That's a good start. Mm. I mean, that. Oh. We've spotted some little folk running around town, being all sneaky and snoopy like, staying in the chateaus. Look a lot like you, friend. They're blue? No. Goblins. City goblins. Mm. Oh, then they're not. They, they're fine. They, they won't cause any harm. City are goblins. They, are they common? Probably have their teeth filed down. I've heard very little about goblins in the area. Is that a common thing to see, or are they... You know? Well, there is a goblin village nearby. Okay. Gleck Hollow. It's about 12 miles southwest from here. Gleck Hollow? Gleck Hollow. Gleck. Gleck. Oh. I'm not going to spell things for you, I just want you to know. Can you take the brogue out of your mouth for a minute? I need to... It's Gleck Hollow. Gleck Hollow, thank you. 12 miles north. Close enough. South. 12 miles south. southwest. <laughs> it's on the road to the ruins of Noldrenhold Thorn. A lot of ours. Uh, yes? Ah, look, there's a goblin village there. That friendly like sorts, they cater to adventurers. You can find yourselves a place to sleep at night if you need to, and a few equipment, equipment and stuff, but friendly folk, no problems usually, but, well, some of them have been uh, snooping around town, like I said, especially, they've been snooping around the bank, and I have the name here for you, somewhere. I'll find it. No, I didn't find it. That's a weird name for a bank. <laughs> Here we go. We found it. Wee bank. This must be Scottish. <laughs> it's a wee it's bank. Wee bank. Yeah. Oh, Irish. Irish. Very big. <laughs> the wee bank of Scotland is it? Oh, well, here we go. Okay, it's called Heroes Hold. But do we know it... if this is one of the places run by our house of the I know they're the banking house, so we know if this bank is run by them. Um, Out of character, it's not something I would ask. I'm just curious. So yes, it, def it definitely is. Absolutely, you guys, you guys, are, they're your patron. Right. Basically, there isn't a bank in the Marvel. That's the impression that, I had got. That isn't run by House Kondrak. In fact, throughout most of Corvair, the banks are usually run by House Kondrak. Like, and I know fairly universal. I know we're supposed to not show our association, but if it come, becomes necessary, do we have any way? Do I? Identify ourselves like to the bank that we are working for House Kondrak, or are we not even allowed because of the risk of discovery? Well, not allowed to. Look for him there. He's probably been informed. So if we absolutely had to, we could do that, but we don't want to. Right. I don't want to risk blowing our cover. I'm going to desperately avoid right. it. But. Well, we got, I mean, we all got descriptions of you. I can recognize your fool face as soon as you walked in the tavern door. I just wanted to see how long it takes you to find me. Understandable. So, Lorfram's probably going to recognize you as well, but I wouldn't approach him. Oh, no. He's, uh, he's a little bit up the, the ladder, you know. His last name is Dekundarak, if you take my meaning. I don't. I'm oh, good, neither do I. <laughs> it means he actually has, um, uh, uh, a dragon, dragon mark. mark. He has okay. a dragon so mark. He's on dragon him. mark. Yeah. I say, and again, the, I'm sure Sandy would know that. The D. Right. Yeah. So of Condorac. Okay. Yeah. So he's dragon mark. So he's, you know, he's a pretty important dude. That would be. And again, I'm not intending to approach him as necessary. I just wanted to see whether that was a and feasibility if we had no choice. Has anything gone missing? Well, in Tahiro's hold? No, no, no. Of course. In town? Yes. Okay. Uh, Unusual. Not, not that I can say exactly. Like, 
not, valuables. Not not in, nothing that is of interest people, to our particular interests. People. People go missing all the time. So what we this have for the town's not exactly a, a bench, uh, a bastion of like security and and safety. I see. So what we know then is goblins have been sighted in town, which is not typical, but not unknown. You know, it was fairly easy well, to find this man. We just had to go to the most naughty bar. It'd be nice it's, if someone told us that on the way here. It's, it's not that we don't see goblins in town. It's that they're usually not sneaking around the bank. Hmm. Would you have any other information that could? I mean, us? we could. We could. Go. Well, that's my intention. I'm just making sure there's no other. If we have any other information. But if they don't do talk, it. we rip their ears off and eat them. Yeah, well, that sounds more like your skill set than mine. Let's own. hold off on the eating of sentient creatures. Just for, say. Their ears aren't sentient once you take them off. If you reanimate them, they may be. <laughs> anyway, what we'd like you to do is investigate. See what's going on, see who's responsible, and put an end to it, right? Now, you might start with Gleck Hollow and see if you can find out if it's somebody there that's up to more good. Um, now, we got no gripe with Gleck Hollow. Like I said, they're city goblins. They're good sort in their own sort of way. But once you do find out who's behind this, you gotta take care of them. Permanently. So, to get this... So, things have been stolen. So, if we do catch these goblins in possession of the stolen goods, not necessarily from House Kundra, but... Well, that's, that's correct. In general, things have been being stolen. Right. Okay. I don't know of anything from... I don't know if there's anything in... Like, in, in Frost mantle to be stolen of the sort that we're talking about. Right, 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 right. right. But it's also possible that should you find whatever goblins or little folk are responsible for this, they might have more information about who's behind it all. So, I'm looking at your father there, and he looks very happy to do certain things, but you might want to hold him in check before. Loosen tongues first, then cuts them off, you know? Generally, I just like to have him out to chat occasionally. That's fair. Understand. But I understand, yes. Diplomacy must come first. But, uh... Or aggressive interrogation. Yes. Sometimes. Torture techniques, all that oh, good sort no, of thing. No, no, no. That's unnecessary. They either speak... Or they don't. They is. It's very really black and white of you. Yes. There's a lot of gray in the world, too. Uh, seen enough gray where I'm from. What'd you come to the Murrow Holds for? It's not but stone here. <laughs> Some of the stone's quite pretty colored. That's true. That's a good point. Well, then welcome. <laughs> a few less demons. Oh, there's probably some demons in the realms below. A few less, I promise. So, my friends, it appears that we at least have some sort of a lead. Yep. It's getting on towards evening. I don't know that we want to travel 12 more miles through the Nard. We want to find lodging here tonight. Or we'll find that girl. Or just want to investigate that briefly and see if there's easy leads. We don't have long because we have a job to do, but I'm not opposed to a quick look. <laughs> the night is young. Dwarf says we don't kill him first. We have time. Well, and we might see some of these goblins sneaking. Do you, oh, where is this bank located? The Heroes Hold. It's in Northgate. So not where we're going for this, but if we wind up there, we might have a chance of. It's, it's not a large town, so right. getting from one more to another. Yeah, so it looks like, is yeah, like, looks like pretty short. It's not that much. So we certainly could have a chance to look through. The bank, perhaps, too, as part of our investigation. Yes. Uh, but I'm certainly willing to try to find it. I just don't know that we want to divert too much time until we've dealt with the reason we're here. Yeah, if your only lead is that she has an apartment that other people have already tried to find her at, I don't know what 
we're going to be able to do, but we can go in and look. So what do we think? Go look for the girl or go check North Gate out for Goblin? Uh, one after the other. Um, sure. Master Winax. Well, I'm right. always interested to meet more goblins. Would there be a place you could meet them for? For what? Housing? Lodging? Well, it depends. You want to sleep in sawdust? A straw bed? Or you want feathers in your pillows? I won't deny I prefer the feathers, but I suspect our finances put yes. more in these trials. Let's be home. reasonable. Well, when we go check what's her face's apartment and she's not there, we can stay there for the night. Um, I suspect that might upset the guards to some yes. extent if Why? they should discover it. Probably we don't want to become the quarry of their, uh, the target of their inquiry. It's going to be one shut door amongst however many are in an apartment. Why would they know where they're? Yes. Five rough and tumble swords go through an apartment complex and enter a door well known to be occupied by this lass. It might be suspicious to the neighbors. I'll be honest, I've never been called rough and tumble before. Kind of like it. Are we gonna, what are we going to do to investigate? All those exact same things you just said have to happen. Trust yes. me, there's a all difference the other, in investigating and staying. To the elves, all the other races are rough and tumble. Well, I appreciate that. I feel rough and tumble. Um, <clears throat> you guys were asking. The dwarf, you yeah, the dwarf, right? Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, but again, straw so beds, I suspect, would be of a more appropriate level to our current financial situation. So you want to sleep in the dirt? I'm sure not dirt. No. All right. Well, you got you got a couple choices then. The gray monster is right here in light shade. It's not exactly the best establishment, but you'll get. Your nickname? Quartz, at least. Your it's pretty inexpensive. <laughs> you can also go to the Ticken Sword. It's right here in Nightshade, too. The Ticking Sword? The Tick and Sword. Or the Tick and Sword. The Ticken okay. Sword. Hopefully, that will mean the friend you would make staying there. That's a little bit up, upper cla up middle class, a little bit better than the Grey Monster. Of course. Once you get some coin in your pouches, then you can go to the King's Inn. Then you'll stay there in style, like those fancy elves. I seriously doubt you know what fancy elves even look like. You're not one of them. Wearing that outrageous costume from times of yore. <laughs> well. Uh, do we know what we need to know? And uh, what I presume if we have more information for you and need ones, we can find you here other nights? Mm. At a time. Mm. Uh, thank you for your time. And perhaps it's time for us to move on to our investigation. Indeed. You really need one of those kiddie, the kiddie seats to carry around with you so you can sit down like an adult. I would have to keep that in mind. I was hoping the establishments would be more size friendly, but... You're yeah. gross mental. Uh, so I've noticed. It's a new experience to me. Quite interesting. Have a good evening. Drink I can sit on my back to a back should I have to. Here, here you go. This is this is a little recipe for you. A recipe? Mm-hmm. Can you read common? Mm. Okay. Clean water. Well, this recipe doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to get that? Well, I imagine if you started the river upstream of the city, you might have some. I've all got piss in it. You boil it. Um, boil uh, also, um, uh, you know, with names like frost mantle and things, I'm thinking that we're in a snowy region, but I guess. We said um, it's, it's cold like spring, right? Ale. Mm -hmm. You giving me a recipe for ale for? It's better ale. It's blues brew ale. Really? Mm -hmm. Don't make ale. What a tired adventurer. If you wanted to. We really should be going. Well, I appreciate that. I'm with you, Valkor. Let us go on. Mm -hmm. What's he do with that slip? I can only, um... <laughs> so, give me a perception Dwarven check. culture for so many minutes. I find uh, it fascinating, 17. but then I grew up in it, so... Crumples it and tosses it on the floor. I'm going to try to... As we walk away, I'm going to try to grab it. 
Okay, all right. So what's the sleight of hand equivalent in Pathfinder? Thievery, probably. Thievery, probably. Thievery, Thievery yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thievery. Fucking hell. Eleven. An eleven? Yeah. Um. <laughs> You oh, grab it, he yeah. notices you grabbing it and chuckles to himself. Doesn't say anything though. Yeah. Okay. Come along now, lads and lasses. Let's yeah, go find yeah. ourselves there. Let's go. Are we starting as we're leaving? Are we starting with the young lady or are we starting with the bank? Might as well. Just do a quick quick search of the place and which place? Uh, her apartment. The young lady. Uh, yeah. I asked you to answer questions. I think we should look at in on the young lady. Uh, I have things no are being stolen. I'm worried that not just material objects. Yes, and we can always keep an eye out for anything suspicious along the way. This is definitely a rough town. I doubt there's going to be too many objections to us moving around as long as we're not doing anything too foolish. But I regrettably don't speak goblin, so I'm hoping we'll be able to communicate. Assuming Blue is not... Well, being found by a dwarf is... Don't big, worry, sure. people love me. Once they get to know me, I'm your best friend. I have no doubt. So, I was just merely commenting on your knowledge of language. And you guys, you guys, this would be common knowledge for anybody living in Corbair. So, before humans, dwarves, and elves and stuff came to this continent, it was ruled by a goblin empire, okay? And that goblin empire was at war with uh, the demon, with the Dalkir, all these horrible sorts of creatures, okay? And then eventually, um, all the other races came, and basically the goblins, like, were, uh, some of them, like, were driven underground and stuff like that. There was war and different things happening. Um, your guys' ancestors, many of them enslaved goblins, okay, in long hundreds of years ago sure. and stuff. Um, and then, finally, um, when slavery ended and all that kind of stuff, um, many of the goblins, who were once at once slaves of you guys, um, became, you know, they were freed and stuff like that. Yeah. And they live amongst people throughout Corvair, and they're known as city goblins. Okay, so their city goblins are basically they're tame, they're civilized, they all speak common, you know, and they're used to mingling with all the different races that are in Corvair. And this settlement, Black Hollow, is city goblins. Excellent. There are other goblins. There are other goblins. For instance, you guys know you've heard rumors of goblins that when all that stuff happened, they went underground. And by the way, the Goblin Empire was highly advanced. Very super advanced. Very militaristic. Very, very powerful. Um, but there was a segment of them that retreated underground. And rumors have it that recently they had begun to surface with the intent of taking back what was lost to them before. Um, but city goblins, and, and when we say goblins too, we're talking about the goblin races. It could be goblins, hobgoblins, uh, all that bear. sorts of things, yeah. right? Bugbear. Um, Bugbears, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but city goblins are usually, it's specifically goblins, right? And they're usually nice, generally friendly folk, you know, not bad, etc. Okay. So let's go find this apartment you've been directed to. Yep. So... I still don't have his speech patterns. The courts. Off to the courts to... Yeah. Just a little south of here it would look. Yep. Mm -hmm. Stop by the apartments, we'll do a quick a look about the area, see if there's anything... <clears throat> Distressing. Okay, so you guys, it takes 15 minutes or so to travel to the courts. You find the apartment complex that was described to you, and you begin just looking around the general area mm -hmm. of it, scoping things out. Look through the windows a bit, if there's an uh, uncurtained window. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stealth. Do up. you know which. Are you, so, like. I was told which apartment, it, wasn't I? Or not oh, yes, they would have given you the number of the apartment. Yeah. yeah. So you'd, you'd have to go in. Well, the thing is, is that when you have an apartment complex, right, and you have a bunch of windows, you don't necessarily know which window goes to which apartment complex. Oh, okay. Right? It's a little bit. Until you go in there and actually find where the door is. And even then, when so there's you're like seeing, a window between two doors. It's like, which one? Kind of, which one yeah, is it, it, yeah, it's hard for you to tell exactly which window corresponds to apartment complex. However, then you could probably do a roll to figure that out. This is probably going to be... Please fail. Crafting? Please fail. No, it's not crafting. I really, I really wanted to look at it. I mean, it's the only one that's like engineering, right? In fifth edition, I would say. Some old goblin lady. I think perception is probably going to be. In the shower. That works too. That's what I want to see. Ten. Ten. Um. Still not very good. You, you're not sure, dude. This window. Uh, is there a light on? I look at two windows, left and right of the door that I'm 
with the number above it. Okay, one of them has a light on. I look at the other. Okay, the one that doesn't, okay. Um, and peer through the window. You learn how dwarves make other dwarves. Low, right. light, low light vision. Are you trying to was, remain unseen? Yeah, like yeah. or by and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm trying to be very discreet <laughs> about it. Okay, yeah. so this will be <laughs> stealth. Is louder. Stealth is a thing? <laughs> yep, roll stealth, please. Uh, 19. 19. All right. So you're up there behind some bushes looking in through the window. And oh, this one bad off the cuts. in the bushes <laughs> looking in the window. <laughs> Sneak off bushes looking oh in the windows. We're all like farther away from the complex <laughs> waiting. As I am, because I'm not very good. Exactly. Nice but it's not oh, really my man. one. Can like like George check? McFly What's in that? the tree. Perception check. <laughs> uh, 23. Okay, so you look in there and you see a, a, a room. It's like a... What do they call those? Are they looking in the lit one or the unlit one? Unlit. Okay. Um, it's, what do they call the stu studio? It's like a studio apartment, okay? Um, all, everything all in one room. And it looks fairly nice in there. Um, as you look around, you doesn't look like anybody's a bit, nobody's in there currently. There's nobody in the bed or anything that you can see. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, it looks like it might have been some time since anybody's been there. Okay, but it doesn't appear to be trashed by any means or a struggle had occurred or anything like well, that. Well, you're not necessarily going to be able to pick up all those details okay. from outside right, outside the window. Right. Oh. You'd have to probably go in and think oh, about oh, that. Oh, oh, Nothing oh. immediate, but it probably could be inside. I'll go try the door. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a little bit, if you guys don't mind. Uh, wait for an untrafficked moment. Mm -hmm. Everybody's at the tavern anyway. Um, and see if I can slink up there, try the door. If it's locked, I'll try to pick the lock. Okay. Uh, give me another stealth check. Okay. Uh, 17. Okay. And then uh, it is locked. Yep. Thievery. So, thievery. A natural one. So eight. <laughs> you do not get the lock. I think you get a plus one if you use thieves tools. But... <laughs> you can get yeah. yeah. thieves tools. Crap. So the crit fail might break it, doesn't it? How does oh, 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 yeah, that's, that's a crit fail, yeah. That is a crit fail. Let's look this up. Thievery. Oh, uh, assuming that I was, what, five below? Is it five below or ten below? No, I think it's a, ten a, below. Roll, a roll of one takes you to one worse. Oh, that's so right. If an eight, eight is oh, a okay. fail, then it's auto crit Thievery. fail. So okay. you're trying to pick a lock. If an eight is a fail, then it's auto crit fail. You break your you tools. Do I break my tools? You do, absolutely, dude. That's a critical failure. Shit, that's not bad. Oh, you're right, infiltrated tools are the ones that happens to me. You just broke your thieves tools, dude. Oh, yeah. I have extra. Crap. It's more like out. trying to hang out looking for conspicuous here. Can, um... How many picks does a thief tool can have? Or just uh, just enough? Is the, the whole well, thing is just The enough. thing about yeah. thieves, the about picks, uh, and I know I have a friend who does lock picking, is that you have the, the several small pieces which you would be using, right? Yeah. So you'd have like four of them in there and then you have the one that you put in the bottom that turns it. So you, when he says you broke it, you broke five picks including your lead pick. Yikes. So. Oh, all of them just... They, yeah, yeah, what he does is he tries, he's giving it a little pressure to try and turn it uh -huh. and they just snap. Damn, that was so, Yeah, so there's there's thieves tools which are three gold, and then there's replacement picks which are three silver. Yeah, exactly. Like you need to buy break. You need and I have three silver would replace the picks you broke. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Can I have a replacement picks? Yeah. You want me to try? Either or. <laughs> well, let's say you try. So while again. they're doing this, I'm just kind of moving around the area, not trying to be part of them. And, and so also, I, I, I apologize. I promise I'm not always on the side of. The guy no, over no, behind no, no, the no, screen. No, the guy that's behind the screen over there. But if you are gonna try, he should assign the penalty because there are pieces of. Pick oh yeah, in it's there. probably broken. So. Though, yeah. Oh, do I get to blow something up? Oh no, he's got pieces of picks in there. Yeah, he, he broke them up in there. More subtle than blow up. Yeah. I got acid. So that would be more subtle. <laughs> acid would. Or the lock. Are the windows the kind of windows that like? Are they just like a single pane right, that maybe like wouldn't move. open, or can the window be open? Yeah, that's a good question. Be open. Is there a window in the back? In the back? Yeah. So uh, these uh, these apartment complexes only have one window per okay. unit. Okay. So no, no window in the back. Good question. But it, we could use these tools to open the window, right? You yeah. Try to open the window. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not that's have true. to worry about my broken pick. Part. That's true. Uh -huh. That's Let's true. That's all you. <laughs> all right. I, I take this replacement pick. Thank you. Uh, two silver. Three silver. Three two silver. silver. Yeah. I, I hand you. Oh, okay. Well, you paid him for them. Mm -hmm. And and then I'll I will go attempt again. This time I will cast a spell. Woo! It is a verbal spell, so it will make some noise. Um, time sense gives me plus one to a skill check. 
but you can do it once per hour. It's basically guidance for wizards. So it's like a, you know, wizard? Is it cantrip? Yeah. And you can do it once per hour? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Give, me, give me a stealth check first. Okay. 26. Okay. And then you're thievery? Yep. Mm -hmm. Alright. 11. Not, oh, 12. Get the window open. I was gonna say, it may not make it, but it's not a one. Time. Can I keep? Well, I guess I can keep trying until I break my picks, right? Or does the difficulty go up? Hold on. So recall, that's a GM call. That's a GM call. I'm saying. He thinks it's just a, this would take longer, or this gets harder because you failed. Yeah. I'm just like I'm just playing some music here, entertaining. Next time we need to break into some place quietly, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, right. I won't necessarily do any better. This is so. So this worse is going to be hard. This though. is a so this is a mundane lock. This is not some special lock or something. Okay. So you can try again on this one. Okay. Yeah, I would not know how to do that. I'm sure. That... All right. Uh, I can open 15. the window. 15. Yeah. All right. You just <laughs> managed to get the window unlocked. This is terribly embarrassing. See, our confidence in our. Uh, That's right, because they all stayed at their distance. I am the only one that knows you're yeah, failing. The two of you are there. Thief. All we know is you're taking forever. Yeah, we see you just do it. And then you move to, from the door to the window, and and, well, that's why and we're conversing. And that's so why I told him, I said, oh, I could open the window. <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> your dad could open the window. Exactly. I would not I'll be answer. surprised if you have that opportunity, if not here at some later time. Mm. Uh, I can open it too. Mm. All i got to say so, is DCs. They're tough. Oh, yes. Yes. They're a lot higher in this game. So is, yep. what exactly. I would like now is for each of you who are standing outside not participating in this okay. to tell me what you have been doing up to this point. So he's been goofing around doing this for about 15 minutes now. I have been trying to be look like a tourist, looking at the different buildings, trying to see how many are apartments, taking notes in my paper. Okay. Give, me, so a, give me a deception check. If I'm spotted, then I'm going to hopefully have an excuse. Uh, 26. Okay. Excellent. What have you been doing? Uh, I'm closer to him. I'm not like standing right outside the apartment, but I'm. Um, he had to be seen bird picks. <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, yeah intentionally co thieving because I can also be stealthy and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm probably like in just like the little courtyard area, mm -hmm. you know, maybe 15, 20 feet away from him, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of loitering, not really doing much of anything, just kind of hanging out. Just Keeping loitering. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Watch or yeah, it's, it's, I'm not like um, watching you. I'm, Blue, what have you been doing? I have been just kind of like just sitting back, watching, just keeping myself kind of going over in my head all of my uh, <laughs> so easy. Okay. alchemical. So a blue-haired goblin is just right in okay. the middle of there. Belt war. What are you doing? Um, uh, I've been conversing with the. Uh, no, frankly, so whatever he's up to, I'm going to try to look like I'm up to that too. But okay. I know I'm really bad. Bodyguard friend. All right, give me a deception, deception check. check. Sure. So I'm not trained in that. Does that just mean that was that? Your charisma. <laughs> but yeah, I was gonna say I just use my charisma. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know level. Yeah. You don't get to add your proficiency. It's right. Just exactly right. right. Yeah. So that's a twelve. A twelve. Yep. All right. So nice. you guys are over there okay. trying to pass off yourselves as doing something up here. Two of you are just loitering there. So as he's goofing around doing this, what do you know? That guard patrol happens by. They spot you two loitering in this place <laughs> and the the sergeant he calls out to you and says hey what are you guys doing around here you don't belong here Did you get back down the light shade flipping adventurers you don't belong you don't belong here it's past dark it's getting late at night is there a curfew honey, what's your business honey here? honey i got this Excuse me, officer. Me and my husband here are just on a <laughs> lovely stroll through the neighborhood. Oh, I am laughing. I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> We're not causing any harm to anybody. We're just on a lovely stroll through the neighborhood. I didn't either. <laughs> Did you officiate? Wonderful blessing. We're like taking notes and snickering. You need a deception check. <laughs> can't help it. <laughs> Can I, like, assist in this by, like, becoming physically intimate? Like, well, you know, just, not, not, <laughs> like, 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 cup of cheek like, a little, yeah, like, 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 like,
like a 16, pull, pull by the way. Like close. <laughs> Deception 16. Yes, It'd be like giving advantage. I don't know what the equivalent is here, yeah, but I'll give you a plus two. There's, there's an aid. So, yes, so, so an, an aid. aid action. Oh my god. That's funny. I just have this. I've got like a little dirty <laughs> piece of string wrapped, or like I just like <laughs> put on my finger real quick. I'm details. like, see? <laughs> <laughs> there are two things I didn't wish to. Come here, baby, for a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> the sergeant, like, gives you this look. And just sneers. That's disgusting. Hmm. And then he walks off with the rest of his patrol. <laughs> Says nothing else. Surprised he didn't like puke in his mouth so hard that he right. on his nose. Burped. <laughs> 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 Okay, you can get your hand off me now. <laughs> right. I, I like disappointedly move my hand back. <laughs> All right. Oh man. Well. So <laughs> inside I go. Mm. Yeah, open up and go in. I know good for them though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what did you say? I said you know good for them though. <laughs> Certainly not judging any sort right, of... Right, yeah, good whatever. for them, yes. Wish them the best. With our short lives, it's nice that they found some. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially with goblins. They have very short lived. <laughs> like 10 to 15 years. <laughs> okay, you're inside. Yep. Uh, looking for nefarious deeds. Any sort of hint of a struggle? I think breaking and entering is the first nefarious deed. Huh? I don't under... I'm not following you. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I need a perception check. Uh, 15. All right, so you look around, and uh, there doesn't appear to be any sort of signs of struggle here or anything. Um, the door leading out in the hallway or outside or whatever um, is, is locked, right? Um, and as you look around, what you do find, what you do find is um, a piece of cloth on the floor okay. near the bathroom. Okay. And there's a certain particular coloration to it. Um, that might be some sort of indication of... It doesn't... So there is... You, you looked at the wardrobe and the closets of here, of the person who lives here. Mm -hmm. And this fabric and this pattern is unlike anything else you found in the closet. So it definitely appears it's not Hattable. something that this lady Cassandra would have worn. Okay. Well, I will smash that up. Okay. Um... Any sort of recall knowledge about it? Like, is this worn by the Red Mantis assassins, or um, some sort of calling card? Or that? Cult? Um, yeah. Clerics. So this is going to be standby. I have all of them. They're all plus six. Oh, funny thing. <laughs> oh, for as well, I may uh, not this look will be a society all that appealing check. to right. humans. Uh, being I'm just going to take a take a 17 uh, to be blue. Uh, because because I'm like I have automatic a looker when it comes to other goblins. Yeah, I'll flip this up. I have cool. Thank you're a looker anyway. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I hope I have it. Is it a rogue thing or a feet thing? No, assurance society. Assurance is a skill. Take ten. <laughs> you can just take 10. A skill or a feat? It's a feat. It lets you it's a feat. It's called take assurance. Mm -hmm. I think what's feet is a Two fifty-eight. No, yes, two fifty-eight. Two fifty-eight. Right at the bottom. Instead mm -hmm. of rolling, you can just take a ten plus your efficiency bonus. Yeah, so it wouldn't be seven. Even in the worst circumstances, you can perform basic tasks. Choose a skill you're trained in. Yep. You can forgo rolling a skill check for that skill to receive a result of ten plus for the range. So I got a plus six. So you can just do that whenever you want. Yep. With this particular skill. Yeah, this one skill. Oh! So can always have a 16 with society, but he has to not roll then. He can't roll and say, oh, I got a 4, I want my 16. You either take 16 or you roll. Okay, I got you. Right. Yeah, you can't go, well, let's see how good the die goes. Oh, I rolled badly, I'll take the 16. You have to pick Each time you take it for whether you want the 16 okay. or you want to try for a better number. Okay, cool. So what'd you get, though? 16. 16. All right. Yes, you recognize this. This is a scarf that is often worn by city goblins. Interesting. All right. I will head up. Everything out. dovetails. Hey, clue directing, it, directing us back on mission. 
right, so that's why you hyper glue. It's not, it's not Christmas Strahd, but we have seven quests that don't connect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's so, these werewolves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do we head to the bank still in the evening? If we encounter a werewolf, we I think if we're going to find them sneaky at night, now is the time to do it. Oh, killing it. I was, I was talking about those werewolves for like two years before you guys finally went and did anything yeah. about them. We heard about them more than once. Ha has and anybody thought it weird that there's just a blue female goblin just rolling around in this village? No, city goblins. Just city goblins. Right? No, Blue goblins are, are more rare they than just take, Yeah, they, but green. how many people know that versus goblins knowing that? That's a good point. How many yeah. people are like, oh look, they're blue, but that doesn't mean anything to you. They just, just taste just like fair. Blue Mountain Crush. Yeah, eh. honestly, I respect most non-goblins. Blue cotton non candy. Blue candy. I respect most non-goblins are like, okay, you're blue, so what? Because you don't really, it's not something that too. matters. No, because like orcs, there could be like, you know, could be skin and crap. It's like, yeah. Oh, cool, you're, white skinned orc. You're blue, you know, maybe it was magical, this happened. Yeah, basically nobody's really been paying too much attention to you. Could be in the Dyer's Guild. There's one bad Alchemo mix. And I do believe I what, on the... Historical wild mage table. There's a turn yourself blue entry. Oh really? So I suspect <laughs> what we want to do then is get closer to the bank and then probably be as sneaky as possible. Yes. Let's case the joint and stealth around so but, we don't become the next. Well, partly because if the goblins are there and they see us coming, there's a good chance they're going to run away, and we want to at least talk to them yeah. and find out what we can. Just so remember, we'll... if we see city guard, we are new adventurers to town looking for. The possibility of maybe build, finding a base of operation like an apartment or something where we could stay more permanently than at a hotel. Me and my husband are on our honeymoon looking for a new home. <laughs> you and your husband. Your husband ran off with some creepy looking elf. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no yes. judgment, whatever, but just that would be the idea I think so we want to stay there. Yeah. Stealth to the bank. And As I we will. get closer to the, into the banker's area, we'll stealth. Yeah. Let's see if we can find a, a route. This time I to will be stealthing as well. So the, the bank is over in Northgate. That's yeah. what you said. So Which isn't too far from the courts. Oh, you guys head on over there. Um, it's getting pretty late in the evening. And we'll be kind of watching for any other goblins other than, than Blue here. Okay. And the off so chance, you know, that we find someone to communicate with. So you guys are... Yes, come on, guys. Like, you go to the bank, and you're what? Just taking out positions around well, to try to look for goblins around? Or what are you doing? So as we get close to the bank, we're going to try to find alleyways and... Uh, vantage points in which we could get a good approach mm -hmm. on the bank so that we could sneak up on them if anybody is ca already casing. Uh -huh. So, and then it, once we discover no one's casing, we are, we are then going to set up vantage points to see if we can, you know, spot someone lurking in the shadows. Okay. All right. So I'll need stealth checks from everybody, please. Valkyra, how is your ability to remain Ooh. unseen? How is your sneaking? Twenty. Not good. Uh, Twenty. Okay. Twenty-five. Sure. Alright. Belcor, blue. Thirteen. Okay. He's little, he fits in small. If I'm not mistaken, 13. isn't there a rule about like yeah. letting us guys? Yes, follow the leader. That's follow the, the leader. Next, yep. That's an exploration activity. Follow the expert. Yeah. The right, follow team. the expert, yeah, follow the expert. This one. That is an exploration. So, it's definitely not me. Follow did the you expert. really? <laughs> right my, wife, my wife did, but I had her write them all up. So me. you choose an ally attempting so a reoccurring sure. skill check. Awesome. The ally must at least be an expert in that skill. And none of us, none of us, are, none of us are expert yet. Yeah. Okay, while following the expert, you match their tactic and attempt or attempt similar skill checks. Thanks to your ally's assistance, you can add your level as a proficiency bonus to the associated skill check, even if you're untrained. So next but level. sadly, we can't do that because none of us are Until expert, your expert yeah. level. Additionally, you gain your a circumstance bonus to your check based on your ally's proficiency. Plus two, plus three, or plus four. Okay, so another so apply right now. We can't apply right now. None of us are actually yeah. experts. Okay. okay, so I'm. I'm I have uh, my blast ability. I can use guidance at will. So that gives me a plus one. I'm gonna use that. Hold on a second. You, you, is it literally casting the guidance? It's yeah. I can use guidance whenever I want. It's verbal components. When yeah. you use, doesn't you, guidance have verbal components? Sure. So, but in this in this edition mm -hmm. or this game, guidance you once you cast it on yourself, you are immune to it for one hour. For one hour. Yeah. Right. Okay. You can use as much as you want, but you become immune for one hour. Correct. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. Yeah. You become immune. Yeah. 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 Once you cast it, you can't use it for an hour. No, nope. right. I can't use it on me for an hour. Anyone who's held down them, they're so if I, I can use it on you next, and then you'd be. And it just does one instead of a d four. Yeah, it's right. It's just plus one. Unlike my spell, my spell is myself only. 
that's the difference. Yeah, that's them. the difference. Guidance I can use on anybody, but they become immune for an hour when I do it. You see, what so. happened is the designers of Pathfinder 2nd yep. Edition saw all these 5th Edition people playing the game, and every 10 spamming seconds guidance. they were spamming guidance. And they're like, that's really lame. Yeah. That's I like a lot that. of the immunity things, which basically is it doesn't work anymore for a while. You have to take a break, because yeah, yeah, right? yeah. the spamming whatevers, there's a lot of the advantage things you can't just spam them. They happen, and then you got to take a break. Yeah. So you're, okay, you cast guidance for yourself. Correct. Okay, yep. cool. I, I like how it didn't do any good anyway. Static <laughs> instead of a roll. Uh, so I got like a seven. What are you trying to do? Where, where, everybody stealth. told me I had this stealth. Is stealth. Stealth. It's your stealth roll. Okay. Okay. Everybody's telling me I had stealth. Okay. I'm not so good at this. You guys very are doing clearly very not good at this. well. <laughs> These guys are sucking it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As you guys approach the bank. Yeah, I right. will be then letting them do more of the casing of the bank, and I'm going to be watching for any approaching guards that okay. might notice our Yeah, I feel the same way. Like, I don't want to get closer. I know, okay. I know I'm bad at this. All I right, know. now I need everybody to give me perception checks. Yep. yep. Perception. Mm -hmm. 20. 15. 19. 10. 16. All right. Roll a better you don't than I see have. any guards coming near okay. by you. There You're is a patrol go that goes by down the street or so. Um, they don't appear to have noticed any of your blundering friends. Um, <laughs> and I heard you got like a 16? Yeah. What did you guys go here? 19? 15. Okay. So you guys look around this bay. Three. You do not see any figures that appear to be casing it. Good. Okay. 53. And then I remember we didn't get any indication of the tying these goblins right here, just that they were sneaking around. Um, yeah. um, I, I think we branched off a little bit. I have a message spell that I can send them messages. So oh. And you, I would have told you that long ago, that I can also do messages. Yeah, I should take it be different. No, wait. I'll be the ones forward needing to trigger the message. Anyway. Um, uh, I'll message a spell to... Uh, Saying, why don't you guys find us a uh, room for the night? Oh no, we'll, we'll get attacked. Never mind. <laughs> You're trying to split the party. <laughs> I'd rather we stay together for the yeah. moment until we know what's going on. So we're case the joint for a little while, maybe an hour or two. You're literally just sitting there waiting to see if you see anything. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like a stakeout. Okay, you guys pick up bandage points and you stay there for an hour or two. Um, give me fresh perception checks, please. Mm. Oh, well, no. <laughs> I got five. Better. Critical fail at a seven. Sixteen. And a thirteen. Twenty-one. Nope. Seventeen, sorry. Okay. Apparently I dozed off. You guys do not see anybody acting um, suspicious around the bank or anything. It is now almost midnight. Gentlemen, this message comes to whoever is the first one I see as I'm like... I'm afraid I'm falling, or Jen, I'm sorry, lads and lasses, I'm falling asleep. I'm not sure there's much profit to continuing this little adventure in the evening. Perhaps find some rest and check out the Goblin Town in the morning. Fair enough. Indeed. Uh, I suppose we find lodging for the night. Okay. Where do you guys want to go? I gave you a list of the, the ends. Yeah, I'm kind of fond of the tick and sword myself. Do you like those little blood-sucking creatures? No, but I like the idea of a mid-range where you would get... What was the high-end high, high end one? King's... The King's Inn, but... King's Inn? So, I think... I'll have to look at the rules on this. So because of my... And I still... It's still only once per hour, by the way. I'm not arguing that. But I think that my casting of it doesn't require... I can cast it at will. So I don't know that it requires the verbal, because that's my ability, is to cast it at will. So... I do... So it does still have the hour... Old Pathfinder had rules like that. Yeah. Like innate uh, magical right. abilities didn't actually require verbal right. semantics. I don't think that's, and I think that's what it is. Though, it still has the hour, the, like only once per hour, but. Unless but you find something to the contrary, if the, if the spell says it's a verbal component, it has it. Unless you find something that says otherwise. Because I know, like, I cast some of my spells innately and I still have to do everything normal with them. Mm. They're still casting a spell, it just means you can use it. Right. So let's see if we can find this tick and sword. Perhaps travel openly now, so we don't... And it at very least doesn't use up spells. No, that's the big advantage of it. It's not one of your cantrip slots. Or... Right. Because, yeah, I have two cantrips that are innate. Because <laughs> it was fun. Yep. And yeah, so I think we travel openly to find this tick and sword and just claim that we're newly arrived and looking for the bed if the guards ask us any questions. These dreadfully confusing artisanal streets 
are everything is at a right angle. I just don't understand how uh -huh. to navigate this place. So yeah, if that's the goal is to find this Tikken sword place. You guys get to the ticking sword, and uh, you roll in, and they inform you that lodging for the evening is one silver piece for a room that will accommodate all of you. For two silver pieces, they throw in breakfast for everybody. Two silver it is. Two silver would be wonderful. If you're willing. Thank you, my friend. How much do you need from me? Uh, it appears that Al here has taken care of us for the evening. Sorry. Indeed. Right. We'll spread it around. I don't think that'll be a big issue for us. Although I notice that Rin seems to be avoiding paying at all costs. <laughs> He's just been smooching off everybody. We have better uses for our money. I don't know if they are yet. <laughs> 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 but there's better ones. Whatever it is. And yeah, stagger up to the room. The night passes uneventfully. Tuck everybody in, make sure you're all well rested, and then... Yep, you guys pass Remember, eventually. And lasts Next morning night, so you guys wake up. It's around 8 in the morning or something like that. You get your breakfast and all that kind of stuff. It's The, the lodging was very nice, by the way. Um, there were there were two bunk beds in that room, so uh, somebody had to share. Um, but mostly it was pretty nice. Blue and I, some of you are not unwilling, can probably both sleep comfortably in a bed. I was going to say, you're going to sleep with your wife? Well, that's up to <laughs> I mean, we could, we could, uh, The three of us could share a bed. And oh, we could God. have it be oh, a tiny person. I need, person a, I need a room. room. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. Do you want to be the the, the white I creamy filling in the middle? Oh, an adventuring party. Oh, sure. We just oh, all have sex with each other. I don't know that my wife would approve. <laughs> All right. If you're interested in sharing a bed, I'm fine with it. I'll take a bed alone. But this is the strangest world man I've ever been. If you're not interested in sharing a bed, you and I could share a bed without even getting close to each other. No, we're not the kind of spouses that share a bed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and if it bothers you, then we can, you know. In the morning, in the morning, yes. your guys's meal is very pleasant, much better than those bowls and plates you had at the last place. Um, the ale is here. quite good. The wine is quite good as well. This is a very nice establishment. Can we not stay here? Well, this is my, not the moment, but this is where I'm thinking we will stay. And actually, I want to ask, is there any kind of a discount for longer-term lodging should we need it? We're new in town, and perhaps we'll be needing something longer than single nights. Uh, yeah, I think you probably work out an arrangement for you. So generally, it's a silver piece a night, um, seven silver pieces a week. So they're thinking maybe five silver pieces will lock in a Can week. Can I use diplomacy to bargain with them? I mean, what are you lacking or what do you need help with? I don't know, but if I can get better. Mm, they don't necessarily have any sorts of things like that to offer at the moment. I mean, okay. I'm willing to do that. And I don't know that we're going to take it, so obviously if the rooms have become unavailable, but okay. we, we'll be, we're seeing where we're going tonight. We have a little traveling to do, but I'm hoping to be back, and if so, yeah. we'll take it So the best they can do is five silver pieces. Excellent, and Any that's attempts to negotiate them down is not working, and okay. she basically just says, look it. There's high demand. Absolutely. Somebody's going to fill the room up, so if you don't want to pay it, you don't have to. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Do we want to get the room locked now, or do we want to see if we come back tonight? Do it. If we can, let's lock the room in for one the next week, then, for the five. Okay. Silver. All right. And does that include food? Uh, no, that's just the I lodging. Figured. That's just the lodging. So. Blue, could I get some help with this one? Yeah, how much do you need? Uh, two silver. And another five silver for breakfast. Yes, would that be acceptable then? Five more silver for breakfast for all of us at the time, too? Absolutely. You need you two that? silver? Or? Just two more, and then okay. if some you handle the five. I throw the five in. So basically, a gold piece will get us a week's lodging. I did that thing where I'm like reaching for money, and then, oh, it's all taken care of. Oh, it's <laughs> convenient. <laughs> Grab it for your wallet. Like, oh, <laughs> you all got it? Okay. Yeah. Well, Clearly, I wear other, the pops There's other ways to pay for things. Uh, when we get into the, square, the skirmish, I uh, fully expect you to be standing in the front. It's okay. Uh, I make I, all the I money for the, for the for their family. Now. So, Al, um, given your the rest of really yeah. could you perhaps relieve our friend Rin of some of his cash should we decide we need to? <laughs> you have the thief battle. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking the next time we need to pay for something, he might want. How much do you have left? Now I'm unconsciously money. donate. No, I have three and a half. <laughs> uh, I'm not worried about it. I'm honestly not worried. About okay, it. I'm not. I'm just curious. All right, so let's. We're gonna head off to the. I'm sorry, I should remember the town. The town. 
Gleck Hollow. Gleck Hollow. I have one right now. We're going to head to Gleck Hollow and yep. see what we can good. learn. Since I don't feel like we learned anything here or can, at this moment. Uh, indeed, we did. Well, we have learned things. I don't feel that we're going to learn more by hanging out in town, I guess that's yeah. why. It appears that the goblins may be responsible for the kidnapping. Well, that's... I like to see things linked together. But on the other hand, we do know that typically city goblins are not, like, all thieves. So we'll want to mm -hmm. see if we can find a, a relationship there. And, and everybody that you've talked to, and it's been a few people now in Frostmantle, have all spoken positively about the goblins of Black Hollow. And the other side of it is in the dark to the uninitiated, whether they recognize a halfling or a well, goblin. that's what I was going to say. It's like, it's So we want to keep that in mind, let's say. Not saying we want to blame one or the other, but keep in mind that there is a halfling community that given how they've been treated, I suspect they are as larcenous as they may have been indicated because, well, if I was constantly called a thief, I might become Just, one Just uh, keep your eyes out for anyone wearing a garb with a particular tear of, say, this shape. Hmm? Excellent. So now we know what the both the pad the cloth looks like and about the size of the tail. Mm -hmm. All right. So heading to Gleck Hollow. I still think heading to Gleck mm -hmm. Hollow is our next logical step. Yep. I've got to get the speech patterns down. I keep talking like my elf, and he's not supposed to use these you know high words and such. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here you're blowing, sitting next to me. I keep blowing doing, my speech pattern horribly, and I'm where I'm doing. Uh, well, you're doing it the way you should be, and I'm soft spoken. Yeah, he's supposed to be soft spoken, but he's supposed to be more you know common speech, and I cannot, for whatever reason, lock it in today. So you guys travel, arrive at Gleck Hollow around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to be, I'm going to keep my hood up, and I'm, I've never really had much experience with other goblins, so. Okay. I'm openly traveling, chatting, playing music. Yeah. It's a pretty chilly day out, and there's a wind that's picking across, and there are clouds off in the distance that promise probably at least a cold rain, perhaps a snow, but eh, probably cold rain about this time. And as you come up, uh, this is a very small village. Uh, the buildings are well-crafted stone and wood structures, and it looks like they're, they're not living in poverty by any means. Um, they're not like super rich either, but it's just a very nice, well-established, small community. Um, maybe a few dozen buildings total, um, quite small. And there are goblins walking all about. Um, you see a couple adventuring groups as well, um, traveling through town. Is there an obvious uh, inn or anything like that? Signage? Uh, yeah, you, you head into the center of the Black Hollow Square, and it looks like there are, in fact, three businesses in town. Um, one of them, the sign reads, The Wayward, Tam the Wayward Tankard. And by the looks of it and the sounds and the smell of ale, it is a tavern. There is a building called Old Nana's. It is a three-story building. Um, not quite sure what it is, but there is a there is a on the sign there is a bed. <clears throat> and then it's an old nana's. Are there any like what was the name of the first place? The Wayward Tankard. What was the third place? You said there were three? The third place is called Chetin's Arduous Arms. Is this a... So there's goblins here. Mm -hmm. Is it primarily merchants? Are there like goblin families? Are there like oh, kids? Oh, absolutely. There are families. You see some families and small kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there... Uh, you said this isn't like a run-down place, but... Are there any that are maybe noticeably poorer than others, or in, in sure? There are some that look a little bit more shoddily dressed. Than so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find one of those, like a family that has a kid or two or whatever, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna just kind of gently approach and like go down to one knee, and I'm gonna do like coin tricks with like a copper piece to try to like entertain the kid. Okay. So at first you do this and the mother kind of pulls her two children closer to her and looks at you suspiciously mm -hmm. and then you start doing coin tricks um so this was probably like thievery maybe it's usual performance performance, performance? yeah let's do uh, performance <laughs> well okay. are you gonna okay. be way hold worse hold on, than hold, this on, hold, on, hold on a second this is a dexterity thing performance is a charisma right yeah, yeah. thievery the, the the modifiers on thievery make sense go ahead okay oh palm and object <laughs> that's, that's are you uh yeah yeah let's do that hmm? 
Pullman Are you going to be juggling be some more? It's more just like rolling coins around my fingers. I'll throw kind of one stuff. in there and I'll get next to you and I'll kneel down to the kids and the mother and I'll just say, it's all right, ma'am. He's just going to show you a little trick in Goblin. Okay. And I'll pull back my hood. Uh, so 24. 24? Oh, yeah, you're doing some amazing stuff. <clears throat> the kids start giggling and smiling and the mom appears to relax a little bit. And smiles at you. Okay, and then I'll flip, when I kind of finish, I'll flip, you know, what the, the one copper, I'll sort of flip it at one of the kids, and then I'll flip a second one at the other kid, and then I'll flip a silver piece at the mom. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the kids grab it, the mom grabs it, and she looks at you and says, I, I don't know if I can accept this. What, what do you... What? She, she's stuttering a little bit. You can see on the look of her face, she thinks this means you expect something of her. Uh, he's, got, he's been known to sleep with Goblin. Once <laughs> 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 <It's true. laughs> uh, you go green, I, I go <laughs> blue. I, I swear, blue, yeah, once yeah, you go blue, yeah. Blue, yeah. yeah, I've got a very weird specific blue fetish. So, once you go you know, blue, green is true. Um, yeah, yeah. I just kind of stand up and do like a placating gesture, once like you go no blue, strings attached. If you only knew. Uh, and then I sort of just move to walk on. She thanks you and still seems a little bit awkward. That, that doesn't happen very often. That's something just fix her money. Okay. Okay. And then you walk off. Oh, I guess how open do we wish we want to be here while we... To the tavern, we'll down. pretend to be adventurers. Yes, I'm but I mean... Pretend to be adventurers. Pretend? I don't think it's much of a pretend. It's going to be a weird campaign if we're faking it the whole time. <laughs> I'm just more thinking, <laughs> hey, make it until you make it, right? Fake it till you make it. Obviously, looking for this pattern of cloth that he has or anyone looking like they've got that type of cloth on, especially if it looks torn. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna hold, hold on a second. He's saying something. Well, he has that cloth, and we're, so we're kind of keeping an eye out for anyone else wearing that. Okay. That type of cloth, that one that would look like it's part of that, especially uh -huh. a torn one. But okay, give me a perception check as you're looking around. Can I get a piece 24. of that cloth from you? What is it? Twenty-four. Uh, we okay. needed to identify the. So you look just a piece. A little. I'll give you some screen. Okay. You look around and just the people that are like, walking through there and stuff, you don't see anybody else that's wearing that particular type of cloth. Now, lots of the goblins are wearing scarves. It's pretty cold out, right? But nobody's wearing that particular cut. So it may pattern. be worth asking around about that cut. It makes us more likely to have been recognized. But without that, I don't know how we're going to investigate. I mean, that's your about How? So. I mean, did you roll really high or? 24. Okay, so. How? Welcoming is this town of goblins to outsiders, people who are not goblins. They're, they've all seemed very welcoming so far. Okay. Nobody has cast you any nasty looks or anything. Okay. I'm gonna ask the ma, the the mother of the two kids, with a, a little piece of that fabric. I was like, do you know any seamstresses or weavers who would have the skill to make this? To, to make this scarf material? So to, to make that scarf like that? Yes. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think we have any patterns like that in town. Can I... Does it seem like... <laughs> it's a perception check to sense motive. Yeah, perception check to see if, like, giving her a little bit more coinage will help it. Help okay. give up more Turn information. Yeah. You're trying to figure. You're trying to figure out if more coinage will help the situation. Is she Correct. lying to us? Does yeah. she look? Well, like not lying, just hesitant. hesitant. You got to give me a tiny bit of space, man. You're literally putting your feet oh, over oh, shoot, in front I'm of me. Oh shoot! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got to give me a little bit of space, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> How about my feet, Kevin? Uh, yeah, thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, it is. So supposed to be putting your feet over on his right. side. Right. Yeah, yeah. Play, put is you she, in him. That's your wife. Or is you're she, his wife. Yeah. Is she, is, does she truly not swap. know, or is she hesitant to say anything? Is more okay. the question I'm asking. That makes more sense. And that was a 13. Okay. So, with a 13, you get the feeling that she is hesitant to say anything. Okay. All right. Um... I don't think she's probably who we should be talking to. With uh, yeah, with Underworld lore, would I be able to though. know what a goblin thieves guild looks like? Goblin she, 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 she's a goblin mom. Is she hesitant? Is she hesitant? Can you just I'm find them everywhere you go? Like, they're everywhere. Oh, they're not hidden or anything. No, they're everywhere. everywhere. Right no, they're everywhere. <laughs> I think so so yeah, I you probably you want to you want to know if you 
specifically know what a Goblin Thieves Guild looks like. And like, how would I approach one? <laughs> so, go yeah. Thieves Guilds probably can come in a wide variety of flavors. Sure. Yeah. If you want to actually see if there are clues or hints that a Thieves Guild might be operating right here, yes. that's probably something happens, you should try to do. Okay. So, you go ahead. Okay. We're attacked by a dragon. Uh, He's growling. 15. A 15. So, just casually from what you've been able to see so far, not having spent any information actually digging into it, any times digging into it, you don't see any obvious like clues that there was a thieves guild operating here. Okay. So I don't. I mean, don't know exactly the path, but let's uh stay for the night. I mean, yeah. we are heading to uh, Norden Hyman Hold, um, and uh, see what we see. I mean, I would like to sub as subtly as Sandy would know that I'm not sure I'm good at subtle. Gather information about this cloth, this pattern, and see if I can get any hints from talking to people about where it might have come from or if there's a specific group that would use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a couple hours, it's an hour for you. It's an hour for me just because this is right. what I do hang out in bars and talk to people. Okay, so um, yeah, the, the Wayward Tankard is uh, a tavern mm -hmm. and there are adventurers there, there are some goblins there as well. And you begin going around and trying to gather information on this. Trying to imply that we're looking for a goblin who wore this pattern at one time. Okay. You you spend an hour doing that. Uh, make your gather information check, please. Twenty two. Twenty two. You you manage to get um, one of the goblins to talk. Most of the goblins that you talked to were not forthcoming with information. You got the feeling that many of them recognized it, right. but, but it they didn't want to say anything. But one of them that you found at the tavern, who was deep in getting drink, drunk enough, deep in drink, was like. <laughs> That's the newbies! The newbies in town! They all wear scarves like that! Yeah. Where would I find these newbies? That's an interesting thing. And he, he goes on, right. slurred speech and everything, and describes where you can find their house. And tells you that they are new in town, you know, they have these weird customs and things, they dress, they dress and they got, one of, a couple of them have scarves like that, you know, and he, they're from out of town. Can you I find out? There? If you want to be. I yeah. mean, um, he's not being subtle. Well, being yeah. subtle about the questioning, but he's wandering like he always does in bars and just, you know, why probably you finds the wrong one. Why is everybody scared of them? Scared of them? Nobody's scared of them! Someone will turn on their own kind. There you go! These adventuring types come in here and you think you want to squish us all. So you start asking about any of us and we can protect... Oh, shoot. Is there, no, is there no, don't a, worry, I'm no bigger than you are. I certainly would not be squishing anything. Is there a no, no. leader? Our, our fearless leader uh, is a goblin herself, so... <laughs> is there like a leader to this town or a council or ah, something like that? Fennec Neil Neil doesn't stab her. We should talk to him. Neil Neil Needle Stabber. Fedric Needle Stabber. No, Fennec Fennec. Fennec Needle Stabber. Frederick, Frederick, Fennec O'Dare. Something like that. He said seven different names. Yeah. He's intentionally being. Fedic Neil Stabber. Close knee, knee Stabber. The mayor. Where would we find your mayor? Do you have a town center? Uh, Do you have a house? He's in Glock Hollow. That's a good place to be. Huh. It's not a big place. I'm sure we can find him. The, can't miss him. Big hobgoblin. Oh, wonderful. Muffins. So. Enjoy your ale, my friend. I'm very. Thank you so much. I'm out. I, there's one right in front of you. I'll give him another one out. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you weren't paying attention, my friend. It's right there. I'm sure there's three or four of them there. <laughs> so, do you hook him up with enough to make him pass out? <laughs> so, I think. Given that he's already drunk, a couple more probably would. What we done. should do is we should talk to this Fenric or Fennec or whatever. Whatever his real name is. Um, and. We should try to use the politics of the situation to get them to handle, to get them to sanction us doing anything about it. Right. And so what I mean is like, everyone in the town, Frost, whatever, that we were just in, speaks highly of this group of people. But now there's, now there's a new, new group, group that is trouble. tainting their reputation. Exactly. And they don't want that to happen. I think we're not exactly the same page. Rin, I have do to we agree do we want to see about if maybe me kind of for this specific situation, me kind of taking the lead might help out a little bit, being as that 
I'm a goblin. There's less of an outsider. There are goblins. Like, yeah, I'm less of a... I just know you a... said you were more than as comfortable. Yeah, all I'm saying so. is we shouldn't just directly I'm not, confront I... this group. We should go to well, the not, leadership. It's or... not that I'm uncomfortable around other goblins. I just haven't been around a lot of them. I'm, I'm uh, very happy with you taking the lead, and I agree with well, you. Well, like, should. if you want to get into a good old-fashioned dwarven bar brawl, I'm all down for that. No. <laughs> the, the thing is, is I think his character is very tuned to the diplomatic. Um, whereas, his? Yeah, I'm yeah. not so diplomatic. You're um, an investigator. Yeah, I'm an investigator. I'm not an investigator. I, mean, I have I, a I decent have, diplomacy, and too. I plus three to my diplomacy, largely because I ran out of things to put skill points in. I, I did my Enjoy society and diplomacy a little bit higher as the aspect of of being a business person and, and needing those social skills to... No, I'm good with you taking the lead. I just think this, I agree with you that trying to do as law and order as we can, especially knowing this is a new yeah. group that yeah, is... Go through the leadership of the town. Don't just go right. squash a group of guys. It's going to disrupt no. the... Yeah, disrupt the relationship between here and, and Frosthaven. Let's so. talk to uh, Fish... Fish did? Let's go see if we can find. <laughs> what, time, what time is it again? Sorry. Uh, it's 12 it's hours two, after the morning. It's 2.15 in the afternoon. In the afternoon, okay. So it's a good time to talk to him and find out. Yeah, yeah it, would, it would be a good time right now if we went directly there. I think that's the best plan. Just to go right in, let's see what he says. Because, I, again, I get the impression like you do that these guys want to maintain good relations with uh, Frost Hollow. I'm just I'll get the names gonna down. re-verify with the barkeep. Uh, I'm gonna slide over a, 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 a silver piece to the barkeep and uh, just to re-verify that the directions we were given to the mayor's home are, are correct and they weren't like mixed up in a haze of alcohol. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Make uh, sure we know where we're going. Verifies. That's right. Okay. I'm going to treat and go to the bathroom quickly, but yeah, I will follow along happily with them. To so we've identified them. where this group of goblins. Okay, that where this pattern, they're all new they're, to they're town. They're a new, new to town. Know. We're going to the mayor to talk to him about it. Yep. Going to the mayor? Uh -huh. To try to officially sanction us being able to do anything about it. To burn the house down. Uh, we don't want to just come in and squash goblins and we're thinking create that the bad guards relations. might not. Yep, yeah. yep. Okay. All right, so you guys go to the mayor's house. And um, the mayor is out there working in his garden when you come up. He's probably trying to get it ready for planting and stuff. And he looks up and it's hobgoblin male. Looks to be in pretty good condition. Um, he knows how to handle himself. Looks over. Yeah, what can I help you with? Mm. Uh, no one starts <clears throat> talking and diplomatizing and, <laughs> and... Well, we're letting you take the lead. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. we are. To, yeah. That's true. That's true. So, we've come to town because from Frostmantle, right? Yeah. And we are investigating a person or persons who wear this specific color of scarf and I hand him a little piece of the greater larger piece of the scarf that mm -hmm. I got from him mm -hmm. and uh, just why, about, why are they being investigated so specifically there's a missing person uh, uh, particularly uh, the owner of the naughty hand has gone missing some week ago within her place we found this particular material caught on a nail or splinter, which is uh, has led us here. I see. And we have identified it uh, to some new arrivals in your town. Mm -hmm. And these new arrivals are currently located in the house down the way. They've also been spotted. Potential, uh, potentially. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly have been spotted. Uh, scoping around uh, particular sites of value. Such as? <clears throat> oh, banks and other... Do you know who <clears throat> this group that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. They came in a few weeks ago. New arrivals. Are they all He's goblins? Little stri mm -hmm. No. No. 
one of them was, I'm pretty sure one of them is a, a hobgoblin or a bugbear, if I remember correctly. Um, there was a larger one of them, or certainly not a goblin, but most of them were goblins. And they came in a few weeks ago, and we welcomed them, of course, into our town. We didn't expect anything, but they were dressed rather oddly, like they're from a, they're not from the Mar Holds for sure from the garb, I would presume. I don't know exactly where, there are many communities across Corvair, of course, but they were from somewhere I'm not familiar with at all, I've not heard of. They, they spoke with an odd accent as well. A common and goblin, of course, they both spoke. They were not uneducated, but it was odd at least, but that belongs to them. In, so the authorities of Frostmantle then suspect them for wrongdoing. Hmm. Not exactly. We are adventurers, mm -hmm. uh, and we are currently working on behalf of the owners of the uh, hand, of the naughty hand, or the, the, the patrons of the, uh, not the patrons, the workers of the naughty hand, to bring back their, their owner. Uh, and so we have been searching for her, mm -hmm. and what, what we are doing here is merely asking your permission for us to investigate that house, uh, possibly with your aid. How, how has their, have they caused any trouble in town here for you? No, no trouble really. They keep to themselves. They haven't mingled a whole lot. Um, they seem to keep odd hours, sometimes up late at night, sleeping in late. Um, very peculiar folk, but they're from out of town, from far off lands. I, I don't want to fault them, their strange habits or anything. Um, if they are guilty of wrongdoing, then I certainly wouldn't want to jeopardize the relations between Black Hollow and Frostmantle. <coughs> um, I don't see any harm in investigating, although I would rather avoid any hasty, aggressive actions unless... Indeed. The situation warrants it, and it, of course, if it does, and it comes to that, let's presume we had some bad actors here, then we will, of course, require evidence um, of whatever it is they're up to before... I don't want to presume that any band of adventurers is just want to go through and kill everything in a place without asking any questions, but it does happen from time to time. I think just, our, our coming to you first should be indication that that is not what we are I doing. completely agree, and I do appreciate that. I just wanted to throw it out there because there are some that get a little bloodlust, and the next thing you know, an entire house has been gutted and destroyed and burned to the ground, and, and they have nothing but hearsay to justify <laughs> their actions. So you break <laughs> up like, ooh, yeah. I was <laughs> going to ask about collateral damage, so you want us to avoid it. At all costs. Indeed. We should treat this as a criminal matter and do our due diligence to inquire, simply inquire with them about uh, the particular actions. Maybe have them invite us in for a lookabout. And maybe they will. And we'll, we'll just go on our way. Maybe find out what they, they like, don't. if they need certain, like, particular skills that make someone like me dangerous to... Others. But if we happen by the window and see people tied to dungeon torture equipment, well, that's a different story. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to officially grant you the right to investigate their premises. Okay, a thorough inspection. Right? I'll make it official. I'll give you papers. Thank right? you. you can, it'll allow you entrance to go and investigate. We, we don't exactly have police force here in the town, right? We mostly just take care of ourselves, and we rely on adventurers, like like yourselves, to help us mm -hmm. against nefarious folk. Um, so yes, I'll drop you a, a little warrant to investigate the I was born to be a deputy. That is more than we could have expected and highly appreciated. Indeed. Yes, of course. Indeed. I did. What he said. I do appreciate your can. coming to me first. Most adventurers break down doors and ask questions later. And and then flee from the law and kill the law and do other horrible things. So no. it's quite <laughs> refreshing, really actually. This is a show we can law to avoid abiding fine. party. <laughs> we shall attempt to avoid violence unless we go boom. If we're in a town that we're trying to stay in for an, an entire campaign, I'm not want to mess up our relationships here. 
All right, so he goes and gets you a little write-up. It's got his little signet seal on it and everything, and it's official. You have right. a little warrant, and get, it grants you the right to access their property to inspect it. All right. So the question is, do we just, after we've left, thank you again, mm -hmm. uh, Lord Mayor, was he a mayor? Um, <laughs> yes, he is the mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, good mayor, and do definitely appreciate your assistance. Absolutely. Uh, I, l I look forward to hearing the results yes, of your inquiry. Okay. We shall gather as much as we can without violence, okay. other than to defend ourselves or others should it be necessary. Excellent. Right. So do we just use this as a bust-in and investigate? I'm, mm, let's I'm go. okay with that. Should we, we try to we sneak? Knock on the door. I mean, well, yes, yeah, well, that's my point. <laughs> we knock on the door and say, we have a warrant, we're coming in. No, do, we, well, do we have any other they, reconnaissance? He did, he, he did say that they kept odd hours. So if we go now, we're probably going to be interrupting them in the middle of their sleeping time. Which that's, probably that's, wouldn't... That's good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that I'm means they didn't have time to hide anything or do and like and if we are very insistent about just going through the door because we have the warrant, right? If we're very insistent and and, and just kind of barge into their house, it will either trigger a, a situation, uh, or you know allow us to verify that they are. In the downside, we give up the opportunity for a sneaky approach, but we also have the chance to surprise them and. Yeah. Potentially find out what's going on. Yeah. Even though we're knocking on the front door, we're still going to go in very yeah. quickly. If we do that, we're going in, busting in and looking, as opposed to sending yeah, our sneaky members to look around. If they don't answer the door, we kick it in. Um, well. Do we have any reconnaissance? <laughs> I mean, you guys are sneaky. I have no way. I mean, I'm not. I'm no familiar. Some sneaky, but I know. I I can get a familiar. And what are sure. you? I'm a rogue. rogue. I'm a rogue, but okay. I'm an ancient elf who has a wizard oh, okay. archetype. Wizard. wizard archetype. Gotcha. With wizard dedication. <laughs> you can if you're an ancient elf. That's their special power. One of the cool I, things they can do. I traded it for dark vision. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm perfectly cool <laughs> with that. Like I said, the only <laughs> other option, first of all, we need to see the house. But the only other option is have some of us try to sneak in first. Yeah. Uh, and then pull the warrant if it becomes split noticed. the party back door. Mm. Make sure nobody gets out. If we do, I think we're gonna have. To I can go back, or just let's case the house. And I'm, see if I'm a back door. very confident that I am probably the best person solo. Okay. The only other advantage having one of us with you is we have the message skill spell. Oh, That's see. true. That would allow. I think we have to be able to see each other. Though, but so. I can't. This isn't going to be a big house. Yeah, right. That's not true. Really we're really yelling at the business. front door. Yeah. Like, they're going out the back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, we, when we see the house, we can change that plan. But it, with how tiny he described this village as being, I can't imagine they're sprawling. Right. Right. You know. You know. At first, I thought this was a small, quaint town, but Dracula's castle being just right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a tiny village with a large, right. large stone. Dracula's castle yeah. is now on top of the Belmont Ancient Library, mm -hmm. the Belmont Family Library. All right, so what's the plan? So the first thing we do is look at the house where they're at, right. without being obvious, hopefully, Kate, that we're casing it, and just get a picture of the house, and then we'll... Gonna kind of partly make our decision. They will probably just head in with the warrant and yeah. do a surprise inspection as quickly and aggressively as we can. But first, we want to see the house to make sure there aren't like twelve exits or something. Yeah, and the huge ballista, automatic ballista at yeah. the top. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's an actual castle, not a house to built with. Didn't we like go up to a roof or something, and then we got up on like the top of a tower, and then all of a sudden something came out of the ground and just was like shooting missiles. That was like, in. Well, that happened at least in the one one shot we did with the guest GM when we were here. Mm. They had the ballistas on the yeah, tower. Ed, Ed, there did we go. It, yeah. With the ballistas on the tower that shot us full of holes. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like fun. It was unique. All right, so. was not so yep. good at finding traps. <clears throat> you guys are going to check out the house? First yeah. thing is just to get a look at it. How big is it? How many entrances does it have? Doors, windows. You know, and then from there, we'll make a final, but our kind of thought is busting with the warrant and well, some it is small because it is a tiny town, but <clears throat> that, if it's a large house... But if it turns out to be a giant castle, you know, <clears throat> with turrets and ballista and a thousand guards, it's going to change the plan a little bit. Yep. And it's got a complete reverse of the castle above the castle. <laughs> or we just light it on fire and burn it down. Yeah. An upside down version, just above it. We'll just start a fire. 
Symphony of the Night, and my favorite I, game of I all time. No idea the non-lethal damage of this. I know certain weapons. Oh, are I don't know. Yeah. If you ever you, play the monk can be non -lethal. Symphony of the Night for PlayStation. So this is the best game that I've ever made. This is the basic uh, shape and structure of the house. There is a door. So it's tiny. Right there. It's fairly tiny. Uh, it's probably like about 30 feet by 45 feet or so. Okay. Is it one story or? <clears throat> one story house. <clears throat> Only one door? One door. Okay. Does there appear to be murder holes on the entranceway leading to the door? Murder holes. Yeah, murder holes. Yeah. Murder holes. I will say, should the opportunity arise, taking at least one of them alive would serve us well if we wind up in a fight, and you're probably best suited to do that. Uh, yeah, I don't really kill. So. Well, you can or not. You have the option being a monk. So, because your weapons, unless you're different than, it, than the other monks I've seen, are, are innately non lethal. Right. But you can choose to make them lethal or not. So, one or more of them alive would be good, because most of us don't really have that option very easily. So, there are a bunch of windows marked by the, the blue little line. Well, we are heading in the day about 2, 3 o'clock, I, I, I think. Two, yep, 2.30. Um, we're hoping that they would be mostly asleep because they are night owls. That's the whole thing, right? So we're just going to go up to the door in a rapid fashion. That is the hope. So we're just going to go in, go straight in, not even have to start looking at the windows? Knock on the door and okay. allow them a chance to answer the door like five seconds before we kick it in. Do you all want to keep back a little bit and I'll knock on the door? We're delivering a warrant. I don't think it matters who knocks on the door. Uh, yeah. But I do not want to be right up near the door. I'm going to be back at least 10 feet. I'm squishy and not wanting to be in a melee fight. So you know all that oh, gold that we paid for all of your things? <laughs> I'm thinking is, the two of you are our best front line. Yeah, I'll knock. Like, I'm happy to be there with him, man. Yeah. And you've got the warrant. Dad, dad can knock. Dad can knock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, you knock on the door. After a few moments, you hear a voice. Hello? Is it in common or goblin? Uh, goblin. Uh, yeah, hello? <laughs> uh, no, we have a warrant. We're going in. The door opens up just a little bit. I oh. grab it, shove I, it open. I, 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 I stick my, I just I right stick there, my I grab foot it. in the crack and hold the... the but it doesn't matter, I'm shoving it open. Yeah. All right, you, or, or it's pushing the door yeah. open. You shove the door open, and I do. the goblin steps back aside. He's wearing a cooking apron. Yep. What? What's the meaning of this? You got the warrant, dude. I have it. Yeah, I gave it to you. Sure. Yeah. Right. Well, he's speaking goblin. I can't understand him. Basically, so, speaks. I'll hold up a piece of paper that he definitely can't read, <laughs> and <laughs> I'll say he, we're here to investigate on behalf of the mayor. And he starts speaking in common at this point. There you go. Investigate. Investigate. What? Uh, what? Why? Not What's having to be right, wearing the right clothes, is he? He does have one of those scarves on. Uh. We have evidence that someone in this house may have committed a crime. Go now, don't we? Yeah, crime? I, I'm, yeah, like if you're pushing no, I'm house, going in. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go in. in. I'll I'll go go in. We're not being polite about entering. No, absolutely not being pushing polite. I'm pushing right in. Yeah. Whoa! He's, he's moving back. He's wiping his dirty hands off on his yeah. apron. There's another goblet you can see in there in the kitchen as well. So... Make this a pigeon larger. So I can assure you, your best solution is to cooperate with us. We need to investigate, find You're out what's going on. Only a moment. And as soon as we're done, we will leave you on your way. Sorry for any disturbance, but please keep your hands where we can see them and stay out in the open. Who else is in the house? And yes, talking fast and talking officially-ish from behind everyone, because I'm not getting shot first. <clears throat> Oh, do I get that cool thing that 5e had where you get to throw projectiles back? No, I don't. I don't think you do. I missile deflection? There it is. You get some kind is. of missile deflection. It's probably like it's a feat. Back. It's a, yeah, it's a feat that uh, a monk feet. And I think you might get it eventually. What you can it, back and I think it's absolutely horrible. Well, the other one we kind of want to see. Oh, there's deflect area. All right, so this is the rough layout. As you guys come in the front door, this area here is clearly a kitchen, living room combo. Um... It has, there is a sofa against the far wall. Uh, you can see there's a long table with six chairs in that area as well. Um, there's counters and an oven. And one goblin you just kind of push to shoulder your way past, mostly standing there. Yep. And there's another one off into the kitchen who's, they're clearly in the middle of preparing a meal. Um, it doesn't smell half bad, actually. Does it happen to smell like pork? Does it smell like pork? 
He's trying like to fire for eating people. Long pork. Long, long pork. pork. <laughs> Give me a perception check. Uh, 24? It smells like sheep. Sheep. Mutton. Mutton. And if I can get to the goblin they shoved past as they get the big guys and scary ones get moving in. You guys are all moving in now. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to try to get to him. Look, I know this is inconvenient. I'm sorry we have to do this, but there could be a person in danger. The best thing you can do is cooperate. Let us see the premises. I'm going to go here. right to the right there. There's a door. Mm -hmm. eh? I'm assuming you guys can spread yeah. out and check out the house yeah. while I try to keep this guy kind of confused. I don't have a dude right now. Oh, well. Who else is in the house? We need to know everyone here. It's safest for all of us and so nobody gets hurt. Yes, number of jaguars and candy yeah, corners, please. Yeah. I don't have a thing. Well, there's nobody else here. It's, it's just the two of us. Oh, good. Then I want you to stay right here with me. Perception My friends check. will check the house and uh, we'll be moving on. Sense yeah. motive? Can I use Go perception ahead. to sense motive? Yeah, well, just one of you with a plus uh, two in your modifier. Uh, 16. A 16? Um, what's your perception? Plus six. He's hiding something. Hmm. Hiding something. All right, so I'm going to kind of let Spazuma let you guys do most well, of the spreading out. He has said he wants to go to this I'm going to check that remote. Yeah, I don't know about figure in there. Um, All right, so you go over that yep, door. I do. Open uh, that door up. Oh. Somebody watching the door? The, the main I'll exit. I'll say I was going to say you were near the exit. I thought. Why don't, why don't, why don't we get minis on exit. here? Of everybody. Yeah, I don't. Who needs a mini? I don't, I don't have a mini. Yeah. I haven't finished painting mine yet. Yeah, so my intention will be to stay with them. These two guys keep them near me, so hopefully they won't ambush anyone. Not getting you guys too far away since it's a small house, but you guys spread out. I'll stay with them for the moment, oh. and then we'll see what we find. Watch for Trevor, secret Trevor, doors. Anyone? Yeah. What are you, on? human monk? Yeah. Okay. No weapon. I mean, it doesn't really probably matter a whole lot right now, but yeah. Watch for secret doors or anything. Yeah, I, one. One. I need one. We need three, yeah, basically. Need oh, Wait, Kevin who, needs who, one. Who else needs one? I need one. Kevin. Kevin. What do you Michael. Do you again? Orc. Orc. Just grab an orc shaman. Orc something. Clericky, orky. Yeah. Ork, 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 shaman. Ork. Yeah, orc shaman would be good. That's what I look like. So. I'm so excited for how to use one of the the slot from Warhammer. Oh, the yeah. Of the, I've never probably make a character for that, but it'll be an awesome miniature. Oh, yeah. The lizard men? The, in Warhammer, oh, so the lizard men have the slotty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the big frog people that get carried on a plank ones. I thought it'd be a funny mini. Even though so I was thinking really of like the salad from. The Gribbly. Right? Oh, really except Gribbly are but small, the right? E, uh, I think there's a DI. I think, I think it's a DI. But it's yeah, similar, it's, though. It's very similar. Yeah. But they'd just be funny because it's such a funny miniature with the salad. Little, yeah. Everyone carrying it around. I, I pronounce it salad. Salad? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sal Salady. Okay, so this is the, the orc okay. monk, and then this is the goblin. And I'm Ooh. over by that, Place that your, door. Place your minis is where you are actually standing. Yeah. Yeah. Perceptor for yeah. you, yeah, we're we'll be right over that door right there. This yep, right yep, here? Yep, yep. Okay. I'm, 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 so I'm so going to check that back door. I'm staying with you at the exit. All right, and these are the two goblins in there. Ooh. And Blue, if you would check that door, that would probably be for the best. I just finished painting those. I had about a dozen of those little guys. Let me tell you how hard it is to paint minis that small. Wow. Is that the Holy plasmatic crap. bolt green? Uh, it looks like might the be, plasmatic yeah, bolt green. Might be. I don't remember. Yeah, I like that it's, green. It's, it is. Um, Okay, so uh, somebody was going good. in here. All right, yes, let's, I let's am. do that one. That's what you said. Oh, roar. All right, so you look, go into that room and take a look. You can yep. see two goblin sized beds. There is a chest. A dirty rug covers the floor, and there is a potted plant in the corner. Okay, I lift the rug. All right, you move down to lift the rug, and immediately one of the goblins says, Wait, what are you doing? Step back. Runs up, runs up to you, grabs your leg. Wait, the rug is dirty! You'll get disease! <laughs> You'll get disease! Come back! Come back! I hope there's actually a disease spike pit underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to walk over to him and... I mean, I, I ignore him. Unless he's specifically like... He's impeding you. He's like he pulling you, talking on you. He's okay. not letting you really pull it up. So... He's diseased! We have cure disease, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to... Well, I'm pretty strong. I have a 14 strength, right? So I'm going to try to grab him and just lift him up. And then use my other hand to grab the rug. <laughs> okay, so you start to grab him and push yeah. him back, lift up. Yeah. And then he looks at his friend and says, In Goblin. He, and you understand this. Yeah, he says... Knife him! Knife him! And the one you're picking up pulls a butcher knife that he had okay. out his pants. Cool. <laughs> out. <laughs> 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 
All right, let me get this redrawn oh, for, a, for our Is battle. A knife in your hand or your pants? Are you happy to see me? <laughs> Small creature, giant knife. That's what I'm saying, hand. exactly, right? Like, he must have been walking That's like why this. That's like him, <laughs> We thought he had a peg leg. He had yeah, knife exactly, seconds. right. <laughs> Man. I mean, we all knew it was coming. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Especially after I grabbed the rug. I mean, I, I, I wasn't sure there would be well, something under there. As soon as the jam said it's a dirty rug for a while, I guess. Yeah, like, I'm going to move the rug. Yeah. See, under the rug. Under the bed. Yeah. Some Scooby Doo shit here. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the mask off. Yeah. Pull the mask off. Oh. It's like when Jim's like, oh, we really are going to fight. That's really strange. Underneath his mask was flesh and bones. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 sinew was a skeleton all along. <laughs> He's and he would have gotten away team. with it too if it wasn't for you pesky kids. <laughs> Meddling adventurers. Ah, Skeletor! <laughs> it was you! Dang! We got away from True. it. Was mess you pesky adventurers and their, mess and their meddling <laughs> goblin. Orc in this case, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Away with I think anybody who opened the door would have looked at all. Oh, meddling dog! Of course, the rug was obvious. But I'd much rather have him trying to stab you. Yeah, you. I agree. I am definitely the, 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 good, the better target. I mean, I think stabbing the monk is going to prove to be quite difficult. No, I was going to say, he's the, he's the best target. I'm probably the better target, but not as, not as good as the monk. Stabbing the monk is few Actually, uh, my armor class get, can get higher. Well, my armor class is terrible, but I have a lot of hit points. Yeah, when I go to my stance, I'm a 20. But... I have an 18 oh, okay. armor class. I have a, I have a god-awful uh, armor class. I just have a lot of hit points. I can get to a 17 if I get my shield up, but most of the time that's not going to happen. Yeah, my was sense. That's only until next time. I was it that low? Like plus four or something. But what, uh, don't you proficient in lack of armor? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. So, so I that three, three yeah. more to Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, you should at least be have a but, proficiency. And that's fine, point. but I'll be much better. Um, How are you a cleric and you don't have any armor proficiency? He's because a, he's, you're not, you don't, you don't get armor proficiency. He's not the war priest. He's the other one. Correct. Oh. I'll wait till next time. The spellcasting cleric. I'm taking, uh, champion. Squishy I'm taking champion. champion archetype. So, so. My favorite. Squishy three. So I can use all the armors. Here I thought my arm, oh. I was going to be the squishy one. Oh, you, you will be. I'm going to be better. I'm just not there yet. i got to take a couple of levels and I'll get there. Hey, hey Luke, you'll, you'll be happy about yeah, this. One of my players came to me and he's so like, hey, you mind if I level okay, up yeah, the cleric? Like, but that's fine. My wizard but, um, wear armor. And I was like, next level, I'm going to take yeah, the champion well, archetype. I'd plan to all of them. One of my players came to me and said, hey, do you mind if I level the cleric so I can wear armor for my wizard? And I said, yep, no problem. You can do that. Why didn't <laughs> you just, you do? Why, is this fifth edition? Yeah. yeah. Why didn't you just suggest for him to go alchemist or artificer instead, battlesmith or armor? Because, because they get they get proficiency in heavy armor and they don't have to expand to another uh, stat to to break out another stat. They it, Artificer I, is, I, I is I, intelligence. I was an incredible build by accident again. Until he got caught by a vampire. Until he got eaten by a vampire. All right, so this is the goblin as he pulls out the big butcher knife out of okay. his pants. And we're rolling initiative. Select your tokens and roll initiative. <laughs> so initiative is going to be initiative. perception. It's perception, perception, unless perception you have some reason check. to use yeah. a different skill. Um, you're, you're in the middle of that, uh, like athletics right, right. now. Right, I was so going to, right. I if you want to use athletics, you're welcome to. Okay, uh, um, actually my perception's better. Okay, that's fine. Right. Yeah, stealth is definitely the most common one outside of perception. Yep. Yep. But stealth is what I'm going to use. My athletics is good, but, but you got to be in a position to use it. You're standing yeah. in the middle of the room, it's not very useful, but for rogues, it's a really common way to go, and mine is the same, so it doesn't really matter to Unless, me. of course, I was stealing all their shit, and then I can roll debris. <laughs> you're, the, you're the only one that can add your dex mod to your uh, uh, to your sneak attack, or to any damage. Depends right? on the type of uh, rogue I'm, I'm he is. Not that type of rogue. He's the wrong kind of rogue because ah, he's well, an investigator. Well, well. Investigator. Yeah. Mastermind, actually. <laughs> Mastermind. Oh. Fine. I won't. I won't deny that. I really want to figure out how to use diplomacy for mine as often as possible. That's my best plus. But yeah. <laughs> diplomacy, deception, or intimidation. Oh, perception is good for me. Or performance. Perception is not okay. bad. It's only one better, but. Okay, my diploma, I mean, the Rent. plus six. Uh, 14. 14. All right. Blue. 18. 18. Um, this is going to be hard. What'd you get again, Ren? 14. 14. Okay. Who got higher than a 14? What did you get? 22. 23. Well, one at a time. Just show off. 
who are you? I rolled my dog. Sandy. Two. Right. Or San, Santa dog. Alright, and then then he got lower than you? He got one higher. He got one higher. He got one higher than you? I'm a speedy Gonzalez. And then, what'd you get? I also got a 14. I'm plus six. Also got a 14? I also got a 14. Which is So you don't get my enhanced courage, so there. What's the tiebreaker, guys? Because you go first. I don't know. Uh, but everybody is. It's the bond. It's the next tiebreaker. <laughs> what? The the perception modifier itself is. is it? What's the next your guys' tiebreaker? perception modifiers? Zero. Seven. So he would actually go first. Well, no, three. Sorry. Still seven. It counts proficiency. It's not just. Yeah. Yeah. The whole the whole modifier. All right. Um, Al, you're up. All right. Uh, they are at range. I'll draw my bow. That's an action. Fire an arrow. That's an action. Uh, you should the uh, pride the torch. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll be flat footed to me, so he'll down. be at minus two. Why is he flat footed? Because I I'm a rogue. I have rogue. This game. If I go before anybody, uh, they're flat footed to me. Are they? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then I so, know, go before anybody on the round or in uh, combat. In since the beginning of combat. Okay, so at the initial... Okay. Yeah, okay. as soon as they go, they're no longer flat-footed to me Okay. Um, for the rest of the combat. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Um, that's my first first trick. Uh, so, 18. 18? Yep. Uh, where's the armor class? That hits. All right. Uh, it is a sneak attack. I hit him for a spinning dice of mm -hmm. six damage. Six damage? Yep. All right, your arrow slams into this goblin. Would you like to describe this? Uh, goblin. He pulls his hand up and he's waving it frantically while there's an arrow sticking in his chest. And we all just stop paying attention to him because <laughs> we know that he's going to die because it's right in his heart. Uh, and then eventually he collapses, maybe laying down, still swinging the hand. Uh, and I, w oh wait, I can't move. Well, you can, but that's your other action. That it would be my other action. Um, so you don't have line of sight to the other guy. I don't have line of sight to the nope. other guy. And a bunch of people in the way. No, you can't yep. see them. True. Uh, uh, then I will brace the door. Brace the door. Hold my body against the door. This door right here. Yeah, if it opens okay. into the room. All right. All right. Sandal. So as violence breaks out, holy cow! Well, Jack. well, lads, I guess it's time to pick a fight. And I'm going to move first, I'm just getting out here more in the middle of the room. And then I will strum a, I'm not going to bother with my focus, given how fast that guy went down, I will inspire courage by strumming a, a set of chords on my ukulele. So everybody has a plus one to attack, damage, and saves against fear. And I'm going to raise my shield just because i got an action left. All right. And that, that's for until the end of your next turn. Uh, yeah. That they have that. Okay. It's one Excellent. round, so it'll be until yep. my next turn. Excellent. Blue. Uh, I am going to... Remember, it's one little goblin. <laughs> Pull a dart. Kind of I'm not wasting Fireball. Anything. Fireball. Dip it in one of the flasks in one of the little vials that I have, which is my giant centipede venom. Okay. And I'm going <laughs> to... Okay. So you have... You've... Pull the dart. Okay, so the, the loading is pulling the dart out, uh -huh. dipping it, and then the action. Okay, good. Uh -huh. And make your attack roll. Yeah. And yep. he's gonna have a plus two from you. That's a seventeen to hit. Seventeen. Or I'm sorry, seventeen. Twenty-three. I'm sorry. That hits. Twenty-three. Okay. Uh, and what, this what damage? damage is it's a. 4 DC, 17. Yeah. Uh, that's a critical failure, so I'll take double damage. Oh, oh that's stage 2 then. Some, some right? poisons have a specific oh, thing. It's not a basic Oh, let's take a look at the poison control. rules because these are... Yeah, I believe it's stage 2. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a critical fail. It goes directly to stage 2 then, yeah. right? So yes. that ups it to a D8, D8 yeah. and they're flat-footed. Yeah. Why don't you just roll that up? When you know you're not going to do well. And the dart does what, one damage Where's on poison, its own, right? What do you yes. poison rule? Dart does yeah. points. It's yeah, 457, point. 458. They're Thank afflictions. you. They're all afflictions. Okay. If you fail it, you 
after the onset period elapses, you advance to stage one. But On a critical failure, failed. after its onset period, if applicable, you advance to stage two of the affliction and are subjected to that effect instead. Giant centipede venom doesn't have an onset on it from here, it looks like. If it doesn't, then it's immediate. Yeah. Wait, let me see what let me see. If you look at onset, which is right above it, it says if if entry is absent, you gain the effect for the is first this one stage. Of the things that you bought, or you made this, or something. He makes it. Yeah, I make you, it. You that. make it. Okay. Yeah. So he gains for the first stage or the second in a critical failure immediately upon failing the saving throw. If there's no onset listed, it's immediate. It's a one round onset. Yeah. But he goes right to stage two. So next round he's going to stage two. That's so how long it lasts. Is is one round. Oh, really. Yeah, so there's onset. no onset listed, it's automatic. Yeah, like oh, for the oh, arsenic, yeah, that says that it's a 10 minute onset. Right. I see. And that's how, the, so it lasts? Whoa. It, it, it's a ma it lasts a maximum of six rounds. And. Every round, if it's a one round, is the, dur is the interval. Then Where every makes round, another. he makes another save. If right. he, mm -hmm. And that's under stages. If he succeeds, it will go down to a stage one. If he critically succeeds, it will go away. If he fails, it goes up to a stage three. So if he critical fails, it goes to a stage four. Oh, so last six rounds. Correct. He's trying to make you save it. He's trying to move that gets better stage. or gets worse. Correct. Correct. And there's no okay. stay there. It always gets better so, or worse. So it automatically goes to stage two then. Right. Yeah. So okay, roll your damage. You did. I did, yeah. So three, that's four, four, one five. from the blow duck gun itself. So okay. two, one poison, and he's flat footed as well. Okay, well, what's the total damage? Two damage and flat footed. Okay, two damage and five legged. Right. He's feeling very sick. And we're very feeling very snickery. <clears throat> All right, yeah. He squeals a little bit. Owie! I wish I had one that I could put Falcor asleep. Okay, he's flat footed. What does that mean for me? He negative. has a minus two AC. Yeah, I have a negative two AC. I'm going to. Uh, I mean, I'm going to continue with what I was going to do. I'm going to try to pick him up and, uh, well, can I do, pick him up as an action. Can I disarm him? Uh, yeah, disarming is a thing. I think it's an athletics check. Oh, let's look it up. It's actually, it's a, it's an action in combat. Yeah, it is the right action, I know. I don't know how it works. I don't remember either. <laughs> right, I figured we're, we're learning. <laughs> Swim, trip, disarm, athletics, action. What page are we on? 243. How did I get that far off? Well, there's also the disarm skill, which is where, or disarm trait of a weapon, which is where it sent me. Uh, That's not what I was looking right, for. Right, because that. you have a free hand for just disarm. Athletics, trained action, yep. disarm, okay. page 243. And that's what I want to do, the athletics. You try to knock something out of the target's grasp. Attempt an athletics DC against the target's reflex DC. Okay. Okay, make an athletics check. Uh, 24. And my reflex. Ooh. Well, it's 10 plus. It's not a save. His DC is 10 plus his bonus. That's what a DC is. So when it says target's reflex DC, you take his reflex bonus and add 10. That's so his target That's number. my target number. Oh, oh, yeah. That's, that's what DC means. Right. Okay, beautiful. What did you get? I got a 24. I okay. assume that probably... That, that's a success. Yeah. Not so, a critical success? It's just a success. Okay, then you weaken the target's grasp on the item until the start of the next turn. Attempts to disarm the target, gain a plus two circumstance bonus, and it takes a minus two to attacks with the item. So it did not disarm it. It doesn't lose it unless you get a crit success. Mm, okay. Oh, I see. But, I mean, that's one action. You have two more left. You can keep trying to disarm it. Mm -hmm. Right. At minus four. And it's five. minus it's two. Minus five each. Right? It's no, because it's not a strike. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it oh, it is an attack. Yep, sorry. It's it's not an attack. Attack. It is an attack. It is marked as So it'd be minus five. Oh, yep, it is an attack. Yep. And multiple so attacks. Yeah, negative, it'll be negative five. Wow, oh, disarm is rough. Yeah, you got to get so the you got plus two really minus five. <laughs> right, so it'd be minus three to try to disarm it. Right, it becomes a minus three. For yeah. The... I mean, it's reasonable because taking somebody who wants to attack is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Don't disagree. Oh, I see. I'm just trying to. You have two more actions. It's but true, it's not a and he's, he's flat-footed, does that add to... It has, to it has, it has the attack. It has the attack, right. It has the attack. So, right, but I thought strikes were the only things that got the minuses. Let me see if I make sure, uh, I'm not sure. It's fine. Oh, I mean, that's, that's a good question. It is a very good one we should solve, just because it'll come up again. Yeah, because it'll come up again. Yep. It's the multi-attack penalty, wherever they talk about that. Yeah, Correct. that's what I'm looking for. So just negative four on the second attack? I don't know, we'll find I'm out. probably wrong. Multi-attack penalty. Yeah. 446. Uh, yeah, 446. Um, the more attacks you make, 
multi-attack penalty. The second time you use an attack, attack action. Attack action. Yeah, and so this is an attack yeah. action. Okay. So, we so um, yeah. strike, um, spell attacks, shoves, and uh, shove is on. Flat footed only affects his AC then? That's what I was looking at. Yes. Yeah, it says that every check that has the attack trait yep, counts right. toward it. And this has the attack trait. Right. Yeah. So you get counts toward yeah. it. Yeah, man. And so then the, the the opposite question is then flat footed only affects his AC. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the AC thing. Okay. Um, Should just switch to flat. Apparently. What would you like to do? Uh, well, let's see. So I can't disarm him. Well, I could, but it's not worth it. So. Punch him in the head. I, I know, right? I think that's all I'm gonna do. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna squish him. I mean, I'm gonna squish him. With your club? Yeah. Okay, so you were. At minus five. So, hold on a second. Okay. Like you were. Hold, trying to pull, you had a hand on the rug, yep. hand on him, which means your club is not in your hand. So okay. you need to use an action to get your club out. Right. So now you got one action left, right. and it's going to be just swing. Just swing. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you have you have a negative five. Yeah. But he has a negative two in his armor class. Right. So right. negative. You do a negative five yep. on your attack roll, and let me know what you get. Okay. Here. That is a thirteen plus five is eighteen. Is what I got. That's a hit. Okay. What is that with the minus five? Yeah. Did you take some five off that? Oh uh, no, thirteen. Sorry. 13, that will miss. Okay. All right, so you miss him with granddaddy. Yes. Or father, or whatever. Yeah. And he squirms about um, in your grasp and with his butcher knife takes a big hack at you. Ah, let me go! <laughs> Is it minus two for the disarm? Um. Oh, yes. I get the negative two what we all side. forgot was my Inspire um, Courage would have given him one more point of damage and would have given you a plus uh, one to hit. Let's, I don't know. Let's not worry about it. I, don't don't just, I know, yeah. just remembering for next time. Yeah, we need to remember stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because there's things I forget. Yeah. You need a placard that says <laughs> now, Apparently, plus I need one that says Inspire Courage, class? too. My armor class is 14. If you 14? could bring nutter butters oh and give gosh. us a nutter butter every time we <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You had yeah. a lot of nutter butters. I know, were those not great? Is that a great idea? I did like that. Yeah. Except it was like, well, I want to eat this. <laughs> but, but I got to do it, something. Is it worth giving up that advantage <laughs> roll or whatever? <laughs> just to eat the cookie. Yeah, yeah. He misses you, and then he is going to hack at you again. Okay. He misses you, he'll hack at you a third time. Okay. Oh! Crit fishing? Um, right. hold on a second. So it's a minus 10 on it. So it's a minus, minus 10, 10 on 10. it. Yep. Minus 10 on it. But that's going to be a hit still. I rolled an 18. So an 8 plus my modifier. That hits your armor class. Okay. Armor class was what again? Uh, 14. Yeah, that hits you. Absolutely. Okay. Finally. Woo! And I get to roll damage. Four damage. Ooh. It's over. Guys. Oh, no! We just lost our class. I took... Not 20% of my hit points. <laughs> Clear it oh, down. Yeah. Clear it down. Let me go. I have 21. <laughs> yeah, what? Too. Yeah. Oh, Aloysius. You know, the, the no, I'm sorry. Aloysius. He's not even a orc, which I'm sure is. What is it? This is the yeah, one we're all trying to. Yeah. It's because yeah. I'm um, and you took scarred. Top. I'm just uh, happy I, I survived to okay. get one attack. Scarred orc gets you plus four. I thought I was just going to be dead. I'm going to flurry over it. Scarred hold orc gets plus four. Oh, yeah. So it's 12. So that's two attacks. The second one's a minus four. I like it. Plus one. Plus one. Plus eight for it. So flurry of blows is a two. It's one action, but I get two attacks. I knew I was going to have to soak damage. Yes. That's how flurry of blows works. For a monk. Yeah. For a monk specifically. Yeah. I get to abuse action economy. So I've used one to move. I'm using a second one to flurry of blows, which gives me two strikes. Okay. Two unarmed attacks. But one is at a negative four. Right. Yeah. So I get a negative four bonus for my second attack instead of a negative five. Okay. And then my second one's negative eight instead of negative ten. Which are agile. You have it's agile, agile weapon property as well. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And non-lethal. So I'm just going to roll both which attacks. Which doesn't matter for me. Oh, well, I can't do that because one subtracts. because yeah, one's lower. Yeah. Uh, so the first one is a 22 to hit. That hits. Um, which will be a d6 plus two. So six damage. All right. Would you like to describe this? Uh, non-lethal. Non-lethal. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, which I, all of my attacks will be non-lethal unless I say otherwise. I don't know if declaring ahead matters or not. But no, do non-lethal attacks take a penalty or anything in this game? Not you know, for him because he is non-lethal. Non -lethal. Uh, it's literally weapons. my weapon property is non-lethal. Oh, I okay. have to decide not to be non-lethal. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. And um, either way, he doesn't take a penalty because he's a monk. But a normal person, let's say you had a club. Yeah. You take a minus two. You do. It's minus two yeah. to do non-lethal damage if it's not a non-lethal Now, do you have to weapon. declare that beforehand in this game, do you know? 
typically. I would think yeah. you would. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Which is why you're officially declaring everything's not yeah, lethal. Yeah, everything's right. non-lethal right. unless I declare lethality. Right. Right. So, okay. um, you punch the dragon in the gut. So I'm just, yeah. I'm literally, yeah. he's like blood. stabbing away. I don't know if you're still holding him up, but he's I stabbing away. I am trying to hold him, you. yeah, and I'm like, I've got behind, a hold of his I'm weapon to keep him I'm just basically fighting. just like punch him in the back right. of the head. And he's, yeah, he goes totally wolf. Right. His butcher net clatters to the floor. Yeah. All right. Okay. Excellent. You finally managed to get the rug up, right. and wouldn't you know it, there was a wooden trap door on Shocking. the shot rug. Shocking. Well, nobody guessed that. We should probably check the rest of this floor quickly yep. before right. we go down. So, I open up those doors. Can we... So we are at, like, 9.30. No. What? Uh, yeah. All right. So... I'm not saying it's oh, the same time Oh, no. It's 9.30. Yeah. I didn't even... Oh, shit. My wait, watch is... Wow. Wait. So I we can... I have stuff I have to do before I go to bed tonight. Yeah. I would prefer to stop here, but if we need to keep going, we can keep going. Just no, I didn't I'm, I'm going to stop him. No, we can stop here. Yeah. I got to go back to school. <laughs> yeah, I got to work tomorrow, too. I do, too. Yeah. Which, by the way... I, uh, my theory of statistics class got a hundred percent on my midterm. Nice. Uh, like one zero zero. Is this the one that you skipped our game for to study for? Yeah. So hey. you didn't need to skip our game. <laughs> <laughs> you. Damn man. You rat. <laughs> you would have been fine. Shit. Right. Would have got ninety four or something. Shit. <laughs> No. You're, you're gonna hang on to that, but I'm gonna get a better one. If I do, oh, okay. if I do really well, yeah, actually, hang on. Let me get, 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 get the Give it back for a second. I want to get a picture of this already, right? so I know what to put in. That's what I'm doing too. I just want to yeah. take a picture, and then I'll get it. And yep. we all got a thousand XP, right? No. And I, actually, what I'm gonna do is I I know the total XP for like this quest. So when the entire quest is done, if you survive, I'll just give you XP all at once. I'm not gonna keep doing it after every encounter. It just gets tedious. There we go. There we go. I can put this on the character sheet. For instance, like the cookies that he was handing out, yeah. encourage my character to blow himself up with I'm a hand grenade. I'm gonna put this. Right. Just get a cookie. Get a cookie. Folder, <laughs> but this is on me as a right end. So. Yeah, the cookie. Okay. If I put it with my character sheet, you're gonna yeah. lose it because it's a tiny uh, piece of paper. Uh, by the way, uh, very cool. I appreciate the uh, uh, the the not exactly named shout out, but uh, when you said that Savage Worlds was uh, one of your favorite non D&D games. So. Oh, yeah. So, Savage yeah. Worlds was fun. Appreciate it. I liked it, yeah. I, I, yeah. I felt a little bit, I was like, oh, that's cool, I ran that. I had an absolute blast. Cool, cool. Yeah, I had an absolute well, blast. I'm glad everybody really liked it. Yeah. My character was super fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because the system was fun. I, yeah. I liked I liked the villain thing. I could have gone with that for a long time. Sure. But it also was like, I would love to try just something else. anything else in that. Yeah, just yeah. just because it was, the base of it seemed really good. Yeah, it's very, it's very Shadow Run? Yeah. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> I had fun with I, all of them. I felt like I didn't run my best Shadow Run game. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, but it was, man. Played, Shadow Run was cool because it was the first time I ever played it, and it was yeah, a lot of fun. I didn't run my best game. I, I was I, I, I didn't realize how rusty I had gotten in uh, six months. It's amazing like, how fast you get where you're going. Wait, how's this working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's this working? You know, I've been also you and also so an email. I played fifth edition for a while, oh, okay. and then I switched to sixth edition. Yeah, that's what I'll get to everything once, too. Yeah. Yeah. And and the backstory like, and character. Oh, very different when you're yeah. trying to keep. I took pictures of it so I could just yeah. put it back into us. Shadow runs worse than some because editions are different, but not a lot different. I'm not over the top with this character, am I? What? No, you're fine. Yeah. I won't say we'll never get there, but for right now, no, it might under it makes a good contrast. To Just keep your feet away from him. Right, man. Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, sorry, man. man. Yeah. Put, like, you're getting, Put you're the man me. spreading. Jeez, <laughs> that's some respect. Am I a little too underwhelming? Maybe I should. No. <laughs> it's nice to have a character that isn't currently trying to be a diabolical world. Yeah, right. That for a few no. minutes is a diabolical world. world. No, no, his, so he is the standard, you know, Joe diabolical rule the world thing. He's just elven. So he figures he has several centuries to do it. Secret <laughs> of magic. Mm. Uh, oh, token. Many, that, many. That's fine. Yeah, so when we hit second level, I am going to take that champion archetype. So, Since so you're we'll playing have, character that wants to get in the middle. I was going to say, we'll have character, I will be able to take heavy armor and stuff. and like take, I will take maybe a feet or two out of it. When I much. go second level, so I'm to be able to wear 